Section one of the Book of Jasher. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by C.J. Plogue. The Book of Jasher by an unknown author. Section one Certificates. University of New York, April tenth, eighteen forty. I have compared a large portion of the translation of the Book of Jasher with the original Hebrew, and find it faithfully and eloquently rendered into English. The Hebrew itself is of very pure character. Isaac Nordheimer, Professor of Oriental Literature. To Messrs. Noah and Gould, Gentlemen, I am acquainted with the Book of Jasher, having read a considerable part of it while in the hands of the translator in England. The Hebrew is very purely written, and the translator is an eminent scholar and has done it ample justice. It is full of interest throughout, and breathes the pure spirit of piety and religion. And I am satisfied that this is the first English translation ever made of that work, the Royal Asiatic Society at Calcutta never having completed the translation of their copy as anticipated. April 14, 1840, H. V. Nathan, Minister of the England and German Synagogue, Kingston, Jamaica. The following letter is from Professor Turner, an able Hebrew scholar. Theological Seminary, Chelsea Square, New York, April 28, 1840. Gentlemen, agreeably to a request made to me yesterday by Mr. Noah, I have sufficiently examined the English version of the rabbinical work which heads the title of the Book of Jasher, to satisfy myself of its general correctness. I have carefully compared three chapters of the translation with the original, and have no hesitation in saying that in general they give a correct representation of the author's meaning, and as literal as the different idioms of the two languages would allow. In some instances, however, it would have been desirable that every word of the Hebrew should have been rendered into English. For instance, in chapter 1, verse 2, the translator has omitted the word dust in mentioning man's formation from the ground, and in verse 4, the literal version after middle part would be, and he took away one of his ribs and built flesh upon it, and made a woman and brought her to the man. In verse 6 also, the rabbinical writer does not say, quote unquote, called their names Adam and Eve, but in the very words of the Hebrew Bible, verse 2, called their name Adam. In chapter 20, verse 4, the version reads thus, and the servants of Abimelech went to Abimelech, saying, In the original it is, And the servants of Abimelech came and praised Sarah to the king, saying, etc. In verse 19 the name of Pharaoh is omitted, and occasionally the word subjects is substituted for servants. It is possible that the translator made use of a copy of some other edition, which may have varied in a few words from that examined by me. The points referred to are, on the whole, unimportant and do not detract from the general accuracy of the translation. I am respectfully your obedient servant, Samuel H. Turner. To Monsieur Snow and Gould. The following letter is from Professor Bush of New York. New York, April 30th, 1840. Gentlemen, I have examined portions of several chapters of the Book of Jasher in the original carefully comparing with it the translation put into my hands by the publishers. The work itself is evidently composed in the purest rabbinical Hebrew, with a large intermixture of the biblical idiom, and I consider the translation as a whole not only as decidedly faithful, but as peculiarly happy in retaining the air of antique simplicity which distinguishes the original and which constitutes the matchless excellence of our English version of the Hebrew Scriptures. In a few instances I have noticed slight verbal variations from the original, similar to those adverted to by Professor Turner, as in one case, choice of our sepulchres for choice of our land. But they are of too little moment to detract from the character of general fidelity, which I do not hesitate to assign to the translation. Very respectfully, Yours, etc., George Bush. To Monsieur Snow and Gould. End of section one.
Section two of the Book of Jasher. The author is unknown. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by C. J. Plogue. The Book of Jasher. Preface. The Book of Jasher, referred to in Joshua and Second Samuel, faithfully translated from the original Hebrew into English. New York. Published by M. M. Noah and A. S. Gould at 144 Nassau Street, 1840. Entered according to Act of Congress in the year 1840 by Mordecai M. Noah and Alexander S. Gould in the office of the Clerk of the Southern District of New York. Alex S. Gould, Typographer, 144 Nassau Street. Stereotyped by R. C. Valentine, 45 Gold Street. Preface it is with pleasure that I am able to present to the American public the translation of the Book of Jasher, as referred to in Joshua and Second Samuel, which, after several years' negotiation with the owner and translator of the work in England, I have succeeded in obtaining. There are many books named in the Old Testament which are now classed among the missing books, or books supposed to have been lost amidst the many revolutions which have occurred in Judea. These books are not included in the Jewish canons, and it is questionable whether there are any missing of what were considered as emanating from inspired writers. For when the works enumerated in the Bible could not be found, after the most diligent search, the inference was that the names applied to other books, or that they were different versions of the same work. Thus the Book of the Covenant, Exodus 24-7, was a mere collection of the injunctions and institutions delivered by the Almighty Moses. So it might also be said of the Book of the Law, Deuteronomy 31.9, the Book of the Wars of the Lord, Numbers 21.14, cannot be found, and is everywhere spoken as one of the missing books. Dr. Lightfoot in his Chronicles thinks that Moses refers to a book of his own composing, written by command of God, Exodus 27.14. We think, however, that the book of Judges is the one referred to as the book of wars of the Lord, because in that book we have all the exploits of the Hebrews detailed at length. We find in Chronicles and Kings a number of books named which are not to be found. The Acts of David the King written in the book of Samuel the Seer, also in the book of Nathan the Prophet, and also in the book of Gad the Seer. The Acts of Solomon are in the book of Nathan the Prophet, and also in the book of Abijah the Shulamite, the Acts of Rehoboam in the book of Shemaiah the prophet, the Acts of Jehoshaphat in the book of Jehu, the journals of the kings of Judah and Israel, the three thousand and five songs and a treatise on botany and animated nature by this learned king are lost, so also are the Acts of Manasseh, these works not having been found by Ezra could not have been inserted in the Old Testament, and consequently cannot be considered as having been written by divine inspiration. Nevertheless, it would be assuming more than is required or necessary to say that there were no other books in the time of Ezra than those considered as divinely inspired. St. Austin says, The penmen of the sacred scripture writ some things as they are, men with historical lore and diligence. Other things they writ as prophets, by inspiration from God. We thus have a classification of their labors, both as historians and as prophets. The negligence of the Jews in ancient days, and their constant transition from one country to another, occasioned many losses of the sacred writings. The book of Deuteronomy was lost for a long time. There were many books rejected by the canons which are still objects of curiosity and venerable for their antiquity. The Prayer of King Manasseh, Bel and the Dragon, the two books of Estras, the Book of the Maccabees, and the Book of Enoch, recently found and translated from the Ethiopic. The Book of Jasher, referred to in Joshua and Second Samuel, has been long an object of great curiosity. Some of the Hebrew writers contend that it was the lives and acts of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and other patriarchs who were called Jesherim, the just. Dr. Lightfoot thinks it is the book of the wars of God, and so the reader may think in pursuing the various battles it recounts. 
Gordius calls it a triumphal poem. Josephus says that by this book are to be understood certain records kept in some safe place on purpose, giving an account of what happened among the Hebrews from year to year, and called Jasher, or the upright, on account of the fidelity of the annals. It is known that such have been the curiosity and anxiety to discover this missing book that several forgeries under that name have appeared from time to time, and the Reverend Mr. Horn, in his introduction to the study of the scripture, has been at some pains to collect a history of the various fabrications of Jasher, the most remarkable of which was originally published in England in the year 1750 by a person called Ilev, and purported to be a translation from a Hebrew work of that name found in Persia by Alcuin. It was republished in Bristol in the year 1829, and a copy is now in my possession. It is a miserable fabrication, occupying but sixty-two and a half pages with copious notes, making out Jasher to be one of the judges, whereas the translation of the word is the upright, or the upright record. In the same work of Dr. Horn, a slight reference is made to the book of Jasher, written in rabbinical Hebrew, said to have been discovered in Jerusalem at its capture under Titus and printed in Venice in 1613. This is the book now translated into English for the first time. Long prior to the destruction of Jerusalem, the Jews had established themselves in various parts of Spain and Italy. They traded to the Bay of Gibraltar, as historians affirm in the earliest periods of history. And Basnage mentions that in Sagunto, a town in Spain, a tombstone was discovered bearing the following inscription in the Hebrew language. This is the tomb of Adoniram, an officer of King Solomon, who came to collect the tribute and died the day, etc. There can be no doubt that Spain, probably France and Italy, were tributary to Solomon. It is, however, certain that the Jews carried with them into Spain on their dispersion an immense number of manuscripts and sacred rolls, where they remained many years and were in the eleventh century placed in their great college at Cordova, and from thence were conveyed to Venice on the first discovery of printing. The printer's Hebrew preface to Jasher shows that it was a painful transcript from a very old and almost illegible Hebrew record, and printed by and with the consent of the great consistory of rabbins at Venice, who alone had the power of publishing such works from the Hebrew records as they deemed authentic. From the Venice edition of Jasher, another edition was many years subsequently published in Lemberg in Galicia. Both editions in Hebrew are now in my possession and the Royal Asiatic Society, having found a copy of Jasher in Calcutta, gave orders to have it translated, which order was countermanded when it was ascertained that considerable progress had been made in England in this translation. The following copy of a letter from the secretary to the translator shows the estimate which that learned society placed upon the work. Royal Asiatic Society House, Grafton Street, Bond Street, London, September 2, 1831. Dear Sir, I'm extremely obliged by your having favored me with the sight of Mr. Noah's letter, and in reply to your letter mention that the Oriental Translation Committee does not consider that it has any claims on your work, and if that ever the Reverend Mr. Adams translates the Book of Jasher, it will not be in the lapse of several years hoping that your praiseworthy and valuable labors in that interesting work will soon, in one shape or other, be presented to the public. I remain, dear sir, your obliged and obedient servant, William Hutman. Whatever may have been written and published by commentators relative to the fabrications of Jasher, I am persuaded they had no reference to this work, although this is the work slightly touched upon by Dr. Horn as the publication in Venice, on the first discovery of printing. But of its origin and history he knew nothing beyond the rumor that it had originally been brought from Jerusalem. There are some events recorded in Jasher that are found in the Talmud, no doubt copied from Jasher, for although we find in the Talmud the Mishnah, the Gemara, many parables and fanciful tales, to affect moral and religious purposes, 
yet everything that we have in jasher we find recorded in the bible with this difference that in jasher the occurrences of the bible are amplified and detailed at length the celebrated philosopher mendelssohn expresses a high opinion of this work there are nevertheless some events which are recorded in jasher which may create surprise particularly a detail of the rape of the sabines which at first glance i was deposed to consider as an interpolation but a little reflection satisfied me that it was an event placed in proper chronological order pisran in his revolution of empires or antiquities of nations says page one sixty four it is therefore likely from what i have said that several of the titans in the region of uranus or at least in that of saturn staying and fixing themselves in that part of italy which is adjacent to the tiber and the apennines were afterward called umbrians if such were the case as it seems it was the settlement of the titans in italy was made about the time of the calling of abraham that is when he left chaldea to go and dwell in the land of canaan page one seventy five now if all this came to pass it must have happened about the time Dusalian reigned in greece or some years after that deluge that happened under that prince if as pisran says the separation of the sabians from the umbrians took place fifteen hundred years before christ it will not be far distant from the time at which jasher places the rape of the sabine women in the ninety-first year of the life of abraham the following is the translator's preface and with all his admitted learning and ability he has been unable to do justice to the beauty grandeur and alike the simplicity of the original hebrew i also subjoin a translation of the hebrew preface and a translation of the printer's preface being all the documents in my possession without giving it to the world as a work of divine inspiration or assuming the responsibility to say that it is not an inspired book i have no hesitation in pronouncing it a work of great antiquity and interest and a work that is entitled even regarding it as a literary curiosity to a great circulation among those who take pleasure in studying the scriptures m m noah new york april eighteen thirty nine end of section two section three of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by c j plogue translator's preface the age in which we live has been and continues to be particularly distinguished by a laudable desire in the minds of men to inquire into the various states of knowledge and of the arts as they existed in times anterior to the christian era animated with these noble and elevated views a considerable number of individuals greatly distinguished for their genius and learning have in succession turned their attention to the east to those celebrated countries in which the arts of civilization and the lights of science first dawned upon enlightened and embellished human society the magnificent and unequalled remains of the arts in egypt babylonia assyria palestine and persia have from time to time been visited and explored and it has been amidst these fallen monuments of human grandeur that the adventurous and enlightened traveller has found himself amply rewarded for his laborious and hazardous undertakings for amidst these wrecks of human greatness he has succeeded in gathering ample evidence in confirmation of many of the most important truths recorded in sacred history profane histories have indeed conveyed down to us some account of these kingdoms and of the mighty monarchs who during a long succession of ages ruled over them but the events which they relate are evidently so mixed up with exaggeration and so adulterated with fable that however celebrated their authors might have been and however fascinating may be the style of their composition the religious and philosophic student turns from them with dissatisfaction to the divinely authenticated annals of the hebrews because it is from these alone that he can derive true information concerning the rise the splendor the decline and the real causes of the ruin of those celebrated empires in the sacred history we are presented with only authentic and of course 
the only valuable information concerning the origin of the universe of men and all other animated creatures of the gradual increase of the human race of the flood in the year a m sixteen fifty six of which mighty event there are existing evidences to the present day evidences so universal and so ponderous that all the ingenuity of the sceptical geologists will never be able to remove them in order to make room for their plausible hypotheses the ever memorable events and transactions recorded in scriptures are with many others of the most interesting nature comprehended in the book of jasher and they are all arrayed in that style of simple unadorned majesty and precision which so peculiarly distinguishes the genius of the hebrew language and this together with other numerous internal evidences it is presumed will go far to convince the hebrew scholar that the book is with the exception of some doubtful parts a venerable monument of antiquity and that notwithstanding some few additions may have been made to it in comparatively modern times it still retains sufficient to prove it a copy of the book referred to in joshua chapter ten and second samuel chapter one there are not more than seven or eight words in the whole book that by construction can be derived from the chaldean language the printed hebrew copy in the hands of the translator is without points during his first perusal of it some perplexities and doubts rose up in his mind respecting its authenticity but the more closely he studied it the more its irresistible evidence satisfied him that it contained a treasure of information concerning those early times upon which the histories of other nations are either silent or cast not a single ray of real light and he was more especially delighted to find that the evidence of the whole of its contents went to illustrate and confirm the great and inestimable truths which are recorded in divine history down to a few years later than the death of joshua at which period the book closes in this extraordinary book the reader will meet with models of the most sublime virtue devotion and magnanimity that cannot fail to raise his admiration and at the same time to excite a generous feeling of emulation to follow the glorious examples set before him with these preliminary observations the translator now respectfully proceeds to lay before the readers a few remarks upon the contents of the book the title in hebrew text is literally the upright or correct record but because the book was not known it was therefore termed the book of jasher this has caused some persons who are ignorant of the hebrew language to suppose that jasher was the name of a prophet or of one of the judges of israel an instant of which appears in a publication which came from the press about the middle of the last century and which purported to have been a translation into english of the hebrew manuscript of jasher found at gazna in persia which translation only was said to have been thence brought by alcuin when the translator wrote to the editor of the london courier in november last he was not aware that the copy of jasher announced in the bristol gazette as an important discovery had reference to that fictitious book which through the kindness of a friend he had previously obtained a sight of and was soon convinced that the whole book was the work of some sceptic in england in imitation of the language of scripture as it was sent forth from the press without the name of printer bookseller editor or publisher and it is evident that those who were concerned in getting it up in making jasher the name of a judge of israel were ignorant of the very rudiments of the language from which they pretended to have translated it as it is well known even to a tiro in the hebrew language that the definite article hebrew character is never prefixed to proper names the important transactions which are narrated with so remarkable a brevity in the bible are in jasher more circumstantially detailed as in the instance of the murder of abel by his brother cain a particular account is given of the disagreement which preceded it and of the pretext which cain sought for the commission of the crime it appears also that when the divine judgment condemned him to wander upon the earth his wife accompanied him not to the land of nod for no such place is mentioned 
but from this book it appears that the word nod in the scripture has been given for the participle of the verb in hebrew to move or wander about jasher has it thus the actual hebrew script is inserted here which translated and at that time cain went forth from the presence of the lord from the place where he was and he went moving and wandering in the land at the east of eden he and all belonging to him in the passage respecting the birth of cain and abel three daughters are also mentioned according to jasher the art of writing appears to have been known and practiced from the earliest periods it is stated that canaan was informed beforehand by god of the intended destruction of mankind by the flood which he engraved upon tablets of stone and preserved amongst his treasures this book contains a more detailed account of the awful circumstances attending the commencement of the flood and of the conduct of noah toward the terrified multitude who had assembled about the ark when the fatal moment had arrived and their doom was irrevocably fixed a particular delineation of the life and character of enoch is given showing that by his wisdom he reigned over the sons of men continually instructing them in truth righteousness and a knowledge of the most high jasher informs us that in the days of peleg not only the families of the human race were separated and spread abroad but that the earth itself was divided and of both these facts it may be presumed there are sufficient existing evidences even at this day this book gives also a more detailed account of the genealogies of the descendants of japheth shem and ham and of the various parts of the earth which were colonized by them connected with this period of history is given an account of nimrod in which is strikingly depicted the arbitrary and violent character of his conduct and government the contested point as to whether nimrod was the founder of the assyrian empire is here decided the cause of the dispute amongst commentators proceeded from the word in hebrew in genesis chapter ten verse eleven signifying either the name of a man or the name of the land of assyria jasher has it thus the actual hebrew script is inserted here and translated and asher the son of shem went forth he and his sons and the children of his household etc and they there built four cities jasher clearly elucidates a number of genealogical and chronological difficulties which occur in the bible an instance is here adduced of the genealogy of seir the horite upon which the bible is silent the learned commentator aben ezra remarks of the hebrew text inserted seir his genealogy we do not know and the word in hebrew is supposed to come from a different word meaning noble but jasher gives us the descent of seir which accounts for his being called the horite in the following words hebrew script is inserted here and seir the son of hur the son of hivi the son of canaan went etc hence he was called the horite from hur his father the character of abraham for piety true dignity and hospitality appears to stand unrivalled but the most affecting and beautiful account in this book is that of abraham offering up his son isaac the mutual affection of the father and son and their willing devotion and obedience to the commands of their maker are so exquisitely described that the heart of him who can peruse the narrative without being deeply affected must be callous indeed the conduct of sarah as connected with this unexampled and glorious event was altogether worthy of the wife of abraham and the mother of isaac at this time sarah died at kiriath arba her funeral is described as having been magnificent and it is expressly mentioned that it was attended by shem the son of noah eber his son king abimelech together with anar ashkol and mamre and other great people of the land in the bible sarah is the only woman whose age is given at her death but it may be interesting to the reader to know that jasher generally states the age of all the women who are particularly mentioned in the course of the history from this book we learn that noah and abraham were contemporaries how beautiful the contemplation of the meeting of these two patriarchs the one being a monument of god's mercy and the other having the promise of the favor and grace of god 
not only to himself but to his seed after him this fact might be proved from scripture but from the thirty-second verse in the eleventh chapter of genesis most of the christian commentators have erroneously dated the birth of abraham sixty years later than it actually took place as it is generally stated that he was born a m two thousand eight whereas the regular calculation in the bible leads us to sixty years earlier viz nineteen forty eight the only cause of this error has been that abraham's departure from haran at the age of seventy five is recorded close to the description of the death of tira at the age of two hundred and five in genesis chapter eleven verse thirty two although this is the frequent manner of scripture to record events out of the regular order of succession an instance of which we find in isaac whose death is recorded in genesis thirty five twenty nine when we know from the calculations given us in scripture that isaac's death must have taken place when joseph was about twenty-nine years old and the description given in jasher of isaac's coming from hebron to comfort jacob upon the loss of joseph is beautiful it is of great importance in its making a difference of sixty years in the chronology of the world this book gives a particular account of the instruction received by abraham isaac and jacob from shem and eber through which they became so excellent in piety and wisdom their tutors in learning having lived so great an age and shem particularly who being acquainted with all that was known before the flood could therefore strengthen his precepts of virtue the true worship of god and the necessary dependence upon him alone by recording the awful events which he had seen the history of joseph has always been considered one of the most admirable and interesting on record it is composed in a style of simple and artless eloquence which touches every feeling heart a judicious critique has observed that he considers it a perfect composition this history in jasher enters more into detail concerning the affairs of potiphar's wife zelica joseph's magnificent procession through the cities of egypt on coming into power the pomp with which he was attended by pharaoh's chariots officers and people when he went up to meet his father the affecting scene which then took place together with other remarkable incidents this beautiful narrative might justly be entitled the triumph of virtue and piety and it is presumed that few can peruse it unmoved by sentiments of the highest admiration mixed with the deepest feelings of sympathy the history of the israelites during their sojourning in egypt contains an account of many interesting particulars not noticed in the bible towards the latter end of this period balaam job janus and jambres appear to have acted their respective parts in some memorable transactions this book clears up the reference in second samuel chapter one by showing that david in the commencement of his beautiful elegy on the death of saul and jonathan revived an injunction given by jacob in his dying charge to his son judah contained in jasher in these words hebrew text is inserted here which is translated but teach i pray thee thy children the use of the bow and all instruments of war etc this goes far to prove the authenticity of the book as it beautifully clears up what was always considered obscure if commentators upon the holy scriptures have sought for illustrations in the works of homer pliny herodotus and other profane writers if they have anxiously caught at glimmerings among the absurdities of paganisms and the obscurities of heathen fables the translator humbly and respectfully hopes that they will now grant a favorable reception to evidence of an entirely opposite character which is presented in the book of jasher he does not recommend it to their notice as a work of inspiration but as a monument of history comparatively covered with the ivy of the remotest ages as a work possessing in its language all the characteristic simplicity of patriarchal times and as such he conceives it peculiarly calculated to illustrate and confirm the sacred truths handed down to us in the scriptures but in making these observations he is far from offering it as a perfect record like all other ancient writings except the inspired volume it has in some respects suffered from the consuming hand of time and there is reason to believe that some additions have been made to it 
in fine it contains a history of the lives and memorable transactions of all the illustrious characters recorded in sacred history from adam down to the time of the elders who immediately succeeded joshua end of section three section four of the book of jasher the author is unknown this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by c j plogue translation of the hebrew preface this book is that which is called the upright book it has at this time been ascertained by us that when the holy city jerusalem was destroyed by titus all the military heads went into rob and plunder and that amongst the officers of titus was one whose name was sidrus who went in to search and found in jerusalem a house of great extent and took away all the spoils which he found there when he wished to go out of the house he looked at the wall and fancied that he saw treasures there so he broke down the wall and the building and found a cask full of various books of the law the prophets and the hagiographa also books of the kings of israel and of the kings of other nations as well as many other books of israel together with the books of mishnah adopted and established many rolls were also lying there he also found there all sorts of provision and wine in abundance and discovered an old man sitting there who was reading in those books when the officer saw this great sight he was greatly astonished and said to the old man why dost thou sit alone in this place without any person remaining with thee so the old man answered for many years past was i aware of this second destruction of jerusalem so i built this house and made for myself a balcony and i brought with me these books to read and i brought also sufficient provision thinking thereby to save my life and god caused the old man to find favor in the eyes of the officer who brought him forth with respect with all his books and they went from city to city and from country to country until they reached Sevilla. and the officer found that this old man was possessed of wisdom and understanding and acquainted with various kinds of science upon discovering which he raised and honored him was constantly in his house and was taught by him all sorts of wisdom and they built for themselves a lofty and capacious house in the suburbs of Sevilla, and placed there all those books this house is yet in Sevilla unto this day and they wrote there all the events that would hereafter take place amongst the kings of the world unto the coming of our messiah and it came to pass that when god carried us away with a mighty captivity by the hands of the kings of edom from city to city and from country to country in bitter anxiety this book called the generations of adam together with other books came into our hands for they came from that house in Sevilla, and they came afterward to our city of napuli which city is under the sway of the king of spain whose glory may be exalted and when we saw these books that they were books of all wisdom we resolved in our minds to print them like all the books that came to our hands now this book is the best and most valuable of all and of this book twelve copies have reached us and we searched in them and found them all of one copy there was no difference nothing added and nothing deficient nor any alteration in letters words or events for they were all alike as it were of one copy since therefore we saw in this book great merit urging us to this resolve we are determined to print it and it is found written that this book is called the book jasher because all its transactions are in that order as they had taken place in the world as regards priority and succession for thou wilt not find in this book any postponement of events that were anterior or priority of those that were posterior but everything is recorded in its place and time thou wilt thus find that it relates the death of such a one at the particular time of the life of another and thus throughout owing to this it was called sefer hajashar but it is customary to call it the generations of adam the reason of which is that they call it by that with which it commences but the chief name thereof is the book jasher owing to the reasons we have assigned now it is found that this book is translated into greek entitled lo libris dulos de Vicius. it is also found written in the book of the asmonians which has come down to us that in the days of ptolemy king of egypt 
he ordered his servants to go and gather all the books of laws and all the books of chronicles which they could find in the world so that he might become wise through them and by examining them become acquainted with the subjects and events of the world and to compile from them a book in all matters of jurisdiction regarding the affairs of life thereby to exercise pure justice so they went and collected for him nine hundred and sixty-five books and brought to him when he commanded them to go again and seek to complete the number of a thousand books and they did so after this some of the persecutors of israel stood up before him and said o king why wilt thou trouble thyself in this manner send to the jews in jerusalem that they shall bring unto thee the book of their law which was written from them from the mouth of the lord by their prophets from which thou mayest become wise and regulate all judgments and law according to thy desire so the king hearkened to their words and sent to the jews upon this matter who sent to him this book for they could not give unto him the book of the lord for they said we cannot give the law of the lord to a stranger now when this book came to the hands of ptolemy he read it and it pleased him greatly and he searched therein in his wisdom and he examined it and found therein what he had desired and he neglected all the other books which they had collected for him and he blessed him who had advised him to this thing after some time the persecutors of israel became aware of this that the israelites had not sent the book of the law to the king and they came and said unto him o king the israelites have treated thee with contempt for they did not send to thee the book of the law which we had mentioned to thee but they sent to thee another book which they had in their hands therefore send to them that they may forward unto thee the book of their law for from that book thou wilt obtain thy desire much more than from the book which they have sent to thee so when the king heard their words he became exceedingly wroth against the israelites and his anger burned within him until he sent again to them for them to forward to him the book of the law fearing that they might still continue to scorn him he acted prudently with them and sent to seventy of their elders and placed them in seventy houses that each should write the book of the law so that no alteration might be found in them and the divine spirit rested upon them and they wrote for him seventy books and they were all of one version without addition or diminution at this the king rejoiced greatly and he honored the elders together with all the jews and he sent offerings and gifts to jerusalem as it is written there at his death the israelites acted cunningly with his son and took from his treasures the book of the law but left this book there and took it not away in order that every future king might know the wonders of the lord blessed be his name and that he had chosen israel from all nations and that there is no god beside him this book is therefore in egypt unto this day and from that time it became circulated throughout the earth until it reached us in our captivity this day in the city of napuli which is under the rule of the king of spain now thou wilt find in this book that some of the kings of edom of chittim and the kings of africa who were in those days are mentioned although it might appear that such was not the aim or intent of this book but the reason of this was to show to every person obtaining this book the contrast between the wars of israel and the wars of the gentiles for the conquest of gentile kings one over the other was by accident which is not so in the conquest of the kings of israel over the gentiles which is by a miracle from our blessed lord as long as the israelites trust in his exalted name now the uses of this book are many all of which lead us to confidence in god whose name be exalted and to our adherence unto him and his ways the first use is the additional information it affords us upon the subjects of the creation of man and the deluge recording also the years of the twenty generations and their misdeeds also at what period they were born and when they died by which means our hearts may be inclined to adhere to the lord when we see the mighty works which he performed in days of old the second use is in the additional account respecting the birth of abraham and how it was that he cleaved to the lord and the transactions that took place between him and nimrod and thus also of the account of the builders of the tower of babel how that the lord drove them to the four corners of the earth and how they established the countries and lands called after their names unto this day by which means we may draw nigh to our creator 
The third use is the explanation it gives us how the patriarchs adhered to the Lord, and of their transactions, which convince us of their fear of God. The fourth use is in what it records of the affairs of Sodom and the iniquities of its people, and in what consisted their sins as well as their punishment, by which means we may refrain from all evil doings. The fifth use is in the account of the faith of Isaac and Jacob in the Lord, and the prayers of weeping of Sarah at the binding of Isaac for a sacrifice, which is of great use in inclining our hearts to the service of the Lord. The sixth use is in the information it affords us upon the subject of the wars of the sons of Jacob with the people of Shechem and the seven cities of the Amorites. This will rouse our hearts to faith in our God, for how could ten men destroy seven cities if their hearts had not been impressed with faith in the Lord? The seventh use is in the information it gives us of all the events that happened to Joseph in Egypt, with Potiphar and his wife, and with the king of Egypt, for this will also rouse our hearts to the fear of the Lord, and to remove ourselves from all sin, so that it may be well with us in the latter end. The eighth use is in the account it furnishes us of what happened to Moses in Cush and in Midian, by which we may understand the wonders of the Lord which he performs for the righteous, and that we may thereby adhere to him. The ninth use is in its recording of what happened to the Israelites in Egypt, and when the commencement of their servitude took place, and how they served the Egyptians in all manner of hard work, and to what purpose all this tended, how after this God was favorable to them through their trusting in him, and there is no doubt of this that he who reads the events of Egypt from this book, on the nights of the Passover, will receive a great reward. As our rabbins of blessed memory say, he that is occupied in relating the exit from Egypt is to be praised, in which this book is included, for this is the true narration which ought to be read after the Haggadah for such person, reading this, may be assured that he will be greatly rewarded. We do so this day in our captivity in the countries of Spain, after having finished reading the Haggadah, we commence reading in this book the whole affair of Egypt, from the Israelites going down to Egypt unto their exit for in this book a person ought to read. The eleventh use is that some of the comments of our rabbis and of other commentators who have explained the law thou wilt find illustrated in this book, such as the account of the messengers who met Jacob when he came up from Mesopotamia after they had gone to Esau, also the account of Gabriel who taught Joseph seventy languages, also the illustration it affords him who smote Midian in the fields of Moab and the like. The twelfth use is that every person lecturing in public may bring forward in his discourse subjects from this book, which the commentators have not explained, by which means he may make an impression upon the hearts of his audience. The thirteenth use is that all merchants and travelers who have an opportunity to study the law may read this book and receive their reward for therein is the reward of the soul as well as the delight of the body in the discovery of new matter not recorded in any other book and by these means will man understand to know the lord and cleave unto him now because we have seen the merit of this book and the great usefulness thereof we have undertaken to print it without addition or diminution and from this time we have commenced to print it in a book that such books may be in the hands of the members of our covenant the men of our captivity, in order that it may be farther circulated throughout every generation, and every city, family, and country, so that they may understand the wonders of the Lord which he performed for our ancestors, and his bounties towards them from the days of old, and that he chose us from all nations. May they who devote their hearts to the fear of the Lord be rendered meritorious by studying therein whilst we confide in the Lord, the God of gods, and depend upon him and seek salvation and assistance from him in this heavenly work and may he prosper us in the right path and deliver us from errors and cleanse us from secret faults as his anointed said who can understand his errors cleanse thou me from secret faults may god teach us the good way and direct us in a prosperous path for the sake of his mercies and kindnesses and may he graciously fulfil the desires of our hearts Amen, and so be his will. End of section four of
Section 5 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C.J. Plogue. The Printer's Preface. The Humble Worm and No Man, Joseph, son to my father, the wise and highly respected in Israel. Samuel, the little one, says, My witness is in heaven, and my testimony is on high. The God of God knows, and Israel knows also, how much fatigue I have undergone, and how much trouble I have taken until I had brought to light the hidden treasures of this book. For ever since I was driven from my land, from metropolis of Israel, the great city of wise men and scribes, the renowned city of Persia, ever since the Lord, through my great offences, has driven me with a violent captivity, one stumbling after the other, he weakened my strength in the way, the iron entered my soul until I reached the Italian harbour, the royal city Livorno, or Leghorn, which is under the sway of our lord, the most serene, Grand Duke Don Ferdinand de Media, de Michicu, for neither by day nor by night could I remain silent. I was continually in thought, my soul was humbled in me, and sleep was removed from mine eyes. When I reflected how energetically my father, the crown of my head, strove with his purse and labor to transcribe this book, as was his constant custom from his love of the study of the law, to lavish money and wealth, principal and interest, for the purchase and the transcribing, for my own use of books without end, in order that I might obtain wisdom and instruction, to comprehend the words of understanding, as all of the inhabitants of my city can testify and declare. O God, remember him favorably to rest in glory with the righteous who are in the Garden of Eden. Amen. For this loss is felt only by me. Especially in the transcribing of this book, it is holy for praises to the Lord, for there was never seen nor found but one, which the intelligent and pious scribe Jacob, the son of Attiah, transcribed from a very old manuscript the letters of which were defaced and had it not been for the consummate ability of the above-mentioned rabbi no other person could have made out those letters nor have transcribed them from their antiquity and from their having been defaced now my father of blessed memory found favor in his eyes to obtain this book on loan in order that he might also get one transcribed by the hands of a certain scribe and in the year fifty three seventy three through my great sins i went out of the pale of my birthplace and from my father's house owing to the terrors of famine pestilence and slaughter the sword destroyed from without and within was the terror of pestilence and famine on account of the battles and the contentions which took place between the sons of the old king marucas who had died for each lifted himself up saying I will reign, and they devoured the Israelites with open mouth, so that very few remained of them, even a tithe of a tithe. Many families and heads of the houses of their fathers were lost, and destroyed, and became as naught. Many books of various kinds, new and old, some in manuscript and others in print, as well as those of modern times, were mostly destroyed by fire, or were worn to pieces which, together with their owners, lie hid under the ruins to this day woe to the eyes that beheld this yet may the name of the lord be blessed for the evil as well as for the good fearing that this book might share the same fate as the others i daily used the most persevering exertions in sending letters to some particular individuals in the city of argilia in the city Taitu, and in the city Pesia, to such as had been left humbly beseeching them to search and inquire where might be the place of the glory of this book and it was sought after and found to be hid in the hands of one of the individuals of the congregation, the wise and highly gifted Moses Chasson. And thanks are due to him that upon his ascertaining my good intention to print it and to scatter it throughout all Jewish communities, he did not delay to send it, as he felt a desire for a heavenly reward for this pious act. Yea, he sent it to me as a gift. May he receive a blessing from the Lord, and may his reward be perfect amen now i in my humble station have composed a work entitled hebrew text is inserted here in two parts one part containing some of the scriptural comments which i made with the gracious help of the lord and the second part containing fifty lectures which i delivered to a great congregation 
besides a later comment containing explanations of parts of the talmud which i met with in the course of my studies and which i illustrated according to my humble abilities now i am revising this work a second time in order to bring it to the press if heaven spare my life yet i said to my heart to thee o worm and no man does the scripture proclaim it is time for thee o lord to work for they have made void thy law for the printing of this book of jasher tends to the honor and glory of the lord for through it will the hearts of men be directed to cleave to the blessed lord and by the means of which they will understand the wonderful works of god and his bounties towards our ancestors from the days of old and how he chose us from all nations as thou wilt see at length in the preface wherein thou wilt perceive enumerated the great many uses thirteen in number which induce men to confide in the lord and to adhere to him i have also found another use therein which is that many parts of the five books difficult of comprehension and which the commentators have been unable to reconcile are by means of this book properly understood because it gives a detail of those parts wherein the sacred volume is brief in its account and relates events as they occurred thou wilt therefore find me lifting up my hands in the margins with the words hebrew text is inserted here and translated the humble editor says by which will be understood what i have asserted search and thou wilt find many things also which our rabbis in their short works gave in short are brought forth more fully in this book since it is high time now to act and have a care for the glory of god's name since then it is proper for me at present to defer the publication of my above-mentioned work until i shall first have brought to light the hidden treasures of this book and to reveal them to the world i am confident that with the help of the lord all israel will exult and rejoice therein i have therefore put my trust in the lord may he remember me favorably that i may be enabled in the next year by his help and decree to publish also my aforementioned work as for me my prayer is to him who dwells on high may the lord god assist me and send me from on high his peace favor and faithfulness to help me that he may lead me beside the still waters and conduct me to the paths of righteousness for the sake of his great name and for the sake of his law amen for ever and ever end of section five chapter one of the book of jasher the author is unknown this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by c j Plogue. the book of jasher this is the book of the generations of man whom god created upon the earth on the day when the lord god made heaven and earth chapter one and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and god created man in his own image and god formed man from the ground and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul endowed with speech and the lord said it is not good for man to be alone i will make unto him a helpmate and the lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took away one of his ribs and he built flesh upon it and formed it and brought it to adam and adam awoke from his sleep and behold a woman was standing before him and he said this is a bone of my bones and it shall be called woman for this has been taken from man and adam called her name eve for she was the mother of all living and god blessed them and called their names adam and eve in the day that he created them and the lord god said be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and the lord god took adam and his wife and he placed them in the garden of eden to dress it and to keep it and he commanded them and said unto them from every tree of the garden you may eat but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die and when god had blessed and commanded them he went from them and adam and his wife dwelt in the garden according to the command which the lord had commanded them and the serpent which god had created with them in the earth came to them to incite them to transgress the command of god which he had commanded them and the serpent enticed and persuaded the woman to eat from the tree of knowledge and the woman hearkened to the voice of the serpent 
and she transgressed the word of God, and took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she ate, and she took from it, and gave also to her husband, and he ate. And Adam and his wife transgressed the command of God, which he commanded them, and God knew it, and his anger was kindled against them, and he cursed them. And the Lord God drove them that day from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from which they were taken, and they went and dwelt at the east of the garden of Eden. And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she bore two sons and three daughters. And she called the name of the firstborn Cain, saying, I have obtained a man from the Lord, and the name of the other she called Abel. For she said, In vanity we came into the earth, and in vanity we shall be taken from it. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land, and Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel a keeper of the sheep. And it was at the expiration of a few years that they brought an approximating offering to the Lord, and Cain brought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock from the fat thereof. And God turned and inclined to Abel in his offering, and a fire came down from the Lord from heaven and consumed it. And unto Cain in his offering the Lord did not turn, and he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. And in some time after, Cain and Abel his brother went one day into the field to do their work, and they were both in the field, Cain tilling and ploughing his ground, and Abel feeding his flock, and the flock passed that part which Cain had ploughed in the ground, and it sorely grieved Cain on this account. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger, and said unto him, What is there between me and thee that thou comest to dwell and bring thy flock to feed in my land? And Abel answered his brother Cain, and said unto him, What is there between me and thee that thou shalt eat the flesh of my flock, and clothe thyself with their wool? And now therefore put off the wool of my sheep with which thou hast clothed thyself, and recompense me for their fruit and flesh, which thou hast eaten, and when thou shalt have done this, I will then go from thy land as thou hast said. And Cain said to his brother Abel, Surely if I slay thee this day, who will require thy blood from me? And Abel answered Cain, saying, Surely God who has made us in the earth, he will avenge my cause, and he will require my blood from thee shouldst thou slay me. For the Lord is the judge and the arbiter, and it is he who will requite man according to his evil and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon earth. And now, if thou shouldest slay me here, surely God knoweth thy secret views, and will judge thee for the evil which thou didst declare to do unto me this day. And when Cain heard the words which Abel his brother had spoken, behold, the anger of Cain was kindled against his brother Abel for declaring this thing. And Cain hastened and rose up and took the iron part of his ploughing instrument, with which he suddenly smote his brother, and he slew him. And Cain spilt the blood of his brother Abel upon the earth, and the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before the flock. And after this Cain repented, having slain his brother, and he was sadly grieved, and he wept over him, and it vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up and dug a hole in the field wherein he put his brother's body, and he turned the dust over it. And the Lord knew what Cain had done to his brother, and the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Where is Abel thy brother that was with thee? And Cain dissembled and said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto him, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground where thou hast slain him. For thou hast slain thy brother, and hast dissembled before me, and didst imagine in thy heart that I saw thee not, nor knew all thy actions. But thou didst this thing, and didst slay thy brother for naught, and because he spoke rightly to thee, and now, therefore, cursed be thou from the ground which opened its mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, and wherein thou didst bury him. And it shall be, when thou shalt till it, it shall no more give to thee its strength, as in the beginning. For thorns and thistles shall the ground produce, and thou shalt be moving and wandering in the earth until the day of thy death. And at that time Cain went out from the presence of the Lord from the place where he was, and he went moving and wandering in the land towards the east of Eden, he and all belonging to him. And Cain knew his wife in those days, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Enoch, 
saying in that time the lord began to give him rest and quiet in the earth and at that time cain also began to build a city and he built the city and he called the name of the city enoch according to the name of his son for in those days the lord had given him rest upon the earth and he did not move about and wander as in the beginning and irad was born to enoch and irad begat Machuael, and Machuael begat methusael End of chapter 1chapter two of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by c j plogue chapter two and it was in the hundred and thirtieth year of the life of adam upon the earth that he again knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare a son in his likeness and in his image and she called his name seth saying because god has appointed me another seed in the place of abel for cain has slain him and seth lived one hundred and five years and he begat a son and seth called the name of his son enosh saying because in that time the sons of men began to multiply and to afflict their souls and hearts by transgressing and rebelling against god and it was in the days of enosh that the sons of men continued to rebel and transgress against god to increase the anger of the lord against the sons of men and the sons of men went and they served other gods and they forgot the lord who had created them in the earth and in those days the sons of men made images of brass and iron wood and stone and they bowed down and served them and every man made his god and they bowed down to them and the sons of men forsook the lord all the days of enosh and his children and the anger of the lord was kindled on account of their works and abominations which they did in the earth and the lord caused the waters of the river gihon to overwhelm them and he destroyed and consumed them and he destroyed the third part of the earth and notwithstanding this the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways and their hands were yet extended to do evil in the sight of the lord and in those days there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth and there was no food for the sons of men and the famine was very great in those days and the seed which they sowed in those days in the ground became thorns thistles and briars for from the days of adam was this declaration concerning the earth of the curse of god which he cursed the earth on account of the sin which adam sinned before the lord and it was when men continued to rebel and transgress against god and to corrupt their ways that the earth also became corrupt and enosh lived ninety years and he begat canaan and canaan grew up and he was forty years old and he became wise and had knowledge and skill and all wisdom and he reigned over all the sons of men and he led the sons of men to wisdom and knowledge for canaan was a very wise man and had understanding in all wisdom and with his wisdom he ruled over spirits and demons and canaan knew by his wisdom that god would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon the earth and that the lord would in the latter days bring upon them the waters of the flood and in those days canaan wrote upon tablets of stone what was to take place in time to come and he put them in his treasures and canaan reigned over the whole earth and he turned some of the sons of men to the service of god and when canaan was seventy years old he begat three sons and two daughters and these are the names of the children of canaan the name of the firstborn malalel the second inan the third mirad and their sisters were Ada and Zillah. These are the five children of Canaan that were born to him. And Lamech, the son of Methusel, became related to Canaan by marriage, and he took his two daughters for his wives. And Ada conceived and bare a son to Lamech, and she called his name Jabal. And she again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Jubal. And Zillah, her sister, was barren in those days, and had no offspring for in those days the sons of men began to trespass against god and to transgress the commandments which he had commanded to adam to be fruitful and multiply in the earth and some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink a draught that would render them barren in order that they might retain their figures and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fade and when the sons of men caused some of their wives to drink zillah drank with them and the child-bearing women appeared abominable in the sight of their husbands as widows whilst their husbands lived for to the barren ones only they were attached and in the end days and years when zillah became old the lord opened her womb and she conceived and bare a son 
and she called his name Tubal Cain, saying, After I had withered away, have I obtained him from the Almighty God. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and she called her name Nama, for she said, After I had withered away, have I obtained pleasure and delight. And Lamech was old, and advanced in years, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see. And Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him, and it was one day that Lamech went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And whilst they were walking in the field, Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them. For Lamech was very old and could not see much, and Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off, and he slew him, for he appeared to them to be an animal. And the arrows entered Cain's body, although he was distant from them, and he fell to the ground and died. And the Lord requited Cain's evil according to his wickedness which he had done to his brother Abel, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. And it came to pass when Cain had died, that Lamech and Tubal went to see the animal which they had slain, and they saw, and behold, Cain their grandfather was fallen dead upon the earth. And Lamech was very much grieved at having done this, and in clapping his hands together he struck his son and caused his death. And the wives of Lamech heard what Lamech had done, and they sought to kill him. And the wives of Lamech hated him from that day, because he slew Cain and Tubal Cain, and the wives of Lamech separated from him and would not hearken to him in those days. And Lamech came to his wives, and he pressed them to listen, to hear him about this matter. And he said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, O wives of Lamech, attend to my words, for now you have imagined and said that I slew a man with my wounds and a child with my stripes for their having done no violence. But surely know that I am old and gray-headed, and that my eyes are heavy through age, and I did this thing unknowingly. And the wives of Lamech listened to him in this matter, and they returned to him with the advice of their father Adam. But they bore no children to him from that time, knowing that God's anger was increasing in those days against the sons of men, to destroy them with the waters of the flood for their evil doings. And Mahalel the son of Canaan lived sixty-five years, and he begat Jared. And Jared lived sixty-two years, and he begat Enoch. End of chapter 2of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain read by c j ploke chapter three and enoch lived sixty-five years and he begat methuselah and enoch walked with god after having begat methuselah and he served the lord and despised the evil ways of men and the soul of enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the lord in knowledge and in understanding and he wisely retired from the sons of men and secreted himself away from them for many days. And it was at the expiration of many years whilst he was serving the Lord, and praying before him in his house, that an angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Rise, and go forth from thy house, and from the place where thou dost hide thyself, and appear to the sons of men, in order that thou mayest teach them the way in which they should go and the work which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of god and enoch rose up according to the word of the lord and went forth from his house from his place and from the chamber in which he was concealed and he went to the sons of men and taught them the ways of the lord and at that time assembled the sons of men and acquainted them with the instruction of the lord and he ordered it to be proclaimed in all places where the sons of men dwelt saying where is the man who wishes to know the ways of the Lord and good works? Let him come to Enoch. And all the sons of men then assembled to him, for all who desired this thing went to Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men according to the word of the Lord. And they came and bowed to him, and they heard his word. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways. And the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch, and they came to hear his wisdom. And all the kings of the sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard of his wisdom, and they bowed down to him, and they also required of Enoch to reign over them, to which he consented. And they assembled in all one hundred and thirty kings and princes, and they made Enoch king over them, and they were all under his power and command. 
and Enoch taught them wisdom, knowledge, and the ways of the Lord, and he made peace amongst them, and peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men two hundred and forty-three years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people, and he led them in the ways of the Lord. And these are the generations of Enoch, Methuselah, Elisha, and Elimelech, three sons, and their sisters were Malchah and Nama, and Methuselah lived eighty-seven years, and he begat Lamech. And it was in the fifty-sixth year of the life of Lamech when Adam died. Nine hundred and thirty years old was he at his death, and his two sons, with Enoch and Methuselah his son, buried him with great pomp, as at the burial of kings in the cave which God had told him. And in that place all the sons of men made a great mourning and weeping on account of Adam. It has therefore become a custom among the sons of men to this day. And Adam died because he ate of the tree of knowledge, he and his children after him, as the Lord God had spoken. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the two hundred and forty-third year of the reign of Enoch in that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men, and to secrete himself as at first, in order to serve the Lord. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secrete himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men three days, and then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God, and the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord, and all they asked him about the Lord he told them. And he did in this manner for many years, and he afterward concealed himself for six days, and appeared to his people one day in seven, and after that once in a month, and then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him, and desired again to see the face of Enoch, and to hear his word, but they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance. Therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. And all the kings and princes resolved to assemble the sons of men, and to come to Enoch, thinking that they might all speak to him at the time when he should come forth amongst them, and they did so. And the day came when Enoch went forth, and they all assembled and came to him, and Enoch spoke to them the words of the Lord, and he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and they bowed down before him, and they said, May the king live, may the king live. And in some time after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them the ways of God, behold, an angel of the Lord then called unto Enoch from heaven, and wished to bring him up to heaven, to make him reign there over the sons of God, as he had reigned over the sons of men upon the earth. When at that time Enoch heard this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth, and taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instructions. And he said to them, I have been required to ascend into heaven. I therefore do not know the day of my going. And now therefore I will teach you wisdom and knowledge, and will give you instruction before I leave you, how to act upon the earth whereby you may live. And he did so. And he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them instruction, and he reproved them. And he placed before them statutes and judgments to do upon earth. And he made peace amongst them, and he taught them everlasting life, and dwelt with them some time, teaching them all these things. And at that time the sons of men were with Enoch, and Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of a great horse descending from heaven, and the horse paced in the air. And they told Enoch what they had seen, and Enoch said to them, On my account does this horse descend upon earth. The time is come when I must go from you, and I shall no more be seeing you. And the horse descended at that time, and stood before Enoch, and all the sons of men that were with Enoch saw him. And Enoch then again ordered a voice to be proclaimed, saying, Where is the man who delighteth to know the ways of the Lord his God? Let him come this day to Enoch before he is taken from us. And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day, and all the kings of the earth with their princes and counsellors remained with him that day. And Enoch then taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instruction. And he bade them serve the Lord and walk in his ways all the days of their lives, and he continued to make peace amongst them. And it was after this that he rose up and rode upon the horse, and he went forth, and all the sons of men went after him, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went with him one day's journey. 
9. And the second day he said to them, return home to your tents, why will you go, perhaps you may die, and some of them went from him, and those that remained went with him six days journey. 10. And Enoch said to them every day, return to your tents lest you may die, but they were not willing to return and they went with him. 11. And on the sixth day some of the men remained and clung to him, and they said to him, we will go with thee to the place where thou goest. As the Lord liveth, death only shall separate us. And they urged so much to go with him that he ceased speaking to them, and they went after him and would not return. And when the kings returned, they caused a census to be taken, in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind, with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he ascended into heaven. And all those kings went to the place, and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through this snow, and see, perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead, and are now under these stones of snow. And they searched, but could not find him, for he had ascended into heaven. End of chapter 3「4. Of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C. J. Plog. Chapter 4. And all the days that Enoch lived upon the earth were three hundred and sixty-five years. And when Enoch had ascended into heaven, all the kings of the earth rose and took Methuselah his son, and anointed him, and they caused him to reign over them in the place of his father. And Methuselah acted uprightly in the sight of God, as his father Enoch had taught him, and he likewise, during the whole of his life, taught the sons of men wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of God, and he did not turn from the good way, either to the right or to the left. But in the latter days of Methuselah the sons of men turned from the Lord, they corrupted the earth, they robbed and plundered each other, and they rebelled against God, and they transgressed, and they corrupted their ways and would not hearken to the voice of Methuselah, but rebelled against him. And the Lord was exceedingly wroth against them, and the Lord continued to destroy the seed in those days, so that there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth. For when they sowed the ground in order that they might obtain food for their support, behold, thorns and thistles were produced which they did not sow. And still the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were still extended, to do evil in the sight of God. And they provoked the Lord with their evil ways, and the Lord was very wroth, and repented that he had made man. And he thought to destroy and annihilate them, and he did so. In those days when Lamech the son of Methuselah was one hundred and sixty years old, Seth the son of Adam died. And all the days that Seth lived were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Lamech was one hundred and eighty years old, when he took Ashmoah, the daughter of Elisha, the son of Enoch his uncle, and she conceived. And at that time the sons of men sowed the ground, and a little food was produced. Yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they trespassed and rebelled against God. And the wife of Lamech conceived and bare him a son at that time, at the revolution of the year. And Methuselah called his name Noah, saying the earth was in his days at rest and free from corruption, and Lamech his father called his name Manachem, saying, This one shall comfort us in our works and miserable toil in the earth which God has cursed. And the child grew up, and was weaned, and he went in the ways of his father Methuselah, perfect and upright with God. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days, as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with sons and daughters. And they taught one another their evil practices, and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor as well as his relative, and they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men, and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men, 
and all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to the birds of the air, together with cattle and beasts that are in the field, for I repent that I made them. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought the evil upon man which he had declared, for this was from the Lord, that they should not see the evil which the Lord spoke of concerning the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord chose him and his children to raise up seed from them upon the face of the whole earth. End of chapter 4「Chapter Five of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by C. J. Plogue. Chapter Five. And it was in the eighty-fourth year of the life of Noah that Enoch, the son of Seth, died. He was nine hundred and five years old at his death. And in the one hundred and seventy-ninth year of the life of Noah, Canaan, the son of Enosh, died. And all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And in the two hundred and thirty-fourth year of the life of Noah, Malalel, the son of Canaan, died, and the days of Malalel were eight hundred and ninety-five years, and he died. And Jared, the son of Malalel, died in those days, in the three hundred and thirty-sixth year of the life of Noah, and all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty-two years, and he died. And all who followed the Lord died in those days before they saw the evil which God declared to do upon the earth. And after the lapse of many years in the four hundred and eightieth year of the life of Noah, when all those men who followed the Lord had died away from amongst the sons of men, and only Methuselah was then left, God said unto Noah and Methuselah, saying, Speak ye, and proclaim to the sons of men, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Return from your evil ways and forsake your works, and the Lord will repent of the evil that he declared to do to you, so that it shall not come to pass. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of one hundred and twenty years. If you will turn to me and forsake your evil ways, then will I also turn away from the evil which I told you, and it shall not exist, saith the Lord. And Noah and Methuselah spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men, day after day, constantly speaking to them. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff-necked. And the Lord granted them a period of one hundred and twenty years, saying, If they will return, then will God repent of the evil, so as not to destroy the earth. And Noah, the son of Lamech, refrained from taking a wife in those days to beget children, for he said, Surely now God will destroy the earth. Wherefore then shall I beget children? And Noah was a just man. He was perfect in his generation, and the Lord chose him to raise up seed from his seed upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, Take unto thee a wife, and beget children, for I have seen thee righteous before me in this generation. And thou shalt raise up seed, and thy children with thee in the midst of the earth. And Noah went and took a wife, and he chose Naamah the daughter of Enoch, and she was five hundred and eighty years old. And Noah was four hundred and ninety years old when he took Naamah for a wife. And Naamah conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Japheth, saying, God has enlarged me in the earth. And she conceived again and bare a son, and he called his name Shem, saying, God has made me a remnant to raise up seed in the midst of the earth. And Noah was five hundred and two years old when Naamah bare Shem, and the boys grew up and went in the ways of the Lord, in all that Methuselah and Noah their father taught them. And Lamech, the father of Noah, died in those days. Yet verily he did not go with all his heart in the ways of his father, and he died in the hundred and ninety-fifth year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy years, and he died. And all the sons of men who knew the Lord died in that year before the Lord brought evil upon them. For the Lord willed them to die so as not to behold the evil that God would bring upon their brothers and relatives, as he had so declared to do. In that time the Lord said to Noah and Methuselah, Stand forth and proclaim to the sons of men all the words that I spoke to you in those days. Her adventure they may turn from their evil ways, and I will then repent of the evil, and will not bring it. And Noah and Methuselah stood forth and said in the ears of the sons of men 
all that god had spoken concerning them but the sons of men would not hearken neither would they incline their ears to all their declarations and it was after this that the lord said to noah the end of all flesh has come before me on account of their evil deed and behold i will destroy the earth and do thou take unto thee gopher wood and go to a certain place and make a large ark and place it in that spot and thus shalt thou make it three hundred cubits at its length fifty cubits broad and thirty cubits high and thou shalt make unto thee a door open at its side and to a cubit thou shalt finish above and cover it within and without with pitch and behold i will bring the flood of waters upon the earth and all flesh be destroyed from under the heavens all that is upon earth shall perish and thou and thy household shall go and gather two couple of all living things male and female and shall bring them to the ark to raise up seed from them upon earth and gather unto thee all food that is eaten by all the animals that there may be food for thee and for them and thou shalt choose for thy sons three maidens from the daughters of men and they shall be wives to thy sons and noah rose up and he made the ark in the place where god had commanded him and noah did as god had ordered him in his five hundred and ninety-fifth year noah commenced to make the ark and he made the ark in five years as the lord had commanded then noah took the three daughters of eliakim the son of methuselah for wives for his sons as the lord had commanded noah and it was at that time methuselah the son of enoch died nine hundred and sixty years old was he at his death End of chapter five chapter six of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by c j plogue chapter six at that time after the death of methuselah the lord said to noah go thou with thy household into the ark behold i will gather to thee all the animals of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and they shall all come and surround the ark and thou shalt go and seat thyself by the doors of the ark and all the beasts the animals and the fowls shall assemble and place themselves before thee and such of them as shall come and crouch before thee shalt thou take and deliver into the hands of thy sons who shall bring them to the ark and all that will stand before thee thou shalt leave and the lord brought this about on the next day and animals beasts and fowls came in great multitudes and surrounded the ark and noah went and seated himself by the door of the ark and of all flesh that crouched before him he brought into the ark and all that stood before him he left upon the earth and a lioness came with her two whelps male and female and the three crouched before noah and the two whelps rose up against the lioness and smote her and made her flee from her place and she went away and they returned to their places and crouched upon the earth before noah and the lioness ran away and stood in the place of the lions and noah saw this and wondered greatly and he rose and took the two whelps and brought them into the ark and noah brought into the ark from all living creatures that were upon the earth so that there was none left but which noah brought into the ark two and two came to noah into the ark but from the clean animals and clean fowls he brought seven couples as god had commanded him and all the animals and beasts and fowls were still there and they surrounded the ark at every place and the rain had not descended till seven days after and on that day the lord caused the whole earth to shake and the sun darkened and the foundations of the world raged and the whole earth was moved violently and the lightning flashed and the thunder roared and all the fountains in the earth were broken up such as was not known to the inhabitants before and god did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men that there might be no more evil upon earth and still the sons of men would not return from their evil ways and they increased the anger of the lord at that time and did not even direct their hearts to all this and at the end of seven days in the six hundredth year of the life of noah the waters of the flood were upon the earth and all the fountains of the deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights and noah and his household and all the living creatures that were with him came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood and the lord shut him in 
and all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil on account of the rain for the waters were coming more violently upon the earth and the animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark and the sons of men assembled together about seven hundred thousand men and women and they came unto noah to the ark and they called to noah saying open for us that we may come to thee in the ark and wherefore shall we die and noah with a loud voice answered them from the ark saying have you not all rebelled against the lord and said that he does not exist and therefore the lord brought upon you this evil to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth is not this the thing that i spoke to you of one hundred and twenty years back and you would not hearken to the voice of the lord and now do you desire to live upon earth and they said to noah we are ready to return to the lord only open for us that we may live and not die and noah answered them saying behold now that you see the trouble of your souls you wish to return to the lord why did you not return during these hundred and twenty years which the lord granted you as the determined period but now you come and tell me this on account of the troubles of your souls now also the lord will not listen to you neither will he give ear to you on this day so that you will not now succeed in your wishes and the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark to come in on account of the rain for they could not bear the rain upon them and the lord sent all the beasts and animals that stood around the ark and the beasts overpowered them and drove them from that place and every man went his way and again they scattered themselves upon the face of the earth and the rain was still descending upon the earth and it descended forty days and forty nights and the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth and all flesh that was upon the earth or in the waters died whether men animals beasts creeping things or birds of the air and there only remained noah and those that were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed and they greatly increased upon the earth and they lifted up the ark and it was raised from the earth and the ark floated upon the face of the waters and it was tossed upon the waters so that all the living creatures within were turned about like pottage in the cauldron and great anxiety seized all the living creatures that were in the ark and the ark was like to be broken and all the living creatures that were in the ark were terrified and the lions roared and the oxen lowed and the wolves howled and every living creature in the ark spoke and lamented in its own language so that their voices reached to a great distance and noah and his sons cried and wept in their troubles they were greatly afraid that they had reached the gates of death and noah prayed unto the lord and he cried unto him on account of this and he said o lord help us for we have no strength to bear this evil that has encompassed us for the waves of the waters have surrounded us mischievous torrents have terrified us the snares of death have come before us answer us o lord answer us light up thy countenance toward us and be gracious to us redeem us and deliver us and the lord hearkened to the voice of noah and the lord remembered him and a wind passed over the earth and the waters were still and the ark rested and the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters decreased in those days and the ark rested upon the mountains of ararat and noah then opened the windows of the ark and noah still called out to the lord at that time and he said o lord who didst form the earth and the heavens and all that are therein bring forth our souls from this confinement and from the prison wherein thou hast placed us for i am much wearied with sighing and the lord hearkened to the voice of noah and said to him when thou shalt have completed a full year thou shalt then go forth and at the revolution of the year when a full year was completed to noah's dwelling in the ark the waters were dried from off the earth and noah put off the covering of the ark at that time on the twenty-seventh day of the second month the earth was dry but noah and his sons and those that were with him did not go out from the ark until the lord told them and the day came that the lord told them to go out and they all went out from the ark and they went and returned every one to his way and to his place and noah and his sons dwelt in the land that god had told them and they served the lord all their days and the lord blessed noah and his sons on their going out from the ark and he said to them be fruitful and fill all the earth become strong and increase abundantly in the earth and multiply therein End of chapter six chapter seven of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by C. J. Plogue. 
chapter 7. And these are the names of the sons of Noah, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. And children were born to them after the flood, for they had taken wives before the flood. These are the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras, seven sons. And the sons of Gomer were Askenaz, Rephoth, and Tagarma. And the sons of Magog were Alichanaf and Lubal. And the children of Madai were Echon, Zilo, Chazoni, and Lot. And the sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Chittim, and Dodonim. And the sons of Tubal were Arifi, Kassad, and Thari. And the sons of Meshrech were Didan, Zeron, and Shabashni. And the sons of Tiras were Benib, Gira, Lupirian, and Gilak. These are the sons of Japheth, according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about four hundred and sixty men. And these are the sons of Ham, Cush, Mitzraim, Phut, and Canaan, four sons, and the sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sapta, Rema, and Satecha. And the sons of Rema were Sheba and Diran. And the sons of Mitzraim were Lud, Enom, and Pethros, Chasloth, and Shaftor. And the sons of Phut were Gibal, Hedan, Bena, and Edan. And the sons of Canaan were Zidan, Heth, Amore, Gergashi, Hivi, Arki, Senai, Orodai, Zimodai, and Chemothai. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families and their numbers in those days were about seven hundred and thirty men. And these are the sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arpashad, Lud, and Aram five sons, and the sons of Elam were Shushan, Makhul, and Harmon, and the sons of Asher were Myrus and Mokil, and the sons of Arpashad were Shelach, Anar, and Ashkol, and the sons of Lud were Pithor and Bezayun, and the sons of Aram were Uz, Chul, Gather, and Mash. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, and their numbers in those days were about three hundred men. These are the generations of Shem. Shem begat Arpashad, and Arpashad begat Shelach, and Shelach begat Eber, and to Eber were born two children, the name of one was Peleg, for in his days the sons of men were divided, and in the latter days the earth was divided. And the name of the second was Yoktan, meaning that in his day the lives of the sons of men were diminished and lessened. These are the sons of Yoktan. Amadad, Shelaf, Chazarmaveth, Yerak, Hadurum, Ozel, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these are the sons of Yoktan. And Peleg, his brother, begat Yen, and Yen begat Sirug, and Sirug begat Nahor, and Nahor begat Tira. And Tira was thirty-eight years old, and he begat Haran and Nahor. And Cush, the son of Ham, the son of Noah, took a wife in those days in his old age, and she bare a son, and they called his name Nimrod. Saying, At that time the sons of men again began to rebel and transgress against God. And the child grew up, and his father loved him exceedingly, for he was the son of his old age. And the garments of skin which God made for Adam and his wife when they went out of the garden, were given to Cush. For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Jared, and when Enoch was taken up to God, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And at the death of Methuselah, Noah took them and brought them to the ark, and they were with him until he went out of the ark. And in their going out, Ham stole those garments from Noah, his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. And when Ham begat his firstborn Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers, and when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him. And Nimrod grew up, and when he was twenty years old, he put on those garments. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments, and God gave him might and strength, and he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field and he hunted the animals, and he built altars, and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. 
and nimrod strengthened himself and he rose up from amongst his brethren and he fought the battles of his brethren against all their enemies round about and the lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren in his hands and god prospered him from time to time in his battles and he reigned upon the earth therefore it became current in those days when a man ushered forth those that he had trained up for battle he would say to them like god did to nimrod who was a mighty hunter in the earth and who succeeded in the battles that prevailed against his brethren that he delivered them from the hands of their enemies so may god strengthen us and deliver us this day and when nimrod was forty years old at that time there was a war between his brethren and the children of japheth so that they were in the power of their enemies and nimrod went forth at that time and he assembled all the sons of cush and their families about four hundred and sixty men and he hired also from some of his friends and acquaintances about eighty men and he gave them their hire and he went with them to the battle and when he was on the road nimrod strengthened the hearts of the people that went with him and he said to them do not fear neither be alarmed for all our enemies will be delivered into our hands and you may do with them as you please and all the men that went were about five hundred and they fought against their enemies and they destroyed them and subdued them and nimrod placed standing officers over them in their respective places and he took some of their children as security and they were all servants to nimrod and to his brethren and nimrod and all the people that were with him turned homeward and when nimrod had joyfully returned from battle after having conquered his enemies all his brethren together with those who knew him before assembled to make him king over them and they placed the regal crown upon his head and he set over his subjects and people princes judges and rulers as is the custom amongst kings and he placed terah the son of nahor the prince of his host and he dignified him and elevated him above all his princes and whilst he was reigning according to his heart's desire after having conquered all his enemies around he advised with his counsellors to build a city for his palace and they did so and they found a large valley opposite to the east and they built him a large and extensive city and nimrod called the name of the city that he built shinar for the lord had vehemently shaken his enemies and destroyed them and nimrod dwelt in shinar and he reigned securely and he fought with his enemies and he subdued them and he prospered in all his battles and his kingdom became very great and all nations and tongues heard of his fame and they gathered themselves to him and they bowed down to the earth and they brought him offerings and he became their lord and king and they all dwelt with him in the city of shinar and nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of noah and they were all under his power and counsel and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union but nimrod did not go in the ways of the lord and he was more wicked than all the men that were before him from the days of the flood until those days and he made gods of wood and stone and he bowed down to them and he rebelled against the lord and taught all his subjects and the people of the earth his wicked ways and mardan his son was more wicked than his father and every one that heard of the acts of mardan the son of nimrod would say concerning him from the wicked go forth wickedness therefore it became a proverb in the whole earth saying from the wicked goeth forth wickedness and it was current in the words of men from that time to this and terah the son of nahor prince of nimrod's host was in those days very great in the sight of the king and his subjects and the king and princes loved him and they elevated him very high and terah took a wife and her name was amthelo the daughter of cornebo and the wife of terah conceived and bare him a son in those days terah was seventy years old when he begat him and terah called the name of his son that was born to him abram because the king had raised him in those days and dignified him above all his princes that were with him End of chapter seven chapter eight of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain read by c j plogue and it was in the night that abram was born that all the servants of terah and all the wise men of nimrod and his conjurers came and ate and drank in the house of terah and they rejoiced with him on that night 
and when all the wise men and conjurers went out from the house of Terah, they lifted up their eyes toward heaven that night to look at the stars, and they saw, and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the heavens, and he swallowed up the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. And all the wise men of the king and his conjurers were astonished at the sight, and the sages understood this matter, and they knew its import. And they said to each other, This only betokens the child that has been born to Tira this night, who will grow up and be fruitful and multiply and possess all the earth, he and his children forever, and he and his seed will slay great kings and inherit their lands. And the wise men and conjurers went home that night, and in the morning all these wise men and conjurers rose up early and assembled in an appointed house. And they spoke and said to each other, Behold, the sight that we saw last night is hidden from the king. It has not been made known to him. And should this thing get known to the king in the latter days, he will say to us, Why have you concealed this matter from me? And then we shall all suffer death. Therefore let us go and tell the king the sight which we saw, and the interpretation thereof, and we shall then remain clear. And they did so. And they all went to the king and bowed down to him to the ground, and they said, May the king live, may the king live. We heard that a son was born to Terah, the son of Nahor, the prince of thy host, and we yesternight came to his house, and we ate and drank and rejoiced with him that night. And when thy servants went out from the house of Terah to go to our respective homes to abide there for the night, we lifted up our eyes to heaven and saw a great star coming from the east, and the same star ran with great speed and swallowed up four great stars from the four sides of the heavens. And thy servants were astonished at the sight which we saw, and were greatly terrified. And we made our judgment upon the sight, and knew by our wisdom the proper interpretation thereof. That this thing applies to the child that is born to Terah, who will grow up and multiply greatly, and become powerful, and kill all the kings of the earth, and inherit all their lands, he and his seed forever. And now, our Lord and King, behold, we have truly acquainted thee with what we have seen according to this child. If it seemeth good to the king to give his father value for this child, we will slay him before he shall grow up and increase in the land, and his evil increase against us, that we and our children perish through his evil. And the king heard their words, and they seemed good in his sight, and he sent and called for Terah, and Terah came before the king. And the king said to Terah, I have been told that a son was yesternight born to thee, and after this manner was observed in the heavens at his birth. And now therefore give me the child that we may slay him before his evil springs up against us, and I will give thee for his value thy house full of silver and gold. And Terah answered the king and said to him, My lord and king, I have heard thy words, and thy servant shall do all that his king desireth. But my lord and king, I will tell thee what happened to me yesternight that I may see what advice the king will give his servant, and then I will answer the king upon what he has just spoken. And the king said, Speak. And Terah said to the king, Aon, son of Morig, came to me yesternight, saying, Give unto me the great and beautiful horse that the king gave thee, and I will give thee silver and gold, and straw and provender for its value. And I said to him, Wait till I see the king concerning thy words, and behold, whatever the king saith, that will I do. And now, my lord and king, behold, I have made this thing known to thee, and the advice which my king will give unto his servant, that will I follow. And the king heard the words of Terah, and his anger was kindled, and he considered him in the light of a fool. And the king answered Terah, and he said to him, Art thou so silly, ignorant, or deficient in understanding to do this thing, to give thy beautiful horse for silver and gold, or even for straw and provender? Art thou so short of silver and gold that thou shouldest do this thing, because thou canst not obtain straw and provender to feed thy horse? And what is silver and gold to thee, or straw and provender, that thou shouldest give away that fine horse which I gave thee, like which there is none to be had on the whole earth? And the king left off speaking, and Terah answered the king, saying, Like unto this has the king spoken to his servant. I beseech thee, my lord and king, what is this which thou didst say unto me, saying, Give thy son, that we may slay him, and I will give thee silver and gold for his value? What shall I do with silver and gold after the death of my son? Who shall inherit me? Surely then at my death the silver and gold will return to my king who gave it. 
and when the king heard the words of terah and the parable which he brought concerning the king it grieved him greatly and he was vexed at this thing and his anger burned within him and terah saw that the anger of the king was kindled against him and he answered the king saying all that i have is in the king's power whatever the king desireth to do to his servant let him do yea even my son he is in the king's power without value in exchange he and his two brothers that are older than he and the king said to terah no but i will purchase thy younger son for a price and terah answered the king saying i beseech thee my lord and king to let thy servant speak a word before thee and let the king hear the word of his servant and terah said let my king give me three days time till i consider this matter within myself and consult with my family concerning the words of my king and he pressed the king greatly to agree to this and the king hearkened to terah and he did so and he gave him three days time and terah went out from the king's presence and he came home to his family and spoke to them all the words of the king and the people were greatly afraid and it was in the third day that the king sent to terah saying send me thy son for a price as i spoke to thee and shouldst thou not do this i will send and slay all thou hast in thy house so that thou shalt not even have a dog remaining and terah hastened as the thing was urgent from the king and he took a child from one of his servants which his handmaid had borne to him that day and terah brought the child to the king and received value for him and the lord was with terah in this matter that nimrod might not cause abram's death and the king took the child from terah and with all his might dashed his head to the ground for he thought it had been abram and this was concealed from him from that day and it was forgotten by the king as it was the will of the providence not to suffer abram's death and terah took abram his son secretly together with his mother and nurse and he concealed them in a cave and he brought them their provisions monthly and the lord was with abram in the cave and he grew up and abram was in the cave ten years and the king and his princes soothsayers and sages thought that the king had killed abram End of chapter 8、Chapter、9 of the Book of Jasher And Haran, the son of Terah, Abram's oldest brother, took a wife in those days. Haran was thirty nine years old when he took her, and the wife of Haran conceived and bare a son. And he called his name Lot. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and she called her name Milca. And she again conceived and bare a daughter, and she called her name Sarai. Haran was forty two years old when he begot Sarai, which was in the tenth year of the life of Abram. And in those days, Abram and his mother and nurse went out from the cave, as the king and his subjects had forgotten the affair of Abram. And when Abram came out from the cave, he went to Noah and his son Shem, and he remained with them to learn the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And no man knew where Abram was, and Abram served Noah and Shem, his son, for a long time. And Abram was in Noah's house thirty nine years, and Abram knew the Lord from three years old, and he went in the ways of the Lord until the day of his death, as Noah and his son Shem had taught him. And all the sons of the earth in those days greatly transgressed against the Lord, and they rebelled against him, and they served other gods, and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth, and the inhabitants of the earth made unto themselves, at that time, every man his god, gods of wood and stone which could neither speak, hear, nor deliver, and the sons of men served them, and they became their gods. And the king and all his servants, and terror with all his household, were then the first of those that served gods of wood and stone. And terror had twelve gods of large size made of wood and stone after the twelve months of the year, and he served each one monthly, and every month terror would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his gods. Thus did terror all the days. And all that generation were wicked in the sight of the Lord, and they thus made every man his god. But they forsook the Lord who had created them. And there was not a man found in those days in the whole earth who knew the Lord, for they served each man his own God, except Noah and his household, 
and all those who were under his counsel knew the Lord in those days. And Abram the son of Terah was waxing great in those days in the house of Noah, and no man knew it, and the Lord was with him. And the Lord gave Abram an understanding heart, and he knew all the works of that generation were vain, and that all their gods were vain, and were of no avail. And Abram saw the sun shining upon the earth, and Abram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is God, and him will I serve. And Abram served the sun in that day, and he prayed to him, and when evening came the sun set as usual, and Abram said within himself, Surely this cannot be God? And Abram still continued to speak within himself, Who is he who made the heavens and the earth? Who created upon the earth? Where is he? And night darkened over him, and he lifted up his eyes towards the west, north, south, and east. And he saw that the sun had vanished from the earth, and the day became dark. And Abram saw the stars and moon before him, and he said, Surely this is the God who created the whole earth as well as man. And behold, these his servants are gods around him. And Abram served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning when it was light and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Abram saw all the things that the Lord God had made upon the earth. And Abram said unto himself, Surely these are not gods that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of God. And Abram remained in the house of Noah, and there knew the Lord and his ways, and he served the Lord all the days of his life. And all that generation forgot the Lord and served other gods of wood and stone, and rebelled all their days. And King Nimrod reigned securely, that all the earth was under his control, and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together, Phut, Mitzraim, Cush, and Canaan with their families, and they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven, and we will make ourselves famed, so that we may reign upon the whole earth, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us, that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And they all went before the king, and they took the king these words, and the king agreed with them in this affair, and he did so. And all the families assembled, consisting of about six hundred thousand men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower, and they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley at the east end of Shinar, about two days' walk, and they journeyed there, and they dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. And the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it. And whilst they were building against the Lord God of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. And all these people and all the families divided themselves in three parts. The first said, We will ascend into heaven and fight against him. The second said, we will ascend to heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. And the third part said, We will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. And God knew all their works and all their evil thoughts, and he saw the city and the tower which they were building. And when they were building, they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower. And on account of its height, the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders in their ascent to it, until those who went up had completed a full year, and after that they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and bricks. Thus was it done daily. And behold, these ascended and others descended the whole day, and if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it, and if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. And the Lord knew their thoughts, and it came to pass when they were building, they cast the arrows toward the heavens, and all the arrows fell upon them filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. For this was from the Lord in order to cause them to err, and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. And they built the tower and the city, and they did this thing daily until many days and years were elapsed. And God said to the seventy angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. 
and from that day following they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue and they could not understand to speak in one tongue and when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone which he did not order the builder would cast it away and throw it upon his neighbor that he would die and they did so many days and they killed many of them in this manner and the lord smote the three divisions that were there and he punished them according to their works and designs those who said we will ascend to heaven and serve our gods became like apes and elephants and those who said we will smite the heaven with arrows the lord killed them one man through the hand of his neighbor and the third division of those who said we will ascend to heaven and fight against him the lord scattered them throughout the earth and those who were left amongst them when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them they forsook the building and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth and they ceased building the city and the tower therefore he called that place babel for there the lord confounded the language of the whole earth behold it was at the east of the land of shinar and as to the tower which the sons of men built the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up one third part thereof and a fire also descended from heaven and burnt another third and the other third is left to this day and it is of that part which was aloft and its circumference is three days walk and many of the sons of men died in that tower a people without number End of chapter nine chapter ten of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain read by c j plogue chapter ten and peleg the son of eber died in those days in the forty-eighth year of the life of abram son of terah and all the days of terah were two hundred and thirty-nine years and when the lord had scattered the sons of men on account of their sin at the tower behold they spread forth into many divisions and all the sons of men were dispersed into the four corners of the earth and all the families became each according to its language its land or its city and the sons of men built many cities according to their families in all the places where they went and throughout the earth where the lord had scattered them and some of them built cities in places from which they were afterward extirpated and they called these cities after their own names or the names of their children or after their particular occurrences and the sons of japheth the son of noah went and built themselves cities in the place where they were scattered and they called all their cities after their names and the sons of japheth were divided upon the face of the earth into many divisions and languages and these are the sons of japheth according to their families gomer magog madai javan tubal meshach and tiras and these are the children of japheth according to their generations and the generation of gomer according to their cities were the Francum, who dwelt in the land of franza by the river franza by the river sina and the children of rephath are the bartonim who dwell in the land of bartonia by the river leda which empties its waters in the great sea gihon that is oceanus and the children of tugarma are ten families and these are their names buzar parzunak belgar elikanum ragbib tarki big zibuk ongal and tilmaz all these spread and rested in the north and built themselves cities and they called their cities after their own names those are they who abide by the rivers hithla and italak unto this day but the families of angoli belgar and puzunak they dwell by the great river dubni and the names of their cities are also according to their own names and the children of javan are the javanim who dwell in the land of macdonia and the children of madai are the orelum that dwell in the land of kurson and the children of tubal are those that dwell in the land of tuscana by the river pasha and the children of meshech are the shubashni and the children of tiras are the rushash kushni and angolis all these went and built themselves cities those are the cities that are situated by the sea jabos by the river cura which empties itself in the river tragon and the children of elisha are the almanim and they also went and built themselves cities 
those of the cities situated between the mountains of Job and Shabathmo. And of them were the people of Lombarde, who dwell opposite the mountains of Job and Shabathmo. And they conquered the land of Italia, and remained there until this day. And the children of Chittim are the Romim, who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibru. And the children of Dudonim are those who dwell in the cities of the sea Gihon in the land of Bordna. These are the families of the children of Japheth according to their cities and languages when they were scattered after the tower and they called their cities after their names and occurrences. And these are the names of all their cities according to their families which they built in those days after the tower. And the children of Ham were Cush, Mitzraim, Phut, and Canaan according to their generation and cities. All these went and built themselves cities as they found fit places for them and they called their cities after the names of their fathers Cush, Mitzraim, Phut, and Canaan. And the children of Mitzraim are the Ludim, Anamim, Lehabim, Naphtuchim, Pathrusim, Kasluchim, and Kafturim, seven families. All these dwell by the river Sihor, that is the brook of Egypt, and they built themselves cities and called them after their own names. And the children of Pathros and Kasluk intermarried together, and from them went forth the Pelishtim, the Azathim, and the Gerarim, the Githim, and the Ekronim, in all five families. These also built themselves cities, and they called their cities after the names of their fathers unto this day. And the children of Canaan also built themselves cities, and they called their cities after their names, eleven cities, and others without number. And four men from the family of Ham went to the land of the plain. These are the names of the four men, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. And these men built themselves four cities in the land of the plain, and they called the names of their cities after their own names. And they and their children and all belonging to them dwelt in those cities, and they were fruitful and multiplied greatly and dwelt peaceably. And Seir, the son of Hur, son of Hive, son of Canaan, went and found a valley opposite to Mount Paran, and he built a city there. He and his seven sons and his household dwelt there, and he called the city which he built Seir, according to his name, that is, the land of Seir unto this day. These are the families of the children of Ham, according to their languages and cities, when they were scattered to their countries after the tower. And some of the children of Shem, son of Noah, father of all the children of Eber, also went and built themselves cities in the places wherein they were scattered, and they called their cities after their names. And the sons of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arapashad, Lud, and Aram. And they built themselves cities and called the names of their cities after their names. And Asher, son of Shem, and his children and household went forth at that time, a very large body of them, and they went to a distant land that they found, and they met with a very extensive valley in the land that they went to. And they built themselves four cities, and they called them after their own names and occurrences. And these are the names of the city which the children of Asher built, Nineveh, Rezin, Kalak, and Rehobothar. And the children of Asher dwell there unto this day. And the children of Aram also went and built themselves a city, and they called the name of the city Uz after their eldest brother, and they dwelt therein. That is the land of Uz to this day. And in the second year after the tower, a man from the house of Asher, whose name was Bela, went from the land of Nineveh to sojourn with his household wherever he could find a place. And they came until opposite the cities of the plain against Sodom, and they dwelt there. And the man rose up and built there a small city, and called its name Bela, after his name, that is the land of Zor unto this day. And these are the families of the children of Shem, according to their language and cities, after they were scattered upon the earth after the tower. And every kingdom, city, and family of the families of the children of Noah built themselves many cities after this. And they established governments in all their cities in order to be regulated by their orders. So did all the families of the children of Noah forever. End of chapter 10
of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 11 And Nimrod, son of Cush, was still in the land of Shinar, and he reigned over it and dwelt there, and he built cities in the land of Shinar. And these are the names of the four cities which he built, and he called their names after the occurrences that happened to them in the building of the tower. And he called the first Babel, saying, Because the Lord there confounded the language of the whole earth, and the name of the second he called Arek, because from there God dispersed them. And the third he called Eshed, saying, There was a great battle at that place. And the fourth he called Kalna, because his princes and mighty men were consumed there, and they vexed the Lord, they rebelled and transgressed against him. And when Nimrod had built these cities in the land of Shinar, he placed in them the remainder of his people, his princes and his mighty men that were left in his kingdom. And Nimrod dwelt in Babel, and he there renewed his reign over the rest of his subjects. And he reigned securely, and the subjects and princes of Nimrod called his name Amraphel, saying that at the tower his princes and men fell through his means. And notwithstanding this, Nimrod did not return to the Lord, and he continued in wickedness and teaching wickedness to the sons of men. And Mardon his son was worse than his father, and continued to add to the admonitions of his father, and he caused the sons of men to sin. Therefore it is said, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness. At that time there was war between the families of the children of Ham, as they were dwelling in the cities which they built. And Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, went away from the families of the children of Ham, and he fought with them, and he subdued them. And he went to the five cities of the plain, and he fought against them, and he subdued them, and they were under his control. And they served him twelve years, and they gave him a yearly tax. At that time died Nahor, son of Sirug, in the forty-ninth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah. And in the fiftieth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah, Abram came forth from the house of Noah and went to his father's house. And Abram knew the Lord, and he went in his ways and instructions, and the Lord his God was with him. And Terah his father was in those days still captain of the host of King Nimrod, and he still followed strange gods. And Abraham came to his father's house and saw twelve gods standing there in their temples, and the anger of Abram was kindled when he saw these images in his father's house. And Abram said, As the Lord liveth, these images shall not remain in my father's house. So shall the Lord who created me do unto me, if in three days' time I do not break them all. And Abram went from them, and his anger burned within him. And Abram hastened and went from the chamber to his father's outer court. And he found his father sitting in the court, and all his servants with him. And Abram came and sat before him. And Abram asked his father, saying, Father, Tell me where is God who created heaven and earth and all the sons of men upon the earth, and who created thee and me? And Terah answered his son Abram and said, Behold, those who created us are all with us in the house. And Abram said to his father, My lord, shew them to me, I pray thee. And Terah brought Abram into the chamber of the inner court, and Abram saw, and behold, the whole room was full of gods of wood and stone, twelve great images and others less than they without number. And Terah said to his son, Behold, these are they which made all thou seest upon earth, and which created me, and thee, and all mankind. And Terah bowed down to his gods, and he then went away from them. And Abram his son went away with him. And when Abram had gone from them, he went to his mother and sat before her. And he said to his mother, Behold, my father has shown me those who made heaven and earth, and all the sons of men. Now therefore hasten and fetch a kid from the flock, and make of it savory meat, that I may bring it to my father's gods, as an offering for them to eat. Perhaps I may thereby become acceptable to them. And his mother did so, and she fetched a kid, and made savory meat thereof, and brought it to Abram. And Abram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's gods. And he drew nigh to them, that they might eat. And Terah his father did not know of it. And Abram saw on the day when he was sitting amongst them, that they had no voice, no hearing, no motion, and not one of them could stretch forth his hand to eat. And Abram mocked them, and said, Surely the savory meat that I prepared has not pleased them, or perhaps it was too little for them and for that reason they would not eat. Therefore to-morrow I will prepare fresh savory meat better, 
and more plentiful than this in order that i may see the result and it was on the next day that abram directed his mother concerning the savoury meat and his mother rose and fetched three fine kids from the flock and she made of them some excellent savoury meat such as her son was fond of and she gave it to her son abram and terah his father did not know of it and abram took the savoury meat from his mother and brought it before his father's gods into the chamber and he came nigh unto them that they might eat and he placed it before them and abram sat before them all day thinking perhaps they might eat and abram viewed them and behold they had neither voice nor hearing nor did one of them stretch forth his hand to the meat to eat and in the evening of that day in that house abram was clothed with the spirit of god and he called out and said woe unto my father and this wicked generation whose hearts are all inclined to vanity who serve these idols of wood and stone which can neither eat smell hear nor speak who have mouths without speech eyes without sight ears without hearing hands without feeling and legs which cannot move like them are those that made them and that trust in them and when abram saw all these things his anger was kindled against his father and he hastened and took a hatchet in his hand and came unto the chamber of the gods and he broke all his father's gods and when he had done breaking the images he placed the hatchet in the hand of the great god which was there before them and he went out and terah his father came home for he had heard at the door the sound of the striking of the hatchet so terah came into the house to know what this was about and terah having heard the noise of the hatchet in the room of images ran to the room to the images and he met abram going out and terah entered the room and found all the idols fallen down and broken and the hatchet in the hand of the largest which was not broken and the savoury meat which abram his son had made was still before them and when terah saw this his anger was greatly kindled and he hastened and went from the room to abram and he found abram his son still sitting in the house and he said to him what is this work thou hast done to my gods and abram answered terah his father and he said not so my lord for i brought savoury meat before them and when i came nigh to them with the meat that they might eat they all at once stretched forth their hands to eat before the great one had put forth his hand to eat and the large one saw their works that they did before him and his anger was violently kindled against them and he went and took the hatchet that was in the house and came to them and broke them all and behold the hatchet is yet in his hand as thou seest and terah's anger was kindled against his son abram when he spoke this and terah said to abram his son in his anger what is this tale that thou hast told thou speakest lies to me is there in these gods spirit soul or power to do all thou hast told me are they not wood and stone and have i not myself made them and canst thou speak such lies saying that the large god that was with them smote them it is thou that didst place the hatchet in his hands and then sayest he smote them all and abram answered his father and said to him and how canst thou then serve these idols in whom there is no power to do anything can those idols in which thou trustest deliver thee can they hear thy prayers when thou callest upon them can they deliver thee from the hands of thy enemies or will they fight thy battles for thee against thy enemies that thou shouldst serve wood and stone which can neither speak nor hear and now surely it is not good for thee nor for the sons of men that are connected with thee to do these things are you so silly so foolish or so short of understanding that you will serve wood and stone and do after this manner and forget the lord god who made heaven and earth and who created you in the earth and thereby bring a great evil upon your souls in this matter by serving stone and wood did not our fathers in the days of old sin in this manner and the lord god of the universe brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth and how can you continue to do this and serve gods of wood and stone who cannot hear or speak or deliver you from oppression thereby bringing down the anger of the god of the universe upon you now therefore my father refrain from this and bring not evil upon thy soul and the souls of thy household and abram hastened and sprang from before his father and took the hatchet from his father's largest idol with which abram broke it and ran away and terah seeing all that abram had done hastened to go from his house and he went to the king and he came before nimrod and stood before him and he bowed down to the king and the king said 
what dost thou want and he said i beseech thee my lord to hear me now fifty years back a child was born to me and thus has he done to my gods and thus has he spoken and now therefore my lord and king send for him that he may come before thee and judge him according to the law that we may be delivered from his evil and the king sent three men of his servants and they went and brought abram before the king and nimrod and all his princes and servants were that day sitting before him and terah sat also before them and the king said to abram what is this that thou hast done to thy father and to his gods and abram answered the king in the words that he spoke to his father and he said the large god that was with them in the house did to them what thou hast heard and the king said to abram had they power to speak and eat and do as thou hast said and abram answered the king saying and if there be no power in them why dost thou serve them and cause the sons of men to err through thy follies dost thou imagine that they can deliver thee or do anything small or great that thou shouldst serve them and why wilt thou not serve the god of the whole universe who created thee and in whose power it is to kill and to keep alive o foolish simple and ignorant king woe unto thee for ever i thought thou wouldst teach thy servants the upright way but thou hast not done this but hast filled the whole world with thy sins and the sins of thy people who have followed thy ways dost thou not know or hast thou not heard that this evil which thou doest our ancestors sinned therein in days of old and the eternal god brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed them all and also destroyed the whole earth on their account and wilt thou and thy people rise up now and do like unto this work in order to bring down the anger of the lord god upon the universe and to bring evil upon thee and the whole earth now therefore put away this evil deed which thou doest and serve the god of the universe as thy soul is in his hands and then it will be well with thee and if thy wicked heart will not hearken to my words to cause thee to forsake thy evil ways and to serve the eternal god then thou wilt die in shame in the latter days thou thy people and all who are connected with thee hearing thy words or walking in thy evil ways and when abram had ceased speaking before the king and princes abram lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he said the lord seeth all the wicked and he will judge them End of chapter eleven chapter twelve of the book of jasher this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org chapter twelve and when the king heard the words of abram he ordered him to be put into prison and abram was ten days in prison and at the end of those days the king ordered that all the kings princes and governors of different provinces and the sages should come before him and they sat before him and abram was still in the house of confinement and the king said to the princes and sages have you heard what abram the son of terah has done to his father thus has he done to him and i ordered him to be brought before me and thus has he spoken his heart did not misgive him neither did he stir in my presence and behold now he is confined in the prison and therefore decide what judgment is due to this man who reviled the king who spoke and did all the things that you heard and they all answered the king saying the man who revileth the king should be hanged upon a tree but having done all the things that he said and having despised our gods he must therefore be burned to death for this is the law in this matter if it pleaseth the king to do this let him order his servants kindle a fire both night and day in thy brick furnace and then we will cast this man into it and the king did so and he commanded his servants that they should prepare a fire for three days and three nights in the king's furnace that is in castum and the king ordered them to take abram from prison and bring him out to be burned and all the king's servants princes lords governors and judges and all the inhabitants of the land about nine hundred thousand men stood opposite the furnace to see abram and all the women and little ones crowded upon the roofs and towers to see what was doing with abram and they all stood together at a distance and there was not a man left that did not come on that day to behold the scene and when abram was come the conjurers of the king and the sages saw abram and they cried out to the king saying our sovereign lord 
surely this is the man whom we know to have been the child at whose birth the great star swallowed the four stars which we declared to the king now fifty years since and behold now his father has also transgressed thy command and mocked thee by bringing thee another child which thou didst kill and when the king heard their words he was exceedingly wroth and he ordered terah to be brought before him and the king said hast thou heard what the conjurers have spoken now tell me truly how didst thou and if thou shalt speak truth thou shalt be acquitted and seeing that the king's anger was so much kindled terah said to the king my lord and king thou hast heard the truth and what the sages have spoken is right and the king said how couldst thou do this thing to transgress my orders and to give me a child that thou didst not beget and to take value for him and terah answered the king because my tender feelings were excited for my son at that time and i took a son of my handmaid and i brought him to the king and the king said who advised thee to this tell me do not hide aught from me and then thou shalt not die and terah was greatly terrified in the king's presence and he said to the king it was haran my eldest son who advised me to do this and haran was in those days that abram was born two and thirty years old but haran did not advise his father to anything for terah said this to the king in order to deliver his soul from the king for he feared greatly and the king said to terah haran thy son who advised thee to this shall die through fire with abram for the sentence of death is upon him for having rebelled against the king's desire in doing this thing and haran at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of abram but he kept it within himself and haran said in his heart behold now the king has seized abram on account of these things which abram did and it shall come to pass that if abram prevail over the king i will follow him but if the king prevail i will go after the king and when terah had spoken this to the king concerning haran his son the king ordered haran to be seized with abram and they brought them both abram and haran his brother to cast them into the fire and all the inhabitants of the land and the king's servants and princes and all the women and little ones were there standing that day over them and the king's servants took abram and his brother and they stripped them of all their clothes excepting their lower garments which were upon them and they bound their hands and feet with linen cords and the servants of the king lifted them up and cast them both into the furnace and the lord loved abram and he had compassion over him and the lord came down and delivered abram from the fire and he was not burned but all the cords with which they bound him were burned while abram remained and walked about in the fire and haran died when they had cast him into the fire and he was burned to ashes for his heart was not perfect with the lord and those men who cast him into the fire the flame of fire spread over them and they were burned and twelve men of them died and abram walked in the midst of the fire three days and three nights and all the servants of the king saw him walking in the fire and they came and told the king saying behold we have seen abram walking about in the midst of the fire and even the lower garments which are upon him are not burned but the cord with which he was bound is burned and when the king heard their words his heart fainted and he would not believe them so he sent other faithful princes to see this matter and they went and saw it and told it to the king and the king rose to go and see it and he saw abram walking to and fro in the midst of the fire and he saw haran's body burned and the king wondered greatly and the king ordered abram to be taken out from the fire and his servants approached to take him out and they could not for the fire was round about and the flame ascending toward them from the furnace and the king's servants fled from it and the king rebuked them saying make haste and bring abram out of the fire that you shall not die and the servants of the king again approached to bring abram out and the flames came upon them and burned their faces so that eight of them died and when the king saw that his servants could not approach the fire lest they should be burned the king called to abram o servant of the god who is in heaven go forth from amidst the fire come hither before me and abram hearkened to the voice of the king and he went forth from the fire and he came and stood before the king and when abram came out the king and all his servants saw abram coming before the king with his lower garments upon him for they were not burned but the cord with which he was bound was burned and the king said to abram 
how is it that thou wast not burnt in the fire? And Abram said to the king, the God of heaven and earth in whom I trust, and who has all in his power, he delivered me from the fire into which thou didst cast me. And Haran, the brother of Abram, was burned to ashes, and they sought for his body, and they found it consumed. And Haran was eighty-two years old when he died in the fire of Castim. And the king, princes, and inhabitants of the land, seeing that Abram was delivered from the fire, they came and bowed down to Abram. And Abram said to them, Do not bow down to me, but bow down to the God of the world who made you, and serve him, and go in his ways, for it is he who delivered me from out of this fire, and it is he who created the souls and spirits of all men, and formed man in his mother's womb, and brought him forth into the world, and it is he who will deliver those who trust in him from all pain. And this thing seemed very wonderful in the eyes of the king and princes, that Abram was saved from the fire, and that Haran was burned. And the king gave Abram many presents, and he gave him his two head servants from the king's house. The name of the one was Onai, and the name of the other was Eliezer. And all the king's princes and servants gave Abram many gifts of silver and gold and pearl, and the king and his princes sent him away, and he went in peace. And Abram went forth from the king in peace, and many of the king's servants followed him, and about three hundred men joined him. And Abram returned on that day and went to his father's house, he and the men that followed him. And Abram served the Lord his God all the days of his life, and he walked in his ways and followed his law. And from that day forward Abram inclined the hearts of the sons of men to serve the Lord. And at that time Nahor and Abram took unto themselves wives, the daughters of their brother Haran. The wife of Nahor was Milcah, and the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And Sarai, wife of Abram, was barren. She had no offspring in those days. And at the expiration of two years from Abram's going out of the fire, that is in the fifty-second year of his life, behold, King Nimrod sat in Babel upon the throne. And the king fell asleep and dreamed that he was standing with his troops and hosts in a valley opposite the king's furnace. And he lifted up his eyes and saw a man in the likeness of Abram coming forth from the furnace, and that he came and stood before the king with his drawn sword, and then sprang to the king with his sword, when the king fled from the man, for he was afraid. And while he was running, the man threw an egg upon the king's head, and the egg became a great river. And the king dreamed that all his troops sank in that river and died. And the king took flight with three men who were before him, and he escaped. And the king looked at these men, and they were clothed in princely dresses as the garments of kings, and had the appearance and majesty of kings. And while they were running, the river again turned to an egg before the king. And there came forth from the egg a young bird, which came before the king, and flew at his head, and plucked out the king's eye. And the king was grieved at the sight, and he awoke out of his sleep, and his spirit was agitated, and he felt a great terror. And in the morning the king rose from the couch in fear, and he ordered all the wise men and magicians to come before him, when the king related his dream to them. And a wise servant of the king, whose name was Anakai, answered the king, saying, This is nothing else but the evil of Abram and his seed, which will spring up against my lord and king in the latter days. And behold, the day will come when Abram and his seed and the children of his household will war with my king, and they will smite all the king's hosts and his troops. And as to what thou hast said concerning three men which thou didst see like unto thyself, and which did escape, this means that only thou wilt escape with three kings from the kings of the earth, who will be with thee in battle. And that which thou sawest of the river which turned to an egg as at first, and the young bird plucking out thine eye, this means nothing else but the seed of Abram which will slay the king in latter days. This is my king's dream, and this is its interpretation, and the dream is true, and the interpretation which thy servant has given thee is right. Now therefore, my king, surely thou knowest that it is now fifty-two years since thy sages saw this at the birth of Abram, and if my king will suffer Abram to live in the earth, it will be to the injury of my lord and king. For all the days that Abram liveth, neither thou nor thy kingdom will be established. For this was known formerly at his birth. 
and why will not my king slay him, that his evil may be kept from thee in latter days? And Nimrod hearkened to the voice of Anukai, and he sent some of his servants in secret to go and seize Abram, and bring him before the king to suffer death. And Eliezer, Abram's servant, whom the king had given him, was at that time in the presence of the king, and he heard what Anukai had advised the king, and what the king had said to cause Abram's death. And Eliezer said to Abram, Hasten, rise up and save thy soul, that thou mayest not die through the hands of the king. For thus did he see in a dream concerning thee, and thus did Anukai interpret it. And thus also did Anukai advise the king concerning thee. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Eliezer, and Abram hastened and ran for safety to the house of Noah and his son Shem. And he concealed himself there, and found a place of safety. And the king's servants came to Abram's house to seek him, but they could not find him. And they searched throughout the country, and he was not to be found. And they went and searched in every direction, and he was not to be met with. And when the king's servants could not find Abram, they returned to the king. But the king's anger against Abram was stilled, as they did not find him. And the king drove from his mind this matter concerning Abram. And Abram was concealed in Noah's house for one month until the king had forgotten this matter. But Abram was still afraid of the king. And Terah came to see Abram his son secretly in the house of Noah. And Terah was very great in the eyes of the king. And Abram said to his father, Dost thou not know that the king thinketh to slay me, and to annihilate my name from the earth by the advice of his wicked counsellors? Now whom hast thou here, and what hast thou in this land? Arise, let us go together to the land of Canaan, that we may be delivered from his hand, lest thou perish also through him in the latter days. Dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard, that it is not through love that Nimrod giveth thee all his honour, but it is only for his benefit that he bestoweth all of this good upon thee? And if he do unto thee greater good than this, surely these are only vanities of the world, for wealth and riches cannot avail in the day of wrath and anger. Now therefore hearken to my voice, and let us arise and go to the land of Canaan, out of the reach of injury from Nimrod, and serve thou the Lord who created thee in the earth, and it will be well with thee, and cast away all the vain things which thou pursuest. And Abram ceased to speak when Noah and his son Shem answered Terah, saying, True is the word which Abram has said unto thee. And Terah hearkened to the voice of his son Abram, and Terah did all that Abram said, for this was from the Lord that the king should not cause Abram's death. End of chapter 12「Chapter thirteen of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter thirteen. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, the wife of his son Abram, and all the souls of his household, and went with them from ur Kastim to go to the land of Canaan. And when they came as far as the land of Haran, they remained there, for it was exceeding good land for pasture, and of sufficient extent for those who accompanied them. And the people of the land of Haran saw that Abram was good and upright with God and men, and that the Lord his God was with him. And some of the people of the land of Haran came and joined Abram, and he taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways. And those men remained with Abram in his house, and they adhered to him. And Abram remained in the land three years, and at the expiration of three years the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee forth from ur Kastim, and delivered thee from the hands of thine enemies. And now therefore if thou wilt hearken to my voice, and keep my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, then will I cause thy enemies to fall before thee, and I will multiply thy seed like the stars of heaven and I will send my blessing upon all the works of thy hands, and thou shalt lack nothing. Arise now, take thy wife, and all belonging to thee, and go to the land of Canaan, and remain there, and I will there be unto thee for a god, and I will bless thee. And Abram rose and took his wife and all belonging to him, and he went to the land of Canaan, as the Lord had told him. And Abram was fifty years old when he went from Haran. 
; and Abram came to the land of Canaan, and dwelt in the midst of the city, and he there pitched his tent amongst the children of Canaan, inhabitants of the land. 23. And the Lord appeared to Abram when he came to the land of Canaan, and he said to him, this is the land which I give unto thee and to thy seed after thee for ever, and I will make thy seed like the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed for an inheritance all the lands which thou seest. 24. And Abram built an altar in the place where God had spoken to him, and Abram there called upon the name of the Lord. 25. At the time, at the end of three years of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, in that year Noah died, which was the fifty-eighth year of the life of Abram. And all the days that Noah lived were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. 26. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, he, his wife, and all belonging to him, and all those that accompanied him, together with those that joined him from the people of the land. But Nabor, Abram's brother, and Terah his father, and Lot the son of Haran, and all belonging to them, dwelt in Haran. In the fifth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the cities of the plain, revolted from the power of Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, for all the kings of the cities of the plain had served Chedorlaomer for twelve years, and given him a yearly tax. But in those days, in the thirteenth year, they rebelled against him. And in the tenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, there was a war between Nimrod, king of Shinar, and Chedorlaomer, king of Elam. And Nimrod came to fight with Chedorlaomer and to subdue him. For Chedorlaomer was at that time one of the princes of the hosts of Nimrod. And when all the people at the tower were dispersed, and those that remained were also scattered upon the face of the earth, Chedorlaomer went to the land of Elam, and reigned over it, and rebelled against his lord. And in those days when Nimrod saw that the cities of the plain had rebelled, he came with pride and anger to war with Chedorlaomer, and Nimrod assembled all his princes and subjects, about seven hundred thousand men, and went against Chedorlaomer. And Chedorlaomer went out to meet him with five thousand men, and they prepared for battle in the valley of Babel, which is between Elam and Shinar. And all those kings fought there, and Nimrod and his people were smitten before the people of Chedorlaomer, and there fell from Nimrod's men about six hundred thousand, and Mardan the king's son fell amongst them. And Nimrod fled and returned in shame and disgrace to his land, and he was under subjection to Chedorlaomer for a long time. And Chedorlaomer returned to his land, and sent princes of his host to the kings that dwelt around him, to Arioch king of Eliezer, and to Tidal king of Goyim, and made a covenant with them, and they were all obedient to his commands. And it was in the fifteenth year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the seventieth year of the life of Abram, and the Lord appeared to Abram in that year, and he said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee out from Ur Kastim, to give thee this land for an inheritance. Now therefore walk before me, and be perfect, and keep my commands. For to thee and to thy seed I will give this land for an inheritance, from the river Mitzraim unto the great river Euphrates. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace and in good age, and the fourth generation shall return here in this land, and shall inherit it for ever. And Abram built an altar, and he called upon the name of the Lord who appeared to him, and he brought up sacrifices upon the altar to the Lord. At that time Abram returned and went to Haran to see his father and mother, and his father's household, and Abram and his wife and all belonging to him returned to Haran. And Abram dwelt in Haran five years. And many of the people of Haran, about seventy-two men, followed Abram, and Abram taught them the instruction of the Lord and his ways, and he taught them to know the Lord. In those days the Lord appeared to Abram in Haran, and he said to him, Behold, I spoke unto thee these twenty years back, saying, Go forth from thy land, from thy birthplace, and from thy father's house, to the land which I have shown thee to give it to thee, and to thy children. For there in that land will I bless thee, and make thee a great nation, and make thy name great, and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Now therefore arise, go forth from this place, thou, thy wife, and all belonging to thee, also every one born in thy house, and all the souls thou hast made in Haran, and bring them out with thee from here, and rise to return to the land of Canaan. And Abram arose, and took his wife Sarai, 
and all belonging to him, and all that were born to him in his house, and the souls which they had made in Haran, and they came out to go to the land of Canaan. And Abram went and returned to the land of Canaan according to the word of the Lord, and Lot, the son of his brother Haran, went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran to return to the land of Canaan. And he came to the land of Canaan according to the word of the Lord to Abram, and he pitched his tent, and he dwelt in the plain of Mamre. And with him was Lot, his brother's son, and all belonging to him. And the Lord again appeared to Abram and said, To thy seed will I give this land. And he there built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him, which is still to this day in the plains of Mamre. End of chapter 13「Chapter fourteen of the Book of Jasher. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter fourteen. In those days there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding in all wisdom and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indigent. His name was Rakayan, and he was hard set to support himself and he resolved to go to Egypt to Oswiris, the son of Anam, king of Egypt, to show the king his wisdom, for perhaps he might find grace in his sight to raise him up and give him maintenance, and Rakaon did so. And when Rakaon came to Egypt, he asked the inhabitants of Egypt concerning the king, and the inhabitants of Egypt told him the custom of the king of Egypt, for it was then the custom of the king of Egypt that he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in the year, and after that the king would return to his palace to remain there. And on the day when the king went forth, he passed judgment in the land, and every one having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request. And when Rikan heard of the custom in Egypt, and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he grieved greatly and was very sorrowful. And in the evening Rikaon went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Egypt, and he abided there all night in bitterness of soul, and pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikaon considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance, and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seeds with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikaon wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city, but he was unacquainted with the custom of the people, and he was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support. And the rabble assembled about him and ridiculed him and took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul, and went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before, and he slept there the second night. And on that night again he reasoned within himself how he could save himself from starvation, and he devised a scheme how to act. And he rose up in the morning, and acted ingeniously, and went and hired thirty strong men of the rabble, carrying their war instruments in their hands, and he led them to the top of the Egyptian sepulchre, and he placed them there. And he commanded them, saying, Thus saith the king, Strengthen yourselves, and be valiant men, and let no man be buried here until two hundred pieces of silver be given, and then he may be buried. And those men did according to the order of Rikaon to the people of Egypt the whole of that year. And in eight months' time Rikaon and his men gathered great riches of silver and gold, and Rikaon took a great quantity of horses and other animals, and he hired more men, and he gave them horses, and they remained with him. And when the year came around at the time the king went forth into the town, all the inhabitants of Egypt assembled together to speak to him concerning the work of Rikaon and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day, and all the Egyptians came before him and cried unto him, saying, May the king live for ever. What is this thing thou doest in the town to thy servants, not to suffer a dead body to be buried until so much silver and gold be given? Was there ever the like unto this done in the whole earth from the days of former kings, yea, even from the days of Adam unto this day, that the dead should not be buried only for a set price? 
we know it to be the custom of kings to take a yearly tax from the living but thou dost not only do this but from the dead also thou exactest a tax day by day now o king we can no more bear this for the whole city is ruined on this account and dost thou not know it and when the king heard all that they had spoken he was very wroth and his anger burned within him at this affair for he had known nothing of it and the king said who and where is he that dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command surely you will tell me and they told him all the works of rikaon and his men and the king's anger was aroused and he ordered rikaon and his men to be brought before him and rikaon took about a thousand children sons and daughters and clothed them in silk and embroidery and he set them upon horses and sent them to the king by means of his men and he also took a great quantity of silver and gold and precious stones and a strong and beautiful horse as a present for the king with which he came before the king and bowed down to the earth before him and the king his servants and all the inhabitants of egypt wondered at the work of rikaon and they saw his riches and the present that he had brought to the king and it greatly pleased the king and he wondered at it and when rikaon sat before him the king asked him concerning all his works and rikaon spoke all his words wisely before the king his servants and all the inhabitants of egypt and when the king heard the words of rikaon and his wisdom rikaon found grace in his sight and he met with grace and kindness from all the servants of the king and from all the inhabitants of egypt on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches and from that time they loved him exceedingly and the king answered and said to rikaon thy name shall no more be called rikaon but pharaoh shall be thy name since thou didst exact a tax from the dead and he called his name pharaoh and the king and his subjects loved rikaon for his wisdom and they consulted with all the inhabitants of egypt to make him prefect under the king and all the inhabitants of egypt and its wise men did so and it was made a law in egypt and they made rikaon pharaoh prefect under Oswiris, king of egypt and rikaon pharaoh governed over egypt daily administering justice to the whole city but Oswiris, the king would judge the people of the land one day in the year when he went out to make his appearance and rikaon pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of egypt and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of egypt and all the inhabitants of egypt greatly loved rikaon pharaoh and they made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in egypt pharaoh therefore all the kings that reigned in egypt from that time forward were called pharaoh unto this day End of chapter fourteen Chapter Fifteen of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter Fifteen. And in that year there was a heavy famine throughout the land of Egypt, and the inhabitants of the land could not remain on account of the famine, for it was very grievous. And Abram and all belonging to him rose and went down to Egypt on account of the famine and when they were at the brook mitzraim they remained there some time to rest from the fatigue of the road and abram and sarai were walking at the border of the brook mitzraim and abram beheld his wife sarai that she was very beautiful and abram said to his wife sarai since god has created thee with such a beautiful countenance i am afraid of the egyptians lest they should slay me and take thee away for the fear of god is not in these places surely then thou shalt do this say thou art my sister to all that may ask thee in order that it may be well with me and that we may live and not be put to death and abram commanded the same to all those that came with him to egypt on account of the famine also his nephew lot he commanded saying if the egyptians ask thee concerning sarai say she is the sister of abram and yet with all these orders abram did not put confidence in them but he took Sarai and placed her in a chest and concealed it amongst their vessels. For Abram was greatly concerned about Sarai on account of the wickedness of the Egyptians. And Abram and all belonging to him rose up from the brook Mitzraim and came to Egypt. And they had scarcely entered the gates of the city when the guards stood up to them, saying, Give tithe to the king from what you have. 
and then you may come into the town. And Abram and those that were with him did so. And Abram with the people that were with him came to Egypt. And when they came, they brought the chest in which Sarai was concealed, and the Egyptians saw the chest. And the king's servants approached Abram, saying, What hast thou here in this chest which we have not seen? Now open thou the chest, and give tithe to the king of all that it contains. And Abram said, This chest I will not open, but all you demand upon it I will give. And Pharaoh's officers answered Abram, saying, It is a chest of precious stones. Give us the tenth thereof. Abram said, All that you desire I will give, but you must not open the chest. And the king's officers pressed Abram, and they reached the chest and opened it with force, and they saw, and behold, a beautiful woman was in the chest. And when the officers of the king beheld Sarai, they were struck with admiration at her beauty. And all the princes and servants of Pharaoh assembled to see Sarai, for she was very beautiful. And the king's officers ran and told Pharaoh all that they had seen, and they praised Sarai to the king. And Pharaoh ordered her to be brought, and the woman came before the king. And Pharaoh beheld Sarai, and she pleased him exceedingly, and he was struck with her beauty. And the king rejoiced greatly on her account, and made presents to those who brought him the tidings concerning her. And the woman was then brought to Pharaoh's house. And Abram grieved on account of his wife, and he prayed to the Lord to deliver her from the hands of Pharaoh. And Sarai also prayed at that time, and said, O Lord God, thou didst tell my lord Abram to go from his land, and from his father's house to the land of Canaan. And thou didst promise to do well with him if he would perform thy commands. Now behold, we have done that which thou didst command us, and we left our land and our families, and we went to a strange land and to a people whom we have not known before. And we came to this land to avoid the famine, and this evil accident has befallen me. Now therefore, O Lord God, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor, and do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Sarai, and the Lord sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. And the king came and sat before Sarai, and behold, an angel of the Lord was standing over them. And he appeared to Sarai and said to her, Do not fear, for the Lord has heard thy prayer. And the king approached Sarai and said to her, What is that man to thee who brought thee hither? And she said, He is my brother. And the king said, It is incumbent upon us to make him great, to elevate him and to do unto him all the good which thou shalt command us. And at that time the king sent to Abram silver and gold and precious stones in abundance, together with cattle, men servants, and maid servants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought, and he sat in the court of the king's house, and the king greatly exalted Abram on that night. And the king approached to speak to Sarai, and he reached out his hand to touch her, when the angel smote him heavily, and he was terrified, and he refrained from reaching to her. And when the king came near to Sarai, the angel smote him to the ground, and acted thus to him the whole night, and the king was terrified. And the angel on that night smote heavily all the servants of the king and his whole household on account of Sarai, and there was a great lamentation that night amongst the people of Pharaoh's house. And Pharaoh, seeing the evil that befell him, said, Surely on account of this woman has this thing happened to me. And he removed himself at some distance from her and spoke pleasing words to her. And the king said to Sarai, Tell me, I pray thee, concerning the man with whom thou camest here. And Sarai said, This man is my husband. And I said to thee that he was my brother, for I was afraid lest thou shouldst put him to death through wickedness. And the king kept away from Sarai, and the plagues of the angel of the Lord ceased from him and his household. And Pharaoh knew that he was smitten on account of Sarai, and the king was greatly astonished at this. And in the morning the king called for Abram and said to him, What is this that thou hast done to me? Why didst thou say she is my sister? owing to which I took her unto me for a wife, and this heavy plague has therefore come upon me in my household. Now therefore here is thy wife, take her, and go from our land, lest we all die on her account. And Pharaoh took more cattle, men servants and maid servants, and silver and gold to give to Abram, and he returned unto him Sarai his wife. And the king took a maiden whom he begat by his concubines, 
and he gave her to Sarai for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, It is better for thee, my daughter, to be a handmaid in this man's house than to be a mistress in my house, after we have beheld the evil that befell us on account of this woman. And Abram arose, and he and all belonging to him went away from Egypt. And Pharaoh ordered some of his men to accompany him, and all that went with him. And Abram returned to the land of Canaan, to the place where he had made the altar, where he at first had pitched his tent. And Lot, the son of Haran, Abram's brother, had a heavy stock of cattle, flocks, and herds, and tents. For the Lord was bountiful to them on account of Abram. And when Abram was dwelling in the land, the herdsmen of Lot quarreled with the herdsmen of Abram, for their property was too great for them to remain together in the land, and the land could not bear them on account of their cattle. And when Abram's herdsmen went to feed their flock, they would not go into the fields of the people of the land, but the cattle of Lot's herdsmen did otherwise, for they were suffered to feed in the fields of the people of the land. And the people of the land saw this occurrence daily, and they came to Abram and quarreled with him on account of Lot's herdsmen. And Abram said to Lot, What is this thou art doing to me, to make me despicable to the inhabitants of the land? that thou orderest thy herdsmen to feed thy cattle in the fields of other people. Dost thou not know that I am a stranger in this land amongst the children of Canaan? And why wilt thou do this unto me? And Abram quarreled daily with Lot on account of this, but Lot would not listen to Abram, and he continued to do the same. And the inhabitants of the land came and told Abram. And Abram said unto Lot, How long wilt thou be to me for a stumbling block with the inhabitants of the land? Now I beseech thee, let there be no more quarrelling between us, for we are kinsmen. But I pray thee separate from me, go and choose a place where thou mayest dwell with thy cattle and all belonging to thee, but keep thyself at a distance from me, thou and thy household. And be not afraid in going from me, for if any one do an injury to thee, let me know, and I will avenge thy cause from him, only remove from me. And when Abram had spoken all these words to Lot, then Lot arose and lifted up his eyes toward the plain of Jordan, and he saw that the whole of this place was well watered and good for man as well as affording pasture for cattle. And Lot went from Abram to that place, and he there pitched his tent and dwelt in Sodom, and they were separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he pitched his tent there, and Abram remained in that place many years. End of chapter 15「Chapter sixteen of the Book of Jasher. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter sixteen. At that time, Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, sent to all the neighboring kings, to Nimrod, king of Shinar, who was then under his power, and to Tidal, king of Goyim, and to Arioch, king of Elasar with whom he had made a covenant, saying, Come up to me and assist me, that we may smite all the towns of Sodom and its inhabitants, for they have rebelled against me these thirteen years. And these four kings went up with all their camps, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went as they were, and smote every man they found in their road. And the five kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adama, Shemabar, king of Zeboim, Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, and Bela king of Zoar, went out to meet them, and they all joined together in the valley of Siddim. And these nine kings made war in the valley of Siddim, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah were smitten before the kings of Elam. And the valley of Siddim was full of lime pits, and the kings of Elam pursued the kings of Sodom. And the kings of Sodom with their camps fled and fell into the lime pits, and all that remained went to the mountain for safety. And the five kings of Elam came after them and pursued them to the gates of Sodom, and they took all that there was in Sodom. And they plundered all the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, and his property. And they seized all the goods of the cities of Sodom, and they went away. And Eunuch, Abram's servant, who was in the battle, saw this, and told Abram all that the kings had done to the cities of Sodom, and that Lot was taken captive by them. And Abram heard this, and he rose up with about three hundred and eighteen men that were with him, and he that night pursued these kings and smote them, 
and they all fell before abram and his men and there was none remaining but the four kings who fled and they went each his own road and abram recovered all the property of sodom and he also recovered lot and his property his wives and little ones and all belonging to him so that lot lacked nothing and when he returned from smiting these kings he and his men passed the valley of siddim where the kings had made war together and bera king of sodom and the rest of his men that were with him went out from the lime pits into which they had fallen to meet abram and his men and adonizedek king of jerusalem the same was shem went out with his men to meet abram and his people with bread and wine and they remained together in the valley of melech and adonizedek blessed abram and abram gave him a tenth from all that he had brought from the spoil of his enemy for adonizedek was a priest before god and all the kings of sodom and gomorrah who were there with their servants approached abram and begged of him to return them their servants whom he had made captive and to take unto himself all the property and abram answered the kings of sodom saying as the lord liveth who created heaven and earth and who redeemed my soul from all affliction and who delivered me this day from my enemies and gave them into my hand i will not take anything belonging to you that you may not boast to-morrow saying abram became rich from our property that he saved for the lord my god in whom i trust said unto me thou shalt lack nothing for i will bless thee in all the works of thy hands and now therefore behold here is all belonging to you take it and go as the lord liveth i will not take from you from a living soul down to a shoe tie or thread excepting the expense of the food of those who went out with me to battle as also the portions of the men who went with me anar ashkol and mamre they and their men as well as those also who had remained to watch the baggage they shall take their portion of the spoil and the kings of sodom gave abram according to all that he had said and they pressed him to take of whatever he chose but he would not and he sent away the kings of sodom and the remainder of their men and he gave them orders about lot and they went to their respective places and lot his brother's son he also sent away with his property and he went with them and lot returned to his home to sodom and abram and his people returned to their home to the plains of mamre which is in hebron at that time the lord again appeared to abram in hebron and he said to him do not fear thy reward is very great before me for i will not leave thee until i shall have multiplied thee and blessed thee and made thy seed like the stars in heaven which cannot be measured nor numbered and i will give unto thy seed all these lands that thou seest with thine eyes to them will i give them for an inheritance for ever only be strong and do not fear walk before me and be perfect and in the seventy-eighth year of the life of abram in that year died ro son of peleg and all the days of ro were two hundred and thirty-nine years and he died and sarai the daughter of haran abram's wife was still barren in those days she did not bear to abram either son or daughter and when she saw that she bare no children she took her handmaid hagar whom pharaoh had given her and she gave her to abram her husband for a wife for hagar learned all the ways of sarai as sarai taught her she was not in any way deficient in following her good ways and sarai said to abram behold here is my handmaid hagar go to her that she may bring forth upon my knees that i may also obtain children through her and at the end of ten years of abram's dwelling in the land of canaan which is the eighty-fifth year of abram's life sarai gave hagar unto him and abram hearkened to the voice of his wife sarai and he took his handmaid hagar and abram came to her and she conceived and when hagar saw that she had conceived she rejoiced greatly and her mistress was despised in her eyes and she said within herself this can only be that i am better before god than sarai my mistress for all the days that my mistress has been with my lord she did not conceive but me the lord has caused in so short a time to conceive by him and when sarai saw that hagar had conceived by abram sarai was jealous of her handmaid and sarai said within herself this is surely nothing else but that she must be better than i am and sarai said unto abram my wrong be upon thee for at the time when thou didst pray before the lord for children why didst thou not pray on my account that the lord should give me seed from thee and when i speak to hagar in thy presence she despiseth my words because she is conceived and thou wilt say nothing to her 
may the Lord judge between me and thee for what thou hast done to me. And Abram said to Sarai, behold, thy handmaid is in thy hands, do unto her as it may seem good in thy eyes. And Sarai afflicted her, and Hagar fled from her to the wilderness. And an angel of the Lord found her in the place where she had fled, by a well, and he said to her, Do not fear, for I will multiply thy seed, for thou shalt bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael. Now then return to Sarai thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And Hagar called the place of that well Bir Lahairoi, it is between Kadesh and the wilderness of Bered. And Hagar at that time returned to her master's house, and at the end of days Hagar bare a son to Abram, and Abram called his name Ishmael. And Abram was eighty-six years old when he begat him. End of chapter 16「Of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 17. And in those days, in the ninety-first year of the life of Abram, the children of Chittim made war with the children of Tubal. For when the Lord had scattered the sons of men upon the face of the earth, the children of Chittim went and embodied themselves in the plain of Canopia, and they built themselves cities there and dwelt by the river Tabru. And the children of Tubal dwelt in Toscana, and their boundaries reached the river Tabru. And the children of Tubal built a city in Toscana, and they called the name Sabina, after the name of Sabina, son of Tubal their father. And they dwelt there until this day. And it was at that time the children of Chittim made war with the children of Tubal. And the children of Tubal were smitten before the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim caused three hundred and seventy men to fall from the children of Tubal. And at that time the children of Tubal swore to the children of Chittim, saying, You shall not intermarry amongst us, and no man shall give his daughter to any of the sons of Chittim. For all the daughters of Tubal were in those days fair, for no women were then found in the whole earth so fair as the daughters of Tubal. And all who delighted in the beauty of women went to the daughters of Tubal, and took wives from them. And the sons of men, kings, and princes, who greatly delighted in the beauty of women, took wives in those days from the daughters of Tubal. And at the end of three years, after the children of Tubal had sworn to the children of Chittim not to give them their daughters for wives, about twenty men of the children of Chittim went to take some of the daughters of Tubal, but they found none. For the children of Tubal kept their oaths not to intermarry with them, and they would not break their oaths. And in the days of the harvest the children of Tubal went into their fields to get in their harvest, when the young men of Chittim assembled and went to the city of Sabina, and each man took a young woman from the daughters of Tubal, and they came to their cities. And the children of Tubal heard of it, and they went to make war with them, and they could not prevail over them, for the mountain was exceedingly high from them, and when they saw they could not prevail over them they returned to their land. And at the revolution of the year the children of Tubal went and hired about ten thousand men from those cities that were near them, and they went to war with the children of Chittim. And the children of Tubal went to war with the children of Chittim, to destroy their land and to distress them. And in this engagement the children of Tubal prevailed over the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim, seeing that they were greatly distressed, lifted up the children which they had had by the daughters of Tubal upon the wall which had been built to be before the eyes of the children of Tubal. And the children of Chittim said to them, Have you come to make war with your own sons and daughters? And have we not been considered your flesh and bones from that time till now? And when the children of Tubal heard this, they ceased to make war with the children of Chittim, and they went away. And they returned to their cities. And the children of Chittim at that time assembled and built two cities by the sea, and they called one Pertu and the other Ariza. And Abram the son of Terah was ninety-nine years old. At that time the Lord appeared to him, and he said to him, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will greatly multiply thy seed. And this is the covenant which I make between me and thee, that every male child be circumcised, thou and thy seed after thee. At eight days old shall it be circumcised, and this covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And now, therefore, thy name shall no more be called Abram, but Abraham, and thy wife shall no more be called Sarai, but Sarah. 
for I will bless you both, and I will multiply your seed after you, that you shall become a great nation, and kings shall come forth from you. End of chapter 17「18. Of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 18. And Abram rose and did all that God had ordered him, and he took the men of his household, and those bought with his money, and he circumcised them as the Lord had commanded him. And there was not one left whom he did not circumcise. And Abram and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin, Thirteen years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And in the third day Abraham went out of his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun during the pain of his flesh. And the Lord appeared to him in the plain of Mamre, and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him, and he was sitting at the door of the tent. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and lo, three men were coming from a distance, and he rose up and ran to meet them. And he bowed down to them and brought them into his house. And he said to them, If now I have found favor in your sight, turn in and eat a morsel of bread. And he pressed them, and they turned in, and he gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he placed them under a tree at the door of the tent. And Abraham ran and took a calf, tender and good, and he hastened to kill it, and gave it to his servant Eliezer to dress. And Abraham came to Sarah into the tent, and he said to her, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes to cover the pot containing the meat. And she did so. And Abraham hastened and brought before them butter and milk, beef and mutton, and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done, and they did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And the men afterward departed and went their ways to the places to which they were sent. In those days all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord, and they provoked the Lord with their abominations, and they strengthened in acting abominably and scornfully before the Lord, and their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before the Lord. And they had in their land a very extensive valley, about half a day's walk, and in it there were fountains of water and a great deal of herbage surrounding the water. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah went there four times in the year with their wives and children and all belonging to them, and they rejoiced there with timbrels and dances. And in the time of rejoicing they would all rise and lay hold of their neighbors' wives, and some the virgin daughters of their neighbors, and they enjoyed them. And each man saw his wife and daughter in the hands of his neighbor and did not say a word. And they did so from morning to night, and they afterward returned home, each man to his house, and each woman to her tent. So they always did four times in the year. Also when a stranger came into their cities and brought goods which he had purchased with a view to dispose of there, the people of these cities would assemble, men, women, and children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force giving a little to each man until there was an end to all the goods of the owner which he had brought into the land and if the owner of the goods quarrelled with them saying what is this work which you have done to me then they would approach to him one by one and each would show him the little which he took and taunt him saying i only took that little which thou didst give me and when he heard this from them all he would arise and go from them in sorrow and bitterness of soul when they would all arise and go after him and drive him out of the city with great noise and tumult. And there was a man from the country of Elam who was leisurely going on the road, seated upon his ass, which carried a fine mantle of diverse colors, and the mantle was bound with a cord upon the ass. And the man was on his journey, passing through the street of Sodom, when the sun set in the evening, and he remained there in order to abide during the night, but no one would let him into his house and at that time there was in sodom a wicked and mischievous man one skilful to do evil and his name was hadad and he lifted up his eyes and saw the traveller in the street of the city and he came to him and said whence comest thou and whither dost thou go and the man said to him i am travelling from hibram to elam where i belong and as i passed the sun set and no one would suffer me to enter his house though i had bread and water and also straw and provender for my ass 
and am short of nothing. 12. And Hedad answered and said to him, all that thou shalt want shall be supplied by me, but in the street thou shalt not abide all night. 13. And Hedad brought him to his house, and he took off the mantle from the ass with the cord, and brought them to his house, and he gave the ass straw and provender whilst the traveller ate and drank in Hedad's house, and he abided there that night. And in the morning the traveller rose up early to continue his journey, when Hedad said to him, Wait, comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And the man did so, and he remained with him, and they both ate and drank together during the day, when the man rose up to go. And Hedad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Thou hadst better remain all night, that thy heart may be comforted. And he pressed him, so that he tarried there all night. And on the second day he rose up early to go away, when Hadad pressed him, saying, Comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And he remained and ate with him also the second day, and then the man rose up to continue his journey. And Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Remain with me to comfort thy heart, and in the morning rise up early and go thy way. And the man would not remain, but rose and saddled his ass. And whilst he was saddling his ass, the wife of Hadad said to her husband, Behold, this man has remained with us for two days, eating and drinking, and he has given us nothing. And now shall he go away from us without giving anything? And Hadad said to her, Be silent. And the man saddled his ass to go. And he asked Hadad to give him the cord and mantle, to tie it upon the ass. And Hadad said to him, What sayest thou? And he said to him, that thou, my lord, shalt give me the cord and the mantle made with diverse colours, which thou didst conceal with thee in thy house to take care of it. And Hadad answered the man, saying, This is the interpretation of thy dream. The cord which thou didst see means that thy life will be lengthened out like a cord. And having seen the mantle coloured with all sorts of colours, means that thou shalt have a vineyard in which thou wilt plant trees of all fruits. And the traveller answered, saying, Not so, my lord, for I was awake when I gave thee the cord, and also a mantle woven with different colours, which thou didst take off the ass, and put them by for me. And Hadad answered and said, Surely I have told thee the interpretation of thy dream, and it is a good dream, and this is the interpretation thereof. Now the sons of men give me four pieces of silver, which is my charge for interpreting dreams, and of thee I only require three pieces of silver. And the man was provoked at the words of Hadad, and he cried bitterly, and he brought Hadad to Sirach, judge of Sodom. And the man laid his cause before Sirach, the judge, when Hadad replied, saying, It is not so, but thus the matter stands. And the judge said to the traveller, This man Hadad telleth thee truth, for he is famed in the cities for the accurate interpretation of dreams. And the man cried at the word of the judge, and he said, Not so, my lord, for it was in the day that I gave him the cord and mantle which was upon the ass, in order to put them by in his house. And they both disputed before the judge, the one saying thus the matter was, and the other declaring otherwise. And Hidad said to the man, Give me four pieces of silver that I charge for my interpretations of dreams. I will not make any allowance and give me the expense of the four meals that thou didst eat in my house. And the man said to Hadad, Truly I will pay thee for what I ate in thy house, only give me the cord and mantle which thou didst conceal in thy house. And Hadad replied before the judge and said to the man, Did I not tell thee the interpretation of thy dream? The cord means that thy days shall be prolonged like a cord, and the mantle that thou wilt have a vineyard which thou wilt plant all kinds of fruit trees. This is the proper interpretation of thy dream. Now give me the four pieces of silver that I require as a compensation, for I will make thee no allowance. And the man cried at the words of Hadad, and they both quarrelled before the judge, and the judge gave orders to his servants who drove them rashly from the house. And they went away quarrelling from the judge. When the people of Sodom heard them, and they gathered about them, and they exclaimed against the stranger, and they drove him rashly from the city. And the man continued his journey upon his ass with bitterness of soul, lamenting and weeping. And whilst he was going along, he wept at what had happened to him in the corrupt city of Sodom.
End of chapter 18「Chapter Nineteen of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Nineteen. And the cities of Sodom had four judges to four cities, and these were their names: Sirach in the city of Sodom, Sharkad in Gomorrah, Zabnak in Adma, and Menon in Zeboim. And Eleazar Abram's servant applied to them different names, and he converted Sirach to Shakra. Sharkad to Shakura, Zabnak to Kazobim, and Menon to Metzlodon. And by desire of their four judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the cities. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds, and by force made him to lie in them. And as he lay down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet, and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at each end, and when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. And if he was longer than the bed, then they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end, until the man had reached the gates of death. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him, saying, Thus shall it be done to a man that cometh into our land. And when men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Sodom did, they refrained from coming there. And when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold, and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold which they had given to him. And those that could recognize the silver or gold which they had given him took it back, and at his death they also stripped him of his garments, and they would fight about them, and he that prevailed over his neighbor took them, and they would after that carry him and bury him under some of the shrubs in the deserts, so they did all the days to any one that came to them and died in their land. And in the course of time Sarah sent Eleazar to Sodom to see Lot and inquire after his welfare, and Eleazar went to Sodom and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger, and the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. And this poor man cried to Eleazar and supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Sodom had done to him. And he said to him, Why dost thou act thus to the poor man who came to thy land? And the man of Sodom answered Eleazar, saying, Is this man thy brother, or have the people of Sodom made thee a judge this day that thou speakest about this man? And Eleazar strove with the man of Sodom on account of the poor man, and when Eleazar approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Sodom, he hastened and with a stone smote Eleazar in the forehead. And the blood flowed copiously from Eleazar's forehead, and when the man saw the blood he caught hold of Eleazar, saying, Give me my hire for having rid thee of this bad blood that was in thy forehead, for such is the custom and the law in our land. And Eleazar said to him, Thou hast wounded me, and requirest me to pay thee thy hire? And Eleazar would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. And the man laid hold of Eleazar, and brought him to Shakra, the judge of Sodom, for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech thee, my lord, thus has this man done, for I smote him with a stone, that the blood flowed from his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eleazar, this man speaketh truth to thee, give him his hire, for this is the custom in our land. And Eleazar heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone and smote the judge. And the stone struck on his forehead, and the blood flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eleazar said, If this then is the custom in your land, give thou unto this man what I should have given him, for this has been thy decision, thou didst decree it. And Eleazar left the man of Sodom with the judge, and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Sodom, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Sodom, and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Abraham, he went and made war with the kings of Elam, and he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot as well as the property of Sodom. At that time the wife of Lot bare him a daughter, 
and he called her name Paltith, saying, Because God had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam, and Paltith, daughter of Lot, grew up, and one of the men of Sodom took her for a wife. And a poor man came into the city to seek a maintenance, and he remained in the city some days. And all the people of Sodom caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat, until he dropped dead upon the earth, and they did so. And Paltith, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the street starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive, and he was just upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days and the soul of this man was revived. For when she went forth to fetch water, she would put the bread in the water pitcher, and when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days, and they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. And Paltith, daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water. And she put bread into her pitcher of water and she went to draw water by the poor man's place. And she took out the bread from the pitcher and gave it to the poor man and he ate it. And the three men saw what Paltith did to the poor man, and they said to her, It is thou, then, who hast supported him, and therefore has he not starved, nor changed in appearance, nor died like the rest. And the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Paltith and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they took Paltith and brought her before their judges, and they said to them, Thus did she do. And it is she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city, and they took the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ashes. And in the city of Adma there was a woman to whom they did the like. For a traveller came into the city of Adma to abide there all night, with the intention of going home in the morning, and he sat opposite the door of the house of the young woman's father, to remain there, as the sun had set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting by the door of the house, and he asked her for a drink of water, and she said to him, Who art thou? And he said to her, I was this day going on the road, and reached here when the sun set, so I will abide here all night, and in the morning I will arise early and continue my journey. And the young woman went into the house and fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Adma. And they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said the judgment of death must pass upon this woman because she transgressed our law. And this, therefore, is the decision concerning her. And the people of those cities assembled and brought out the young woman and anointed her with honey from head to foot, as the judge had decreed, and they placed her before a swarm of bees which were then in their hives, and the bees flew upon her and stung her that her whole body was swelled. And the young woman cried out on account of the bees, but no one took notice of her or pitied her, and her cries ascended to heaven. And the Lord was provoked at this and at all the works of the cities of Sodom, for they had abundance of food, and had tranquillity amongst them, and still would not sustain the poor and the needy, and in those days their evil doings and sins became great before the Lord. And the Lord sent for two of the angels that had come to Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and its cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk, and they reached Sodom in the evening, and Lot was then sitting in the gate of Sodom. And when he saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. And he pressed them greatly, and brought them into his house, and he gave them victuals, which they ate, and they abided all night in his house. And the angel said to Lot, Arise, go forth from this place, thou and all belonging to thee, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city, for the Lord will destroy this place. 
and the angels laid hold upon the hand of lot and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hands of his children and all belonging to him and they brought him forth and set him without the cities and they said to lot escape for thy life and he fled and all belonging to him then the lord rained upon sodom and upon gomorrah and upon all these cities brimstone and fire from the lord out of heaven and he overthrew these cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground and adu the wife of lot looked back to see the destruction of the cities for her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in sodom for they did not go with her and when she looked back she became a pillar of salt and it is yet in that place unto this day and the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet and in the morning it would spring forth afresh and they again licked it up unto this day and lot and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of adullam and they remained there for some time and abraham rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of sodom and he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace and lot and his two daughters remained in the cave and they made their father drink wine and they lay with him for they said there was no man upon the earth that could raise up seed from them for they thought that the whole earth was destroyed and they both lay with their father and they conceived and bare sons and the firstborn called the name of her son moab saying from my father did i conceive him he is the father of the moabites unto this day and the younger also called her son benami he is the father of the children of ammon unto this day and after this lot and his two daughters went away from there and he dwelt on the other side of the jordan with his two daughters and their sons and the sons of lot grew up and they went and took themselves wives from the land of canaan and they begat children and they were fruitful and multiplied End of chapter 19chapter twenty of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org chapter twenty and at that time abraham journeyed from the plain of mamre and he went to the land of the philistines and he dwelt in gerar it was in the twenty-fifth year of abraham's being in the land of canaan and the hundredth year of the life of abraham that he came to gerar in the land of the philistines and when they entered the land he said to sarah his wife say thou art my sister to any one that shall ask thee in order that we may escape the evil of the inhabitants of the land and as abraham was dwelling in the land of the philistines the servants of abimelech king of the philistines saw that sarah was exceedingly beautiful and they asked abraham concerning her and he said she is my sister and the servants of abimelech went to abimelech saying a man from the land of canaan is come to dwell in the land and he has a sister that is exceeding fair and abimelech heard the words of his servants who praised sarah to him and abimelech sent his officers and they brought sarah to the king and sarah came to the house of abimelech and the king saw that sarah was beautiful and she pleased him exceedingly and he approached her and said to her what is that man to thee with whom thou didst come to our land and sarah answered and said he is my brother and we came from the land of canaan to dwell wherever we could find a place and abimelech said to sarah behold my land is before thee place thy brother in any part of this land that pleases thee and it will be our duty to exalt and elevate him above all the people of the land since he is thy brother and abimelech sent for abraham and abraham came to abimelech and abimelech said to abraham behold i have given orders that thou shalt be honored as thou desirest on account of thy sister sarah and abraham went forth from the king and the king's present followed him as at evening time before men lie down to rest the king was sitting upon his throne and a deep sleep fell upon him and he lay upon the throne and slept till morning and he dreamed that an angel of the lord came to him with a drawn sword in his hand and the angel stood over abimelech and wished to slay him with the sword and the king was terrified in his dream and said to the angel 
in what have I sinned against thee that thou comest to slay me with thy sword? And the angel answered and said to Abimelech, Behold, thou diest on account of the woman which thou didst yesternight bring to thy house. For she is a married woman, the wife of Abraham who came to thy house. Now therefore return that man his wife, for she is his wife. And shouldst thou not return her, know that thou wilt surely die, thou and all belonging to thee. And on that night there was a great outcry in the land of the Philistines. And the inhabitants of the land saw the figure of a man standing with a drawn sword in his hand, and he smote the inhabitants of the land with the sword. Yea, he continued to smite them. And the angel of the Lord smote the whole land of the Philistines on that night, and there was a great confusion on that night and on the following morning. And every womb was closed, and all their issues, and the hand of the Lord was upon them on account of Sarah, wife of Abraham, whom Abimelech had taken. And in the morning Abimelech rose with terror and confusion and with a great dread, and he sent and had his servants called in, and he related his dream to them, and the people were greatly afraid. And one man standing amongst the servants of the king answered the king, saying, O sovereign king, restore this woman to her husband, for he is her husband, for the like happened to the king of Egypt when this man came to Egypt. And he said concerning his wife, She is my sister, for such is his manner of doing when he cometh to dwell in the land in which he is a stranger. And Pharaoh sent and took this woman for a wife, and the Lord brought upon him grievous plagues until he returned the woman to her husband. Now therefore, O sovereign king, know what happened yesternight to the whole land, for there was a very great consternation and great pain and lamentation, and we know that this was on account of the woman which thou didst take. Now therefore restore this woman to her husband, lest it should befall us as it did to Pharaoh king of Egypt and his subjects, and that we may not die. And Abimelech hastened and called and had Sarah called for, and she came before him, and he had Abraham called for, and he came before him. And Abimelech said to them, What is this work you've been doing in saying you are brother and sister, and I took this woman for a wife? And Abraham said, Because I thought I should suffer death on account of my wife. And Abimelech took flocks and herds, and men servants and maid servants, and a thousand pieces of silver, and he gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah to him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, the whole land is before thee, dwell in it wherever thou shalt choose. And Abraham and Sarah his wife went forth from the king's presence with honor and respect, and they dwelt in the land, even in Gerar. And all the inhabitants of the land of the Philistines and the king's servants were still in pain, through the plague which the angel had inflicted upon them the whole night on account of Sarah. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, saying, Pray now for thy servants to the Lord thy God, that he may put away this mortality from amongst us. And Abraham prayed on account of Abimelech and his subjects, and the Lord heard the prayer of Abraham, and he healed Abimelech and all his subjects. End of chapter 20Chapter 21 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 21. And it was at that time, at the end of a year and four months of Abraham's dwelling in the land of the Philistines, in Gerar, that God visited Sarah, and the Lord remembered her, and she conceived and bare a son to Abraham. And Abraham called the name of the son which was born to him, which Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac at eight days old, as God had commanded Abraham to do unto his seed after him. And Abraham was one hundred, and Sarah ninety years old when Isaac was born to them. And the child grew up, and he was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast upon the day that Isaac was weaned. And Shem and Eber, and all the great people of the land, and Abimelech, king of the Philistines, and his servants, and Phicol, the captain of his host, came to eat and drink and rejoice at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of his son Isaac's being weaned. Also Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor his brother came from Haran, 
they and all belonging to them, for they greatly rejoiced on hearing that a son had been born to Sarah. And they came to Abraham, and they ate and drank at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of Isaac's being weaned. And Terah and Nahor rejoiced with Abraham, and they remained with him many days in the land of the Philistines. At that time Sarug the son of Ru died, in the first year of the birth of Isaac son of Abraham. And all the days of Sarug were two hundred and thirty-nine years, and he died. And Ishmael the son of Abraham was grown up in those days. He was fourteen years old when Sarah bare Isaac to Abraham. And God was with Ishmael the son of Abraham, and he grew up. And he learned the use of the bow, and became an archer. And when Isaac was five years old, he was sitting with Ishmael at the door of the tent. And Ishmael came to Isaac and seated himself opposite to him. And he took the bow and drew it, and put the arrow in it, and intended to slay Isaac. And Sarah saw the act which Ishmael desired to do to her son Isaac, and it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham and said to him, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for her son shall not be heir with my son, for thus did he seek to do unto him this day. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and he rose up early in the morning, and he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water which he gave to Hagar, and sent her away with her son. And Hagar went with her son to the wilderness. And they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran with the inhabitants of the wilderness. And Ishmael was an archer, and he dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And he and his mother afterward went to the land of Egypt, and they dwelt there. And Hagar took a wife for her son from Egypt, and her name was Meribah. And the wife of Ishmael conceived and bare four sons and two daughters. And Ishmael and his mother and his wife and children afterward went and returned to the wilderness. And they made themselves tents in the wilderness in which they dwelt. And they continued to travel and then to rest monthly and yearly. And God gave Ishmael flocks and herds and tents on account of Abraham his father, and the man increased in cattle. And Ishmael dwelt in deserts and in tents, traveling and resting for a long time, and he did not see the face of his father. And in some time after, Abraham said to Sarah his wife, I will go and see my son Ishmael, for I have a desire to see him, for I have not seen him for a long time. And Abraham rode upon one of his camels to the wilderness to seek his son Ishmael, for he heard that he was dwelling in a tent in the wilderness with all belonging to him. And Abraham went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon, and he asked after Ishmael. And he found the wife of Ishmael sitting in the tent with her children, and Ishmael her husband and his mother were not with them. And Abraham asked the wife of Ishmael, saying, Where has Ishmael gone? And she said, He has gone to the field to hunt. And Abraham was still mounted upon the camel, for he would not get off to the ground, as he had sworn to his wife Sarah that he would not get off from the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, My daughter, give me a little water that I may drink, for I am fatigued from the journey. And Ishmael's wife answered and said to Abraham, We have neither water nor bread. And she continued sitting in the tent, and did not notice Abraham, neither did she ask him who he was. But she was beating her children in the tent, and she was cursing them. And she also cursed her husband Ishmael, and reproached him. And Abraham heard the words of Ishmael's wife to her children, and he was very angry and displeased. And Abraham called to the woman to come out to him from the tent, and the woman came and stood opposite to Abraham, for Abraham was still mounted upon the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, when thy husband Ishmael returneth home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither to seek thee. And thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not here, he spoke unto me and said, When Ishmael thy husband returneth, tell him thus did the man say. When thou comest home, put away this nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Abraham finished his instructions to the woman, and he returned and went off on the camel homeward. And after that Ishmael came from the chase, he and his mother, and returned to the tent, and his wife spoke these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came to seek thee. 
and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not at home, he said to me, When thy husband cometh home, tell him, Thus saith the old man, Put away the nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Ishmael heard the words of his wife, and he knew that it was his father, and that his wife did not honor him. And Ishmael understood his father's words that he had spoken to his wife, and Ishmael hearkened to the voice of his father, and Ishmael cast off that woman, and she went away. And Ishmael afterward went to the land of Canaan, and he took another wife, and he brought her to his tent, to the place where he then dwelt. And at the end of three years Abraham said, I will go again and see Ishmael my son, for I have not seen him for a long time. And he rode upon his camel and went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon. And he asked after Ishmael, and his wife came out of the tent, and she said, He is not here, my lord, for he has gone to hunt in the fields, and to feed the camels. And the woman said to Abraham, Turn in, my lord, into the tent, and eat a morsel of bread, for thy soul must be wearied on account of the journey. And Abraham said to her, I will not stop, for I am in haste to continue my journey, but give me a little water to drink, for I have thirst. And the woman hastened, and ran into the tent, and she brought out water and bread to Abraham, which she placed before him, and she urged him to eat. And he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted, and he blessed his son Ishmael. And he finished his meal, and he blessed the Lord, and he said to Ishmael's wife, When Ishmael cometh home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither, and asked after thee, and thou wast not here. And I brought him out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me. When Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say unto him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good, do not put it away from the tent. And Abraham finished commanding the woman, and he rode off to his home to the land of the Philistines. And when Ishmael came to his tent, his wife went forth to meet him with joy and a cheerful heart. And she said to him, An old man came here from the land of the Philistines, and thus was his appearance. And he asked after thee, and thou wast not here, so I brought out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me, When Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say to him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good, do not put it away from the tent. And Ishmael knew that it was his father, and that his wife had honored him. And the Lord blessed Ishmael. End of chapter 21 Read by C.J. Plogue Chapter 22 of the Book of Jasher This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 22 and Ishmael then rose up and took his wife and his children and his cattle and all belonging to him, and he journeyed from there, and he went to his father in the land of the Philistines. And Abraham related to Ishmael his son the transaction with the first wife that Ishmael took, according to what she did. And Ishmael and his children dwelt with Abraham many days in that land, and Abraham dwelt in the land of the Philistines a long time. And the days increased and reached twenty-six years, and after that Abraham with his servants and all belonging to him went from the land of the Philistines and removed to a great distance. And they came near to Hebron, and they remained there, and the servants of Abraham dug wells of water, and Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt by the water, and the servants of Abimelech king of the Philistines heard the report that Abraham's servants had dug wells of water in the borders of the land. And they came and quarreled with the servants of Abraham, and they robbed him of the great well which they had dug. And Abimelech king of the Philistines heard of this affair, and he with Phicol the captain of his host, and twenty of his men came to Abraham. And Abimelech spoke to Abraham concerning his servants. And Abraham rebuked Abimelech concerning the well of which his servants had robbed him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, As the Lord liveth who created the whole earth, I did not hear of the act which my servants did unto thy servants until this day. 
and Abraham took seven ewe lambs and gave them to Abimelech, saying, Take these, I pray thee, from my hands, that it may be a testimony for me that I dug this well. And Abimelech took the seven ewe lambs which Abraham had given to him, for he had also given him cattle and herds in abundance. And Abimelech swore to Abraham concerning the well, Therefore he called that well Beersheba, for there they both swore concerning it. And they both made a covenant in Beersheba, and Abimelech rose up with Phicol the captain of his host and all his men, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he was in that land a long time. And Abraham planted a large grove in Beersheba, and he made to it four gates facing the four sides of the earth, and he planted a vineyard in it, so that if a traveller came to Abraham he entered any gate which was in his road, and remained there, and ate and drank, and satisfied himself, and then departed. For the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed, who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham. And any man who had hunger, and came to Abraham's house, Abraham would give him bread that he might eat and drink and be satisfied. And any one that came naked to his house he would clothe with garments as he might choose, and give him silver and gold, and make known to him the Lord who had created him in the earth. Thus did Abraham all his life. And Abraham and his children and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he pitched his tent as far as Hebron. And Abraham's brother Nahor and his father and all belonging to them dwelt in Haran, for they did not come with Abraham to the land of Canaan. And children were born to Nahor, which Milcah, the daughter of Haran, and sister to Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare to him. And these are the names of those that were born to him, Uz, Buz, Camul, Kassad, Chazo, Pildash, Tidlaf, and Bethuel, being eight sons, these are the children of Milcah which she bare to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And Nahor had a concubine, and her name was Rumah. And she also bare to Nahor Zibach, Gashas, Tashas, and Macha, being four sons. And the children that were born to Nahor were twelve sons besides his daughters, and they also had children born to them in Haran. And the children of Uz, the firstborn of Nahor, were Abai, Charef, Gedin, Milos, and Deborah their sister. And the sons of Buz were Barachal, Namath, Shiva, and Madanu. And the sons of Camuel were Aram and Rachab. And the sons of Kesed were Anamalek, Meshai, Benan, and Yephi. And the sons of Chaza were Pildash, Mechai, and Ophir. And the sons of Pildash were Arud, Chamam, Merid, and Malach. And the sons of Yidlaf were Mushan, Kushan, and Mutsi. And the children of Bethuel were Sechar, Laban, and their sister Rebekah. These are the families of the children of Nahor that were born to them in Haran. And Aram, the son of Camuel, and Rechab, his brother, went away from Haran. And they found a valley in the land by the river Euphrates. And they built a city there, and they called the name of the city after the name of Pethor, the son of Aram, that is, Aram Naharium, unto this day. And the children of Kesed also went to dwell where they could find a place. And they went, and they found a valley opposite to the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they there built themselves a city, and they called the name of the city Kesed, after the name of their father that is the land of Kastim unto this day. And the Kastim dwelt in that land, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Terah, father of Nahor and Abraham, went and took another wife in his old age, and her name was Pelilah, and she conceived and bare him a son, and he called his name Zobah. And Terah lived twenty-five years after he begot Zobah. And Terah died in that year that was in the thirty-fifth year of the birth of Isaac, son of Abraham. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and he was buried in Haran. And Zobah, the son of Terah, lived thirty years, and he begot Aram, Achlis, and Merik. And Aram, son of Zobah, son of Terah, had three wives, 
and he begat twelve sons and three daughters. And the Lord gave to Aram the son of Zoba riches and possessions and abundance of cattle and flocks and herds, and the man increased greatly. And Aram the son of Zoba and his brother and all his household journeyed from Haran, and they went to dwell where they should find a place, for their property was too great to remain in Haran. For they could not stop in Haran together with their brethren, the children of Nahor. And Aram the son of Zobah went with his brethren, and they found a valley at a distance toward the eastern country, and they dwelt there. And they also built a city there, and they called the name thereof Aram, after the name of their eldest brother, that is Aram Zobah to this day. And Isaac the son of Abraham was growing up in those days, and Abraham his father taught him the way of the Lord to know the Lord, and the Lord was with him. And when Isaac was thirty-seven years old, Ishmael his brother was going about with him in the tent. And Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac, saying, I was thirteen years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to my father, and I gave my soul unto the Lord, and I did not transgress his word which he commanded my father. And Isaac answered Ishmael, saying, Why dost thou boast to me about this, about a little bit of thy flesh which thou didst take from thy body, concerning which the Lord commanded thee? As the Lord liveth, the God of my father Abraham, if the Lord should say unto my father, Take now thy son Isaac, and bring him up an offering before me, I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. And the Lord heard the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of the Lord, and he thought to try Abraham in this matter. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it, and the Lord said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee, and remember thee when they require anything from thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease, and forsake thee, and they remember thee no more. Hast thou seen Abraham the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and he served thee and erected altars to thee wherever he came, and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth. And now that his son Isaac is born to him, he has forsaken thee. He has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord he has forgotten. For amidst all that he has done, he brought thee no offering, neither burnt offering nor peace offering neither ox, lamb, nor goat of all that he killed on the day that his son was weaned. Even from the time of his son's birth till now, being thirty-seven years, he built no altar before thee, nor brought up any offering to thee, for he saw that thou didst give what he requested before thee, and he therefore forsook thee. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon the earth a perfect and an upright man before me, one that feareth God and avoideth evil? As I live, were I to say unto him, Bring up Isaac thy son before me, he would not withhold him from me, much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me from his flocks or herds. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Speak then now unto Abraham as thou hast said, and thou wilt see whether he will not this day transgress and cast aside thy words. End of chapter 22。Chapter 23 of the Book of Jasher。This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 23 At that time the word of the Lord came to Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said to him, Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains which shall be shown to thee. For there wilt thou see a cloud in the glory of the Lord. And Abraham said within himself, How shall I separate my son Isaac from Sarah his mother, in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before the Lord? 
31. And Abraham came into the tent and he sat before Sarah his wife, and he spoke these words to her. 32. My son Isaac is grown up and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now to morrow I will go and bring him to Shem and Eber his son, and there he will learn the ways of the Lord, for they will teach him to know the Lord, as well as to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore there he will know the way of serving the Lord his God. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well, go my Lord and do unto him as thou hast said, but remove him not at a great distance from me, neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound within his soul. And Abraham said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to the Lord our God that he may do good with us. And Sarah took her son Isaac, and he abided all night with her, and she kissed and embraced him, and gave him instructions till morning. And she said to him, O my son, how can my soul separate itself from thee? And she still kissed him and embraced him, and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him. And Sarah said to Abraham, O my Lord, I pray thee, take heed of thy son, and place thine eyes over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O forsake him not, if he be hungry, give him bread, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Do not let him go on foot, neither let him sit in the sun. Neither let him go by himself in the road, neither force him from whatever he may desire, but do unto him as he may say to thee. And Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Isaac, and she gave him instructions till morning. And in the morning Sarah selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those garments which she had in the house, that Abimelech had given to her. And she dressed Isaac her son therewith, and she put a turban upon his head, and she enclosed a precious stone in the top of the turban. And she gave them provision for the road, and they went forth. And Isaac went with his father Abraham, and some of their servants accompanied them to see them off the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off. And they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the words of her son Isaac, she wept bitterly, and Abraham her husband wept with her, and their son wept with them a great weeping. Also those who went with them wept greatly. And Sarah caught hold of her son Isaac, and she held him in her arms, and she embraced him and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, Who knoweth if after this day I shall ever see thee again? And they still wept together. Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac, and all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them. And Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly, and all her men, servants, and maid servants returned with her to the tent. And Abraham went with Isaac his son to bring him up as an offering before the Lord, as he had commanded him. And Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael the son of Hagar, and Eliezer his servant, and they went together with them. And whilst they were walking in the road, the young men spoke these words to themselves. And Ishmael said to Eliezer, Now my father Abraham is going with Isaac to bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord as he commanded him. Now when he returneth, he will give unto me all that he possesses to inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. And Eliezer answered Ishmael and said, Surely Abraham did cast thee away with thy mother and swear that thou shouldst not inherit anything of all he possesses, and to whom will he give all that he has, with all his treasures, but unto me his servant, who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day, and has done all that he desired me, to me will he bequeath at his death all that he possesses. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man, humble and of contrite spirit. And he approached Abraham and said to him, Art thou silly or brutish that thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only son? For God gave thee a son in thy latter days, in thy old age, and wilt thou go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And wilt thou cause the soul of thine only son to perish from the earth? Dost thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? For the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth to say to him, Go slaughter thy child. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan, and Abraham rebuked him so that he went away. 
and Satan returned and came to Isaac, and he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored. And he approached Isaac and said unto him, Dost thou not know and understand that thy old silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught? Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man, and let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. And Isaac heard this, and said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard, my father, that which this man has spoken? Even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered his son Isaac, and said to him, Take heed of him, and do not listen to his words, nor attend to him, for he is Satan, endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them. And seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them, and he went and passed before them in the road, and he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. And Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place, and they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters. And they entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters at first reached their legs. And they went deeper in the brook, and the waters reached up to their necks, and they were all terrified on account of the water. And whilst they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place, and he knew that there was no water there before. And Abraham said to his son Isaac, I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now therefore it is this Satan who does all this to us, to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham rebuked him, and said unto him, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, be gone from us, for we go by the commands of God. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham and he went away from them, and the place again became dry land as it was at first. And Abraham went with Isaac toward the place that God had told him. And on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place at a distance which God had told him of. And a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the earth to heaven, and a cloud of glory upon the mountain, and the glory of the Lord was seen in the cloud. And Abraham said to Isaac, my son, dost thou see in that mountain, which we perceive at a distance, that which I see upon it? And Isaac answered and said unto his father, I see, and lo, a pillar of fire and a cloud, and the glory of the Lord is seen upon the cloud. And Abraham knew that his son Isaac was accepted before the Lord for a burnt offering. And Abraham said unto Eliezer and unto Ishmael his son, Do you also see that which we see upon the mountain, which is at a distance? And they answered and said, we see nothing more than like the other mountains of the earth. And Abraham knew that they were not accepted before the Lord to go with them. And Abraham said to them, Abide ye here with the ass, whilst I and Isaac my son will go to yonder mount and worship there before the Lord, and then return to you. And Eliezer and Ishmael remained in that place, as Abraham had commanded. And Abraham took wood for a burnt offering and placed it upon his son Isaac. And he took the fire and the knife, and they both went to that place. And when they were going along, Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and wood. And where then is the lamb that is to be the burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham answered his son Isaac, saying, The Lord has made a choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. And Isaac said unto his father, I will do all that the Lord spoke to thee with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And Abraham again said unto Isaac his son, Is there in thy heart any thought or counsel concerning this which is not proper? Tell me, my son, I pray thee, O my son, conceal it not from me. And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O my father, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the left from the word that he has spoken to thee. Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I am of joyful and cheerful heart in this matter, and I say, Blessed is the Lord who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. And Abraham greatly rejoiced at the words of Isaac, and they went on and came together to that place that the Lord had spoken of. And Abraham approached to build the altar in that place, and Abraham was weeping. And Isaac took stones and mortar until they had finished building the altar. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in order upon the altar which he had built. 
2. And he took his son Isaac and bound him in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar, to slay him for a burnt offering before the Lord. 3. And Isaac said to his father, bind me securely and then place me upon the altar lest I should turn and move and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh and thereby profane the burnt offering. And Abraham did so. And Isaac still said to his father, O my father, when thou shalt have slain me and burnt me for an offering, take with thee that which shall remain of my ashes to bring to Sarah my mother, and say to her, This is the sweet-smelling savour of Isaac. But do not tell her this if she should sit near a well, or upon any high place, lest she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abraham heard the words of Isaac, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Isaac spake these words. And Abraham's tears gushed down upon Isaac his son, and Isaac wept bitterly, and he said to his father, Hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of the Lord our God as he has commanded thee. And the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced at this thing which the Lord had commanded them, but the eye wept bitterly whilst the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar upon the wood, and Isaac stretched forth his neck upon the altar before his father, and Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before the Lord. At that time the angels of mercy came before the Lord and spake to him concerning Isaac, saying, O Lord, thou art a merciful and compassionate king over all that thou hast created in heaven and in earth, and thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of thy servant Isaac, and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and upon Isaac his son, who are this day performing thy commands. Hast thou seen, O Lord, how Isaac the son of Abraham thy servant is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore let thy pity be roused for them, O Lord. At that time the Lord appeared unto Abraham and called to him from heaven and said unto him, Lay not thine hand upon the lad neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God in performing this act, and in not withholding thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. That was the ram which the Lord God had created in the earth in the day that he made earth and heaven. For the Lord had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. And this ram was advancing to Abraham when Satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in the thicket, that he might not advance to Abraham, in order that Abraham might slay his son. And Abraham, seeing the ram advancing to him and Satan withholding him, fetched him and brought him before the altar. And he loosened his son Isaac from his binding, and he put the ram in his stead. And Abraham killed the ram upon the altar and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Isaac. And Abraham sprinkled some of the blood of the ram upon the altar, and he exclaimed and said, This is in the place of my son, and may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before the Lord. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, This is in the room of my son, and may it this day be considered before the Lord in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar and the service was accepted before the Lord, and was accounted as if it had been Isaac. And the Lord blessed Abraham and his seed on that day. And Satan went to Sarah, and he appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. And Abraham was yet engaged in the burnt offering before the Lord. And he said to her, Dost thou not know all the work that Abraham has made with thine only son this day? For he took Isaac and built an altar and killed him and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And Isaac cried and wept before his father, but he looked not at him, neither did he have compassion over him. And Satan repeated these words, and he went away from her, and Sarah heard all the words of Satan, and she imagined him to be an old man from amongst the sons of men who had been with her son, and had come and told her these things. And Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on account of her son, and she threw herself upon the ground, and she cast dust upon her head, and she said, O my son, Isaac, my son, O oh, that I had this day died instead of thee. And she continued to weep, and said, It grieves me for thee, O oh, my son, my son Isaac, 
Oh, that I had died this day in thy stead. And she still continued to weep, and said, It grieves me for thee, after that I have reared thee, and have brought thee up. Now my joy is turned into mourning over thee. I that had a longing for thee, and cried and prayed to God till I bear thee at ninety years old, and now hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with thee, my son, in its being the word of the Lord, for thou didst perform the command of thy God, for who can transgress the word of our God in whose hands is the soul of every living creature? Thou art just, O Lord our God, for all thy works are good and righteous, for I also am rejoiced with thy word which thou didst command, and whilst my an eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoiceth. And Sarah laid her head upon the bosom of one of her handmaids, and she became as still as a stone. She afterward rose up and went about making inquiries till she came to Hebron, and she inquired of all those whom she met walking in the road, and no one could tell her what had happened to her son. And she came with her maidservants and men servants to Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron, and she asked concerning her son, and she remained there whilst she sent some of her servants to seek where Abraham had gone with Isaac. They went to seek him in the house of Shem and Eber, and they could not find him, and they sought throughout the land, and he was not there. And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her, and he said unto her, I spoke falsely unto thee, for Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son, that her soul went out through joy. She died and was gathered to her people. And when Abraham had finished his service, he returned with his son Isaac to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and they came home. And Abraham sought for Sarah and could not find her, and he made inquiries concerning her, and they said unto him, She went as far as Hebron to seek you both where you had gone, for thus was she informed. And Abraham and Isaac went to her to Hebron, and when they found that she was dead, they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly over her. And Isaac fell upon his mother's face and wept over her, and he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, how hast thou left me, and where hast thou gone? O oh, how, how hast thou left me? And Abraham and Isaac wept greatly, and all their servants wept with them on account of Sarah, and they mourned over her a great and heavy mourning. End of chapter 23 Read by C.J. Plogue Chapter 24 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 24. And the life of Sarah was one hundred and twenty-seven years, and Sarah died. And Abraham rose up from before his dead to seek a burial place to bury his wife Sarah. And he went and spoke to the children of Heth, the inhabitants of the land, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you in your land. Give me a possession of a burial place in your land, that I may bury my dead from before me. And the children of Heth said unto Abraham, Behold, the land is before thee. In the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead, for no man shall withhold thee from burying thy dead. And Abraham said unto them, If you are agreeable to this, go and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zokar, requesting that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which is in the end of his field, and I will purchase it of him for whatever he desire for it. And Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heth, and they went and called for him, and he came before Abraham. And Ephraim said unto Abraham, Behold, all thou requirest thy servant will do. And Abraham said, No, but I will buy the cave and the field which thou hast for value, in order that it may be for a possession of a burial place for ever. And Ephraim answered and said, Behold, the field and the cave are before thee. Give whatever thou desirest. And Abraham said, Only at full value will I buy it from thy hand, and from the hands of those that go in at the gate of thy city, and from the hand of thy seed for ever. And Ephron and all his brethren heard this. And Abraham weighed to Ephron four hundred shekels of silver in the hands of Ephron, and in the hands of all his brethren. And Abraham wrote this transaction, and he wrote it and testified it with four witnesses. And these are the names of the witnesses, 
Amagal, son of Abishna, the Hittite, Adakoram, son of Ashanach, the Hivite, Abdon, son of Akram, the Gomerite, Bagdil, son of Abudish, the Zidonite. And Abraham took the book of the purchase and placed it in his treasures, and these are the words that Abraham wrote in the book, namely, that the cave in the field Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite, and from his seed, and from those that go out of his city, and from their seed for ever, are to be a purchase to Abraham, and to his seed, and to those that go forth from his loins, for a possession of a burial place for ever. And he put a signet to it, and testified it with witnesses. And the field and the cave that was in it, and all that place were made sure unto Abraham, and unto his seed after him, from the children of Heth. Behold, it is before Mamre in Hebron, which is in the land of Canaan. And after this Abraham buried his wife Sarah there, and that place and all its boundary became to Abraham and unto his seed for a possession of a burial place. And Abraham buried Sarah with pomp, as observed at the interment of kings, and she was buried in very fine and beautiful garments. And at her bier was Shem, his sons Eber and Abimelech, together with Anar, Ashkol, and Mamre, and all the grandees of the land followed her bier. And the days of Sarah were one hundred and twenty-seven years, and she died. And Abraham made a great and heavy mourning, and he performed the rites of mourning for seven days. And all the inhabitants of the land comforted Abraham and Isaac his son on account of Sarah. And when the days of their mourning passed by, Abraham sent away his son Isaac, and he went to the house of Shem and Eber to learn the ways of the Lord and his instructions, and Abraham remained there three years. At that time Abraham rose up with all his servants, and they went and returned homeward to Beersheba, and Abraham and all his servants remained in Beersheba. And at the revolution of the year Abimelech the king of the Philistines died in that year. He was one hundred and ninety-three years old at his death, and Abraham went with his people to the land of the Philistines, and they comforted the whole household and all his servants, and he then turned and went home. And it was after the death of Abimelech that the people of Gerar took ben Malik his son, and he was only twelve years old, and they made him king in the place of his father. And they call this name Abimelech, after the name of his father, for thus was it their custom to do in Gerar. And Abimelech reigned instead of Abimelech, his father, and he sat upon his throne. And Lot the son Haran also died in those days, in the thirty-ninth year of the life of Isaac, and all the days that Lot lived were one hundred and forty years, and he died. And these are the children of Lot that were born to him by his daughters. The name of the firstborn was Moab, and the name of the second was Benami. And the two sons of Lot went and took themselves wives from the land of Canaan, and they bare children to them, and the children of Moab were Ed, Maan, Tarsus, and Canville. Four sons, these are the fathers to the children of Moab unto this day. And all the families of the children of Lot went to dwell wherever they should light upon, for they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And they went and built themselves cities in the land where they dwelt, and they called the names of their cities which they built after their own names. And Nahor the son of Terah, brother to Abraham, died in those days in the fortieth year of the life of Isaac. And all the days of Nahor were one hundred and seventy-two years, and he died and was buried in Haran. And when Abraham heard that his brother was dead, he grieved sadly, and he mourned over his brother many days. And Abraham called for Eliezer, his head servant, to give him orders concerning his house, and he came and stood before him. And Abraham said to him, Behold, I am old, I do not know the day of my death, for I am advanced in days. Now therefore rise up, go forth, and do not take a wife for my son from this place and from this land, from the daughters of the Canaanites amongst whom we dwell. But go to my land, and to my birthplace, and take from thence a wife for my son. And the Lord God of heaven and earth, who took me from my father's house and brought me to this place, and said unto me, To thy seed will I give this land for an inheritance for ever. He will send his angel before thee, and prosper thy way, that thou mayest obtain a wife for my son from my family and from my father's house. 
and the servant answered his master Abraham and said, behold I go to thy birth place and to thy father's house and take a wife for thy son from there, but if the woman be not willing to follow me to this land shall I take thy son back to the land of thy birth place? And Abraham said unto him, take heed that thou bring not my son hither again for the Lord before whom I have walked he will send his angel before thee and prosper thy way. And Eliezer did as Abraham ordered him. And Eliezer swore unto Abraham his master upon this matter. And Eliezer rose up and took ten camels of the camels of his master and ten men from his master's servants with him. And they rose up and went to Haran, the city of Abraham and Nahor, in order to fetch a wife for Isaac, the son of Abraham. And whilst they were gone, Abraham sent to the house of Shem and Eber, and they brought from thence his son Isaac. And Isaac came home to his father's house to Beersheba, whilst Eliezer and his men came to Haran. And they stopped in the city by the watering place, and he made his camels kneel down by the water, and they remained there. And Eliezer, Abraham's servant, prayed and said, O God of Abraham, my master, send me, I pray thee, good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master, that thou shalt appoint this day a wife for my master's son from his family. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Eliezer for the sake of his servant Abraham, and he happened to meet with the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, brother to Abraham, and Eliezer came to her house. And Eliezer related to them all his concerns, and that he was Abraham's servant, and they greatly rejoiced at him. And they all blessed the Lord who brought this thing about, and they gave him Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, for a wife for Isaac. And the young woman was of very comely appearance. She was a virgin, and Rebekah was ten years old in those days. And Bethuel and Laban and his children made a feast on that night, and Eliezer and his men came and ate and drank and rejoiced there on that night. And Eliezer rose up in the morning, he and the men that were with him, and he called to the whole household of Bethuel, saying, Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they rose up and sent away Rebekah and her nurse Deborah, the daughter of Uz, and they gave her silver and gold, men servants and maid servants, and they blessed her. And they sent Eliezer away with his men, and the servants took Rebekah, and he went and returned to his master to the land of Canaan. And Isaac took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he brought her into the tent. And Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of his uncle Bethuel, for a wife. End of chapter 24chapter 25 of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter 25 and it was at that time that abraham again took a wife in his old age and her name was keturah from the land of canaan and she bare unto him zimrah jokshan midan midian yishbak and shuach being six sons and the children of zemran were abihan Molich and Marim, and the sons of Yokshan were Sheba and Dedan, and the sons of Medan were Amida, Joab, Gochi, Elisha, and Nothach, and the sons of Midian were Epha, Epher, Chanoch, Abida, and Elda, and the sons of Yishbak were Makiro, Boyodua, and Tader. And the sons of Shuak were Bildad, Mamdad, Munan, and Meban. All these are the families of the children of Keturah, the Canaanitish woman, which she bare unto Abraham the Hebrew. And Abraham sent all these away, and he gave them gifts, and they went away from his son Isaac to dwell wherever they should find a place. And all these went to the mountain at the east, and they built themselves six cities in which they dwelt unto this day. But the children of Sheba and Dedan, children of Yokshan with their children, did not dwell with their brethren in their cities, and they journeyed and encamped in the countries and wildernesses unto this day. And the children of Midian, son of Abraham, went to the east of the land of Cush, and they there found a large valley in the eastern country, and they remained there, and built a city, and they dwelt therein. That is the land of Midian unto this day. 
And Midian dwelt in the city which he built, he and his five sons and all belonging to him. And these are the names of the sons of Midian according to their names in their cities, Ephah, Epher, Chanok, Abida, and Elda. And the sons of Ephah were Methach, Mishar, Avi, and Zanua. And the sons of Epher were Ephron, Zur, Alaron, and Medan. And the sons of Chanok were Ruel, Rechem, Azi, Elioshub, and Alad. And the sons of Abida were Chur, Melud, Karui, Mokri. And the sons of Elda were Micah, and Reba, and Melchiah, and Gabal. These are the names of the Midianites according to their families. And afterward the families of Midian spread throughout the land of Midian. And these are the generations of Ishmael the son of Abraham, whom Hagar, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And Ishmael took a wife from the land of Egypt, and her name was Reba. The same is Meribah. And Reba bare unto Ishmael Neboioth, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, and their sister Bosmath. And Ishmael cast away his wife Reba, and she went from him and returned to Egypt to the house of her father, and she dwelt there, for she had been very bad in the sight of Ishmael and in the sight of his father Abraham. And Ishmael afterward took a wife from the land of Canaan, and her name was Makuth, and she bare unto him Nishma, Duma, Masa, Shadad, Tima, Yitar, Nafish, and Kedma. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names, being twelve princes according to their nations. And the families of Ishmael afterward spread forth, and Ishmael took his children and all the property that he had gained, together with the souls of his household and all belonging to him, and they went to dwell where they should find a place. And they went and dwelt near the wilderness of Paran, and their dwelling was from Havilah unto Shur, that is before Egypt as thou comest toward Assyria. And Ishmael and his sons dwelt in the land, and they had children born to them, and they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And these are the names of the sons of Neboioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Mend, Send, and Maon. And the sons of Kedar were Elaan, Kizem, Shamad, and Eli. And the sons of Adbeel were Chamad and Jabin. And the sons of Mibsam were Obadiah, Abedmelech, and Yush. These are the families of the children of Reba, the wife of Ishmael. And the sons of Mishma, the son of Ishmael, were Shamua, Zacharian, and Obed. And the sons of Duma were Kazed, Eli, Machmad, and Ahmed. And the sons of Masa were Milan, Mula, and Ebedidan. And the sons of Chidad were Azar, Minzar, and Abedmelech. And the sons of Tima were Seir, Sedan, and Yakol. And the sons of Yeter were Merith, Yaish, Alru, and Pakoth. And the sons of Mafish were Ebed-Tamed, Abayasaf, and Mir. And the sons of Kedma were Kalib, Takhti, and Omir. These were the children of Makuth, the wife of Ishmael, according to their families. All these are the families of Ishmael, according to their generations, and they dwelt in those lands wherein they had built themselves cities unto this day. And Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the wife of Abraham's son Isaac, was barren in those days, and she had no offspring. And Isaac dwelt with his father in the land of Canaan, and the Lord was with Isaac. And Arpashad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, died in those days, in the forty-eighth year of the life of Isaac. And all the days that Arpashad lived were four hundred and thirty-eight years, and he died. End of chapter 25Chapter 26 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 26 And in the fifty ninth year of the life of Isaac, the son of Abraham, Rebekah, his wife, was still barren in those days. 
37. And Rebecca said unto Isaac, truly I have heard my lord, that thy mother Sarah was barren in her days until my lord Abraham thy father prayed for her and she conceived by him. Now therefore stand up, pray thou also to God, and he will hear thy prayer and remember us through his mercies. And Isaac answered his wife Rebekah, saying, Abraham has already prayed for me to God to multiply his seed. Now therefore this barrenness must proceed to us from thee. And Rebekah said unto him, But arise now thou also, and pray that the Lord may hear thy prayer and grant me children. And Isaac hearkened to the words of his wife. And Isaac and his wife rose up and went to the land of Moriah to pray there and to seek the Lord. And when they had reached that place, Isaac stood up and prayed to the Lord on account of his wife, because she was barren. And Isaac said, O Lord God of heaven and earth, whose goodness and mercies fill the earth, thou who didst take my father from his father's house and from his birthplace, and didst bring him unto this land, and didst say unto him, To thy seed will I give the land, and thou didst promise him, and didst declare unto him, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand of the sea, now may thy words be verified which thou didst speak unto my father. For thou art the Lord our God, our eyes are toward thee to give us seed of men, as thou didst promise us. For thou art the Lord our God, and our eyes are directed toward thee only. And the Lord heard the prayer of Isaac the son of Abraham, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And in about seven months after the children struggled together within her, and it pained her greatly that she was wearied on account of them. And she said to all the women who were then in the land, Did such a thing happen to you as it has to me? And they said unto her, No. And she said unto them, Why am I alone in this amongst all the women that were upon earth? And she went to the land of Moriah to seek the Lord on account of this. And she went to Shem and Eber his son to make inquiries of them in this matter and that they should seek the Lord in this thing respecting her. And she also asked Abraham to seek and inquire of the Lord about all that had befallen her. And they all inquired of the Lord concerning this matter, and they brought her word from the Lord and told her, Two children are in thy womb, and two nations shall rise from them, and one nation shall be stronger than the other, and the greater shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were completed, she knelt down, and behold, there were twins in her womb, as the Lord had spoken to her. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and all the people of the land called his name Esau, saying that this one was made complete from the womb. And after that came his brother, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, therefore they called his name Jacob. And Isaac the son of Abraham was sixty years old when he begat them. And the boys grew up to their fifteenth year, and they came amongst the society of men. Esau was a designing and deceitful man, and an expert hunter in the field. And Jacob was a man perfect and wise, dwelling in tents, feeding flocks, and learning the instructions of the Lord, and the commands of his father and mother. And Isaac and the children of his household dwelt with his father Abraham in the land of Canaan, as God had commanded them. And Ishmael the son of Abraham went with his children, and all belonging to them, and they returned there to the land of Havilah, and they dwelt there. And all the children of Abraham's concubines went to dwell in the land of the east, for Abraham had sent them away from his son, and had given them presents, and they went away. And Abraham gave all that he had to his son Isaac, and he also gave him all his treasures. And he commanded him, saying, Dost thou not know and understand? The Lord is God in heaven and in earth, and there is no other beside him. And it was he who took me from my father's house and from my birthplace and gave me all the delights upon earth, who delivered me from the counsel of the wicked, for in him did I trust. And he brought me to this place, and he delivered me from ur -Kastim. And he said unto me, To thy seed will I give all these lands, and they shall inherit them when they keep my commandments, my statutes and my judgments that I have commanded thee, and which I shall command them. Now therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, and keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I commanded thee. Do not turn from the right way, either to the right or to the left, in order that it may be well with thee and thy children after thee forever. And remember the wonderful works of the Lord and his kindness that he has shown toward us, 
in having delivered us from the hands of our enemies and the lord our god caused them to fall into our hands and now therefore keep all that i have commanded thee and turn not away from the commandments of thy god and serve none beside him in order that it may be well with thee and thy seed after thee and teach thou thy children and thy seed the instruction of the lord and his commandments and teach them the upright way in which they should go in order that it may be well with them for ever and isaac answered his father and said unto him that which my lord has commanded that will i do and i will not depart from the commandments of the lord my god i will keep all that he commanded me and abraham blessed his son isaac and also his children and abraham taught jacob the instruction of the lord and his ways and it was at that time that abraham died in the fifteenth year of the life of jacob and esau the son of isaac and all the days of abraham were one hundred and seventy-five years and he died and was gathered to his people in good old age old and satisfied with days and isaac and ishmael his sons buried him and when the inhabitants of canaan heard that abraham was dead they all came with their kings and princes and all their men to bury abraham and all the inhabitants of the land of haran and all the families of the house of abraham and all the princes and grandees and the sons of abraham by the concubines all came when they heard of abraham's death and they requited abraham's kindness and comforted isaac his son and they buried abraham in the cave which he bought from ephron the hittite and his children for the possession of a burial place and all the inhabitants of canaan and all those who had known abraham wept for abraham a whole year and men and women mourned over him and all the little children and all the inhabitants of the land wept on account of abraham for abraham had been good to them all and because he had been upright with god and men and there arose not a man who feared god like unto abraham for he had feared his god from his youth and had served the lord and had gone in all his ways during his life from his childhood to the day of his death and the lord was with him and delivered him from the counsel of nimrod and his people and when he made war with the four kings of elam he conquered them and he brought all the children of the earth to the service of god and he taught them the ways of the lord and caused them to know the lord and he formed a grove and he planted a vineyard therein and he had always prepared in his tent meat and drink to those that passed through the land that they might satisfy themselves in his house and the lord god delivered the whole earth on account of abraham and it was after the death of abraham that god blessed his son isaac and his children and the lord was with isaac as he had been with his father abraham for isaac kept all the commandments of the lord as abraham his father had commanded him he did not turn to the right or to the left from the right path which his father had commanded him End of chapter twenty six chapter twenty seven of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain and esau at that time after the death of abraham frequently went into the field to hunt and nimrod king of babel the same was amraphel also frequently went with his mighty men to hunt in the field and to walk about with his men in the cool of the day and nimrod was observing esau all the days for a jealousy was forming in the heart of nimrod against esau all the days and on a certain day esau went into the field to hunt and he found nimrod walking in the wilderness with his two men and all his mighty men and his people were with him in the wilderness but they removed at a distance from him and they went from him in different directions to hunt and esau concealed himself for nimrod and he lurked for him in the wilderness and nimrod and his men that were with him did not know him and nimrod and his men frequently walked about in the field at the cool of the day and to know where his men were hunting in the field and nimrod and two of his men that were with him came to the place where they were when esau started suddenly from his lurking place and drew his sword and hastened and ran to nimrod and cut off his head and esau fought a desperate fight with the two men that were with nimrod and when they called out to him esau turned to them and smote them to death with his sword and all the mighty men of nimrod who had left him to go to the wilderness heard the cry at a distance and they knew the voices of those two men and they ran to know the cause of it when they found their king and the two men that were with him lying dead in the wilderness and when esau saw the mighty men of nimrod coming at a distance he fled 
and thereby escaped and esau took the valuable garments of nimrod which nimrod's father had bequeathed to nimrod and with which nimrod prevailed over the whole land and he ran and concealed them in his house and esau took those garments and ran into the city on account of nimrod's men and he came unto his father's house wearied and exhausted from fight and he was ready to die through grief when he approached his brother jacob and sat before him and he said unto his brother jacob behold i shall die this day and wherefore then do i want the birthright and jacob acted wisely with esau in this matter and esau sold his birthright to jacob for it was so brought about by the lord and esau's portion in the cave of the field of machpelah which abraham had bought from the children of heth for the possession of a burial ground esau also sold to jacob and jacob bought all this from his brother esau for value given and jacob wrote the whole of this in a book and he testified the same with witnesses and he sealed it and the book remained in the hands of jacob and when nimrod the son of cush died his men lifted him up and brought him in consternation and buried him in his city and all the days that nimrod lived were two hundred and fifteen years and he died and the days that nimrod reigned upon the people of the land were one hundred and eighty-five years and nimrod died by the sword of esau in shame and contempt and the seed of abraham caused his death as he had seen in his dream and at the death of nimrod his kingdom became divided into many divisions and all those parts that nimrod reigned over were restored to the respective kings of the land who recovered them after the death of nimrod and all the people of the house of nimrod were for a long time enslaved to all the other kings of the land End of chapter twenty seven chapter twenty eight of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org chapter twenty eight and in those days after the death of abraham in that year the lord brought a heavy famine in the land and whilst the famine was raging in the land of canaan isaac rose up to go down to egypt on account of the famine as his father abraham had done and the lord appeared that night to isaac and he said to him do not go down to egypt but rise and go to gerar to abimelech king of the philistines and remain there till the famine shall cease and isaac rose up and went to gerar as the lord had commanded him and he remained there a full year and when isaac came to gerar the people of the land saw that rebekah his wife was of a beautiful appearance and the people of gerar asked isaac concerning his wife and he said she is my sister for he was afraid to say she was his wife lest the people of the land should slay him on account of her and the princes of abimelech went and praised the woman to the king but he answered them not neither did he attend to their words but he heard them say that isaac declared her to be his sister so the king reserved this within himself and when isaac had remained three months in the land abimelech looked out at the window and he saw and behold isaac was sporting with rebekah his wife for isaac dwelt in the outer house belonging to the king so that the house of isaac was opposite the house of the king and the king said unto isaac what is this thou hast done to us in saying of thy wife she is my sister how easily might one of the great men of the people have lain with her and thou wouldst then have brought guilt upon us and isaac said unto abimelech because i was afraid lest i die on account of my wife therefore i said she is my sister at that time abimelech gave orders to all his princes and great men and they took isaac and rebekah his wife and brought them before the king and the king commanded that they should dress them in princely garments and make them ride through the streets of the city and proclaim before them throughout the land saying this is the man and this is his wife whoever toucheth this man or his wife shall surely die and isaac returned with his wife to the king's house and the lord was with isaac and he continued to wax great and lacked nothing and the lord caused isaac to find favor in the sight of abimelech and in the sight of all his subjects and abimelech acted well with isaac for abimelech remembered the oath and the covenant that existed between his father and abraham and abimelech said unto isaac behold the whole earth is before thee dwell wherever it may seem good in thy sight until thou shalt return to thy land 
and Abimelech gave Isaac fields and vineyards, and the best part of the land of Gerar, to sow and reap, and eat the fruits of the ground until the days of the famine should have passed by. And Isaac sowed in that land, and received a hundredfold in the same year, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, and he had possession of flocks, and possession of herds, and great store of servants. And when the days of the famine had passed away, the Lord appeared to Isaac, and said unto him, Rise up, go forth from this place, and return to thy land, to the land of Canaan. And Isaac rose up and returned to Hebron, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all belonging to him as the Lord had commanded him. And after this, Shelach, the son of Arpashad, died in that year, which is the eighteenth year of the lives of Jacob and Esau. And all the days that Shelach lived were four hundred and thirty-three years, and he died. At that time Isaac sent his younger son Jacob to the house of Shem and Eber, and he learned the instructions of the Lord, and Jacob remained in the house of Shem and Eber for thirty-two years. And Esau his brother did not go, for he was not willing to go, and he remained in his father's house in the land of Canaan. And Esau was continually hunting in the fields to bring home what he could get, so did Esau all the days. And Esau was a designing and deceitful man, one who hunted after the hearts of men, and inveigled them. And Esau was a valiant man in the field, and in the course of time went as usual to hunt. And he came as far as the field of Seir, the same as Edom. And he remained in the land of Seir, hunting in the field a year and four months. And Esau there saw in the land of Seir the daughter of a man of Canaan, and her name was Jehudith, the daughter of Beeri, son of Epher, from the families of Heth, the son of Canaan. And Esau took her for a wife, and he came unto her. Forty years old was Esau when he took her, and he brought her to Hebron, the land of his father's dwelling place, and he dwelt there. And it came to pass in those days, in the hundred and tenth year of the life of Isaac, that is, in the fiftieth year of the life of Jacob, in that year died Shem, son of Noah. Shem was six hundred years old at his death. And when Shem died, Jacob returned to his father to Hebron, which is in the land of Canaan. And in the fifty-sixth year of the life of Jacob, people came from Haran. And Rebekah was told concerning her brother Laban, the son of Bethuel. For the wife of Laban was barren in those days, and bare no children. And also all his handmaids bare none to him. And the Lord afterward remembered Adina, the wife of Laban, and she conceived and bare twin daughters. And Laban called the names of his daughters, the name of the elder Leah, and the name of the younger Rachel. And those people came and told these things to Rebekah, and Rebekah rejoiced greatly that the Lord had visited her brother, and that he had got children. End of chapter 28 Read by C.J. Plogue Chapter 29 of the Book of Jasher this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 29 And Isaac the son of Abraham became old and advanced in days, and his eyes became heavy through age. They were dim and could not see. At that time Isaac called unto Esau his son, saying, Get, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow. Rise up and go forth into the field and get me some venison and make me savoury meat, and bring it to me, that I may eat, in order that I may bless thee before my death, as I have now become old and grey-headed. And Esau did so, and he took his weapon, and went forth into the field to hunt for venison, as usual, to bring to his father as he had ordered him, so that he might bless him. And Rebekah heard all the words that Isaac had spoken unto Esau, and she hastened and called her son Jacob, saying, Thus did thy father speak unto thy brother Esau, and thus did I hear. Now therefore hasten thou, and make that which I shall tell thee. Rise up and go, I pray thee, to the flock, and fetch me two fine kids of the goats, and I will get the savoury meat for thy father. And thou shalt bring the savoury meat that he may eat before thy brother shall have come from the chase, in order that thy father may bless thee. And Jacob hastened, and did as his mother had commanded him, and he made the savoury meat, and brought it before his father, before Esau had come from his chase. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Who art thou, my son? And he said, I am thy firstborn Esau. 
I've done as thou didst order me. Now therefore rise up, I pray thee, and eat of my hunt, in order that thy soul may be blessed as thou didst speak unto me. And Isaac rose up, and he ate, and he drank, and his heart was comforted. And he blessed Jacob, and Jacob went away from his father. And as soon as Isaac had blessed Jacob, and he had gone away from him, behold, Esau came from his hunt from the field, and he also made savory meat, and brought it to his father to eat thereof, and to bless him. And Isaac said unto Esau, And who is he that has taken venison, and brought it me before thou camest, and whom I did bless? And Esau knew that his brother Jacob had done this, and the anger of Esau was kindled against his brother Jacob that he acted thus toward him. And Esau said, Is he not rightly called Jacob? For he has supplanted me twice. He took away my birthright, and now he has taken away my blessing. And Esau wept greatly. And when Isaac heard the voice of his son Esau weeping, Isaac said unto Esau, What can I do, my son? Thy brother came with subtlety, and took away thy blessing. And Esau hated his brother Jacob on account of the blessing that his father had given him, and his anger was greatly roused against him. And Jacob was very much afraid of his brother Esau, and he rose up and fled the house of Eber, the son of Shem. And he concealed himself there on account of his brother. And Jacob was sixty-three years old when he went forth from the land of Canaan, from Hebron. And Jacob was concealed in Eber's house fourteen years on account of his brother Esau. And he there continued to learn the ways of the Lord and his commandments. And when Esau saw that Jacob had fled and escaped from him, and that Jacob had cunningly obtained the blessing, then Esau grieved exceedingly. And he was also vexed at his father and mother. And he also rose up and took his wife, and went away from his father and mother to the land of Seir, and he dwelt there. And Esau saw there a woman from amongst the daughters of Heth, whose name was Bosmoth, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And he took her for a wife in addition to his first wife. And Esau called her name Ada, saying the blessing had in that time passed from him. And Esau dwelt in the land of Seir six months without seeing his father and mother, and afterwards Esau took his wives and rose up and returned to the land of Canaan, and Esau placed his two wives in his father's house in Hebron. And the wives of Esau vexed and provoked Isaac and Rebekah with their works, for they walked not in the ways of the Lord, but served their father's gods of wood and stone as their father had taught them, and they were more wicked than their father. And they went according to the evil desires of their hearts, and they sacrificed and burnt incense to the Baalim, and Isaac and Rebekah became weary of them. And Rebekah said, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good then is life unto me? And in those days Adah the wife of Esau conceived and bare him a son, and Esau called the name of the son that was born unto him Eliphaz, and Esau was sixty-five years old when she bare him. And Ishmael, the son of Abraham, died in those days, in the sixty-fourth year of the life of Jacob. And all the days that Ishmael lived were one hundred and thirty-seven years, and he died. And when Isaac heard that Ishmael was dead, he mourned for him, and Isaac lamented over him many days. And at the end of fourteen years of Jacob's residing in the house of Eber, Jacob desired to see his father and mother, and Jacob came to the house of his father and mother to Hebron. And Esau had in those days forgotten what Jacob had done to him in having taken the blessing from him in those days. And when Esau saw Jacob coming to his father and mother, he remembered what Jacob had done to him, and he was greatly incensed against him, and he sought to slay him. And Isaac the son of Abraham was old and advanced in days, and Esau said, Now my father's time is drawing nigh that he must die, and when he shall die I will slay my brother Jacob. And this was told to Rebekah, and she hastened and sent and called for Jacob her son, and she said unto him, Arise and go, flee to Huron, my brother Laban, and remain there for some time, until thy brother's anger be turned from thee, and then shalt thou come back. And Isaac called unto Jacob, and said unto him, Take not a wife from the daughters of Canaan, for thus did our father Abraham command us according to the word of the Lord, which he had commanded him, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, if thy children keep my covenant that I have made with thee. 
then will I also perform to thy children that which I have spoken unto thee, and I will not forsake them. Now therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, to all that I shall command thee, and refrain from taking a wife from amongst the daughters of Canaan. Rise, go to Haran, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take unto thee a wife from there, from the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Therefore take heed, lest thou shouldst forget the Lord thy God, and all the ways in the land to which thou goest, and shouldst get connected with the people of the land, and pursue vanity, and forsake the Lord thy God. But when thou comest to the land, serve there the Lord. Do not turn to the right or to the left from the way which I commanded thee, and which thou didst learn. And may the Almighty God grant thee favor in the sight of the people of the earth, that thou mayest there take a wife according to thy choice, one who is good and upright in the ways of the Lord. And may God give unto thee and thy seed the blessing of thy father Abraham, and make thee fruitful and multiply thee. And mayest thou become a multitude of people in the land whither thou goest. And may God cause thee to return to this land, the land of thy father's dwelling, with children and with great riches, with joy and with pleasure. And Isaac finished commanding Jacob and blessing him, and he gave him many gifts together with silver and gold, and he sent him away. And Jacob hearkened to his father and mother. He kissed them and arose and went to Paddan Aram. And Jacob was seventy-seven years old when he went out from the land of Canaan from Beersheba. And when Jacob went away to go to Haran, Esau called unto his son Eliphaz, and secretly spoke unto him, saying, Now hasten, take thy sword in thy hand, and pursue Jacob, and pass before him in the road, and lurk for him, and slay him with thy sword in one of the mountains, and take all belonging to him, and come back. And Eliphaz, the son of Esau, was an active man, and expert with the bow as his father had taught him, and he was a noted hunter in the field, and a valiant man. And Eliphaz did as his father had commanded him, and Eliphaz was at that time thirteen years old. And Eliphaz rose up and went, and took ten of his mother's brothers with him, and pursued Jacob. And he closely followed Jacob, and he lurked for him in the border of the land of Canaan opposite the city of Shechem. And Jacob saw Eliphaz and his men pursuing him, and Jacob stood still in the place in which he was going, in order to know what this was, for he did not know the thing. And Eliphaz drew his sword, and he went on advancing, he and his men, toward Jacob. And Jacob said unto them, What is to do with you, that you have come hither? And what meaneth it, that you pursue with your swords? And Eliphaz came near to Jacob, and he answered and said unto him, Thus did my father command me, and now therefore I will not deviate from the orders which my father gave me. And when Jacob saw that Esau had spoken to Eliphaz to employ force, Jacob then approached and supplicated Eliphaz and his men, saying to him, Behold, all that I have in which my father and mother gave unto me, that take unto thee, and go from me, and do not slay me, and may this thing be accounted unto thee a righteousness. And the Lord caused Jacob to find favor in the sight of Eliphaz the son of Esau, and his men, and they hearkened to the voice of Jacob, and they did not put him to death. And Eliphaz and his men took all belonging to Jacob, together with the silver and gold that he had brought with him from Beersheba. They left him nothing. And Eliphaz and his men went away from him, and they returned to Esau to Beersheba, and they told him all that had occurred to them with Jacob, and they gave him all they had taken from Jacob. And Esau was indignant at Eliphaz his son and at his men that were with him, because they had not put Jacob to death. And they answered and said unto Esau, Because Jacob supplicated us in this matter not to slay him. Our pity was excited toward him, and we took all belonging to him and brought it unto thee. And Esau took all the silver and gold which Eliphaz had taken from Jacob, and he put them by in his house. At that time when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and had commanded him, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife from amongst the daughters of Canaan, and that the daughters of Canaan were bad in the sight of Isaac and Rebekah, then he went to the house of Ishmael his uncle, and in addition to his other wives he took Machlath, the daughter of Ishmael, the sister of Neboeth, for a wife. End of chapter 29
of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 30 And Jacob went forth, continuing his road to Haran. And he came as far as Mount Moriah, and he tarried there all night near the city of Luz. And the Lord appeared there unto Jacob on that night, and he said unto him, I am the Lord God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac thy father. The land upon which thou liest I will give unto thee and thy seed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee wherever thou goest. And I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and I will cause all thine enemies to fall before thee. And when they shall make war with thee, they shall not prevail over thee. And I will bring thee again unto this land with joy, with children, and with great riches. And Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he rejoiced greatly at the vision which he had seen. And he called the name of that place Bethel. And Jacob rose up from that place quite rejoiced. And when he walked, his feet felt light to him for joy. And he went from there to the land of the children of the east, and he returned to Haran, and he sat by the shepherd's well. And he there found some men going from Haran to feed their flock, and Jacob made inquiries of them. And they said, We are from Haran. And he said unto them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And behold, his daughter Rachel is coming along to feed her father's flock. Whilst he was yet speaking with them, Rachel, the daughter of Laban, came to feed her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, he ran and kissed her and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was the son of Rebekah, her father's sister. And Rachel ran and told her father. And Jacob continued to cry because he had nothing with him to bring to the house of Laban. And when Laban heard that his sister's son Jacob had come, he ran and kissed him, and embraced him, and brought him into the house, and gave him bread, and he ate. And Jacob related to Laban what his brother Esau had done to him, and what his son Eliphaz had done to him in the road. And Jacob resided in Laban's house for one month. And Jacob ate and drank in the house of Laban. And afterward Laban said unto Jacob, Tell me what shall be thy wages, for how canst thou serve me for naught? And Laban had no sons, but only daughters, and his other wives and handmaids were still barren in those days. And these are the names of Laban's daughters, which his wife Adonah had borne unto him. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored, and Jacob loved her. And Jacob said unto Laban, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban consented to this, and Jacob served Laban seven years for his daughter Rachel. And in the second year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, that is, in the seventy-ninth year of the life of Jacob, in that year died Eber the son of Selah. He was four hundred and sixty-four years old at his death. And when Jacob heard that Eber was dead, he grieved exceedingly, and he lamented and mourned over him many days. And in the third year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, Basmath, the daughter of Ishmael, the wife of Esau, bare unto him a son, and Esau called his name Ruel. And in the fourth year of Jacob's residence in the house of Laban, the Lord visited Laban and remembered him on account of Jacob. And sons were born unto him, and his firstborn was Beor, his second was Alib, and the third was Chorash. And the Lord gave Laban riches and honor, sons and daughters, and the man increased greatly on account of Jacob. And Jacob in those days served Laban in all manner of work, in the house and in the field, and the blessing of the Lord was in all that belonged to Laban in the house and in the field. And in the fifth year died Jehudith, the daughter of Beri, the wife of Esau, in the land of Canaan, and she had no sons but daughters only. And these are the names of her daughters, which she bare to Esau. The name of the elder was Marzith, and the name of the younger was Poeth. And when Jehudith died, Esau rose up and went to Seir to hunt in the field as usual, and Esau dwelt in the land of Seir for a long time. And in the sixth year Esau took for a wife, in addition to his other wives, Alibama, the daughter of Zebion, the Hivite 
and Esau brought her to the land of Canaan. And Alibamah conceived and bare unto Esau three sons, Yush, Yalan, and Korah. And in those days in the land of Canaan there was a quarrel between the herdsmen of Esau and the herdsmen of the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. For Esau's cattle and goods were too abundant for him to remain in the land of Canaan, in his father's house, and the land of Canaan could not bear him on account of his cattle. And when Esau saw that his quarreling increased with the inhabitants of the land of Canaan, he rose up and took his wives, and his sons and his daughters, and all belonging to him, and the cattle which he possessed, and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and he went away from the inhabitants of the land to the land of Seir. And Esau and all belonging to him dwelt in the land of Seir. But from time to time Esau would go and see his father and mother in the land of Canaan. And Esau intermarried with the Horites, and he gave his daughters to the sons of Seir, the Horite. And he gave his elder daughter Marzith to Anna, the son of Zebion, his wife's brother, and Puath he gave to Azar, the son of Bilhan the Horite. And Esau dwelt in the mountain, he and his children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. End of chapter 30「Chapter thirty one of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter thirty one. And in the seventh year, Jacob's service which he served Laban was completed. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for the days of my service are fulfilled. And Laban did so. And Laban and Jacob assembled all the people of that place, and they made a feast. And in the evening Laban came to the house, and afterward Jacob came there with the people of the feast. And Laban extinguished all the lights that were in the house. And Jacob said unto Laban, Wherefore dost thou do this thing unto us? And Laban answered, Such is our custom to act in this land. And afterward Laban took his daughter Leah, and he brought her to Jacob, and he came to her, and Jacob did not know she was Leah. And Laban gave his daughter Leah his maid Zilpah for a handmaid. And all the people at the feast knew what Laban had done to Jacob, but they did not tell the thing to Jacob. And all the neighbors came that night to Jacob's house. And they ate and drank and rejoiced, and played before Leah upon timbrels, and with dances. And they responded before Jacob, Holea, Holea. And Jacob heard their words, but did not understand their meaning but he thought such might be their custom in this land. And the neighbors spoke these words before Jacob during the night, and all the lights that were in the house Laban had that night extinguished. And in the morning when daylight appeared, Jacob turned to his wife, and he saw, and behold, it was Leah that had been lying in his bosom. And Jacob said, Behold now, I know what the neighbors said last night. Hey, Leah, they said, and I knew it not. And Jacob called unto Laban, and said unto him, What is this that thou didst unto me? Surely I serve thee for Rachel, and why didst thou deceive me, and didst give me Leah? And Laban answered Jacob, saying, Not so is it done in our place to give the younger before the elder. Now therefore, if thou desirest to take her sister likewise, take her unto thee for the service which thou wilt serve me for another seven years. And Jacob did so. And he also took Rachel for a wife, and he served Laban seven years more. And Jacob also came to Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And Laban gave her his maid Bilhah for a handmaid. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, the Lord opened her womb, and she conceived and bare Jacob four sons in those days. And these are their names, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah and she afterward left bearing. And at that time Rachel was barren, and she had no offspring, and Rachel envied her sister Leah. And when Rachel saw that she bare no children to Jacob, she took her handmaid Bilhah, and she bare Jacob two sons, Dan and Naphtali. And when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she also took her handmaid Zilpah, and she gave her to Jacob for a wife. And Jacob also came to Zilpah, and she also bare Jacob two sons, Gad and Asher. 
10. And Leah again conceived and bare Jacob in those days two sons and one daughter, and these are their names, Issachar, Zebulon, and their sister Dinah. 11. And Rachel was still barren in those days, and Rachel prayed unto the Lord at that time, and she said, O Lord God, remember me and visit me, I beseech thee, for now my husband will cast me off, for I have borne him no children. Now, O Lord God, hear my supplication before thee, and see my affliction, and give me children like one of the handmaids, that I may no more bear my reproach. And God heard her, and opened her womb, and Rachel conceived, and bare a son, and she said, The Lord has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, saying, May the Lord add to me another son. And Jacob was ninety-one years old when she bare him. At that time Jacob's mother Rebekah sent her nurse Deborah the daughter of Uz, and two of Isaac's servants unto Jacob. And they came to Jacob to Haran, and they said to him, Rebekah has sent us to thee that thou shalt return to thy father's house to the land of Canaan. And Jacob hearkened unto them in this which his mother had spoken. At that time the other seven years which Jacob served Laban for Rachel were completed, and it was at the end of fourteen years that he had dwelt in Haran, that Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wives, and send me away, that I may go to my land, for behold, my mother did send unto me from the land of Canaan, that I should return to my father's house. And Laban said unto him, Not so, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, do not leave me. Appoint me thy wages, and I will give them, and remain with me. And Jacob said unto him, This is what thou shalt give me for wages that I shall this day pass through all thy flock and take away from them every lamb that is speckled and spotted, and such as are brown amongst the sheep and amongst the goats. And if thou wilt do this thing for me, I will return and feed thy flock and keep them as at first. And Laban did so, and Laban removed from his flock all that Jacob had said and gave them to him. And Jacob placed all that he had removed from Laban's flock in the hands of his sons, and Jacob was feeding the remainder of Laban's flock. And when the servants of Isaac, which he had sent unto Jacob, saw that Jacob would not then return with them to the land of Canaan to his father, they then went away from him, and they returned home to the land of Canaan. And Deborah remained with Jacob in Haran, and she did not return with the servants of Isaac to the land of Canaan. And Deborah resided with Jacob's wives and children in Haran. And Jacob served Laban six years longer, and when the sheep brought forth, Jacob removed from them such as were speckled and spotted, as he had determined with Laban. And Jacob did so at Laban's for six years. And the man increased abundantly, and he had cattle and maid servants and men servants, camels and asses. And Jacob had two hundred drove of cattle, and his cattle were of large size and of beautiful appearance, and were very productive. And all the families of the sons of men desired to get some of the cattle of Jacob, for they were exceedingly prosperous. And many of the sons of men came to procure some of Jacob's flock, and Jacob gave them a sheep for a man-servant, or a maid-servant, or for an ass or a camel, or whatever Jacob desired from them they gave him. And Jacob obtained riches and honor and possessions by means of these transactions with the sons of men and the children of Laban envied him of this honor. And in the course of time he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's has he acquired all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and of his children, and behold it was not toward him in those days as it had been before. And the Lord appeared to Jacob at the expiration of the six years, and said unto him, Arise, go forth out of this land, and return to the land of thy birthplace, and I will be with thee. And Jacob rose up at that time, and he mounted his children and his wife and all belonging to him upon camels. And he went forth to go to the land of Canaan to his father Isaac. And Laban did not know that Jacob had gone from him, for Laban had been that day sheep shearing. And Rachel stole her father's images. And she took them, and she concealed them upon the camel upon which she sat, and she went on. And this is the manner of the images. In taking a man who is the firstborn, and slaying him, and taking the hair off his head, and then taking salt, and salting the head, 
and anointing it in oil, then taking a small tablet of copper or a tablet of gold and writing the name upon it, and placing the tablet under his tongue, and taking the head with the tablet under the tongue, and putting it in the house, and lighting up lights before it, and bowing down to it. And at the time when they bow down to it, it speaketh to them in all matters that they ask of it, through the power of the name which is written in it. And some make them in the figures of men, of gold and silver, and go to them in times known to them, and the figures receive the influence of the stars, and tell them future things. And in this manner were the images which Rachel stole from her father, and Rachel stole those images which were her father's, in order that Laban might not know through them where Jacob had gone. And Laban came home, and he asked concerning Jacob and his household, and he was not to be found. And Laban sought his images to know where Jacob had gone, and could not find them. And he went to some other images, and he inquired of them, and they told him that Jacob had fled from him to his fathers to the land of Canaan. And Laban then rose up, and he took his brothers and all his servants, and he went forth and pursued Jacob, and he overtook him in Mount Gilead. And Laban said unto Jacob, What is this thou hast done to me to flee and deceive me, and lead my daughters and their children as captives taken by the sword? And thou didst not suffer me to kiss them and send them away with joy, and thou didst steal my gods and didst go away. And Jacob answered Laban, saying, Because I was afraid lest thou wouldst take thy daughters by force from me. And now, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, he shall die. And Laban searched for the images, and he examined in all Jacob's tents and furniture, but could not find them. And Laban said unto Jacob, We will make a covenant together, and it shall be a testimony between me and thee. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or shalt take other wives besides my daughters, even God shall be a witness between me and thee in this matter. And they took stones and made a heap, and Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee. Therefore he called the name thereof Gilead. And Jacob and Laban offered sacrifice upon the mount, and they ate there by the heap. And they tarried in the mount all night. And Laban rose up early in the morning, and he wept with his daughters, and he kissed them, and he returned unto his place. And he hastened and sent off his son Beor, who was seventeen years old, with Abichoroph, the son of Uz, the son of Nahor, and with them were ten men. And they hastened and went, and passed on the road before Jacob, and they came by another road to the land of Seir. And they came unto Esau, and said unto him, Thus saith thy brother and relative, thy mother's brother Laban, the son of Bethuel, saying, Hast thou heard what Jacob thy brother has done unto me, who first came to me naked and bare, and I went to meet him, and brought him to my house with honor, and I made him great, and I gave him my two daughters for wives, and also two of my maids. And God blessed him on my account, and he increased abundantly, and had sons, daughters, and maid servants. He also has an immense stock of flocks, and herds, camels, and asses, also silver and gold in abundance, and when he saw that this wealth increased, he left me whilst I went to shear my sheep, and he rose up and fled in secrecy. And he lifted his wives and children upon camels, and he led away all his cattle and properties which he acquired in my land, and he lifted up his countenance to go to his father Isaac to the land of Canaan. And he did not suffer me to kiss my daughters and their children, and he led my daughters as captives taken by the sword, and he also stole my gods, and he fled. And now I have left him in the mountain of the brook of Jabbok, him and all belonging to him. He lacketh nothing. If it be thy wish to go to him, go then, and there wilt thou find him, and thou canst do unto him as thy soul desireth. And Laban's messengers came and told Esau all these things. And Esau heard all these words of Laban's messengers, and his anger was greatly kindled against Jacob, and he remembered his hatred, and his anger burned within him. And Esau hastened, and took his children and servants, and the souls of his household, being sixty men, and he went and assembled all the children of Seir the Horite, and their people, being three hundred and forty men, and took all this number of four hundred men with drawn swords, 
and he went unto Jacob to smite him. 12. And Esau divided this number into several parts, and he took the sixty men of his children and servants and the souls of his household as one head, and gave them in care of Eliphaz his eldest son. 13. And the remaining heads he gave to the care of the six sons of Seir the Horite, and he placed every man over his generations and children. And the whole of this camp went as it was, and Esau went amongst them toward Jacob, and he conducted them with speed. And Laban's messengers departed from Esau and went to the land of Canaan, and they came to the house of Rebekah the mother of Jacob and Esau. And they told her, saying, Behold, thy son Esau is gone against his brother Jacob with four hundred men, for he heard that he was coming, and he has gone to make war with him, and to smite him, and to take all that he has. And Rebekah hastened, and sent seventy-two men from the servants of Isaac to meet Jacob on the road. For she said, Peradventure Esau may make war in the road, when he meets him. And these messengers went on the road to meet Jacob, and they met him in the road of the brook on the opposite side of the brook Jabbok. And Jacob said, When he saw them, This camp is destined to me from God. And Jacob called the name of that place Machneam. And Jacob knew all his father's people, and he kissed them, and embraced them, and came with them. And Jacob asked them concerning his father and mother, and they said, They were well. And these messengers said unto Jacob, Rebekah thy mother has sent us to thee, saying, I have heard, my son, that thy brother Esau has gone forth against thee on the road, with men from the children of Seir the Horite. And therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, and see with thy counsel what thou wilt do. And when he cometh up to thee, supplicate him, and do not speak rashly to him, and give him a present from what thou possessest, and from what God has favored thee with. And when he asketh thee concerning thy affairs, conceal nothing from him. Perhaps he may turn from his anger against thee, and thou wilt thereby save thy soul, thou and all belonging to thee, for it is thy duty to honor him, for he is thy elder brother. And when Jacob heard the word of his mother, which the messengers had spoken to him, Jacob lifted up his voice and wept bitterly, and did as his mother then commanded him. End of chapter 31Chapter 32 of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 32 And at that time Jacob sent messengers to his brother Esau toward the land of Seir, and he spoke to him words of supplication. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye say to my lord, to Esau, Thus saith thy servant Jacob, Let not my lord imagine that my father's blessing with which he did bless me has proved beneficial to me. For I have been these twenty years with Laban, and he deceived me and changed my wages ten times, as it has all been already told unto my lord. And I served him in his house very laboriously, and God afterwards saw my affliction, my labor, and the work of my hands, and he caused me to find grace and favor in his sight. And I afterward, through God's great mercy and kindness, acquired oxen and asses and cattle, and men servants and maid servants. And now I am coming to my land and my home to my father and mother who are in the land of Canaan. And I have sent to let my Lord know all this in order to find favor in the sight of my Lord, so that he may not imagine that I have of myself obtained wealth, or that the blessing with which my father blessed me has benefited me. And those messengers went to Esau, and found him on the borders of the land of Edom going toward Jacob. And four hundred men of the children of Seir the Horite were standing with drawn swords. And the messengers of Jacob told Esau all the words that Jacob had spoken to them concerning Esau. And Esau answered them with pride and contempt, and said unto them, Surely I have heard, and truly it has been told unto me what Jacob has done to Laban, who exalted him in his house and gave him his daughters for wives, and he begat sons and daughters and abundantly increased in wealth and riches in Laban's house through his means. And when he saw that his wealth was abundant, and his riches great, he fled with all belonging to him from Laban's house, and he led Laban's daughters away from the face of their father as captives taken by the sword without telling him of it. And not only to Laban has Jacob done thus, but also unto me has he done so, and has twice supplanted me, 
and shall I be silent? Now therefore I have this day come with my camps to meet him, and I will do unto him according to the desire of my heart. And the messengers returned, and came to Jacob, and said unto him, We came to thy brother Esau, and we told him all thy words, and thus he has answered us, and behold he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men. Now then know, and see what thou shalt do, and pray before God to deliver thee from him. And when he heard the words of his brother which he had spoken to the messengers of Jacob, Jacob was greatly afraid, and he was distressed. And Jacob prayed to the Lord his God, and he said, O Lord God of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, thou didst say unto me when I went away from my father's house, saying, I am the Lord God of thy father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. Unto thee do I give this land, and thy seed after thee, and I will make thy seed as the stars of heaven and thou shalt spread forth to the four sides of heaven and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and thou didst establish thy words and didst give unto me riches and children and cattle as the utmost wishes of my heart didst thou give unto thy servant thou didst give unto me all that i ask from thee so that i lacked nothing and thou didst afterwards say unto me return to thy parents and to thy birthplace and i will still do well with thee and now that i have come and thou didst deliver me from laban i shall fall in the hands of esau who will slay me yea together with the mothers of my children now therefore o lord god deliver me i pray thee also from the hands of my brother esau for i am greatly afraid of him and if there is no righteousness in me do it for the sake of abraham and my father isaac for i know that through kindness and mercy have i acquired this wealth now therefore i beseech thee to deliver me this day with thy kindness and to answer me and jacob ceased praying to the lord and he divided the people who were with him with the flocks and cattle into two camps and he gave the half to the care of damasek the son of eliezer abraham's servant for a camp with his children and the other half he gave to the care of his brother elianus the son of eliezer to be for a camp with his children and he commanded them saying keep yourselves at a distance with your camps and do not come too near each other and if esau come to one camp and slay it the other camp at a distance from it will escape him and jacob tarried there that night and during the whole night he gave his servants instructions concerning the forces and his children and the lord heard the prayer of jacob on that day and the lord then delivered jacob from the hands of his brother esau and the Lord sent three angels of the angels of heaven, and they went before Esau and came to him. And these angels appeared unto Esau and his people as two thousand men riding upon horses, furnished with all sorts of war instruments. And they appeared in the sight of Esau and all his men to be divided into four camps with four chiefs to them. And one camp went on, and they found Esau coming with four hundred men toward his brother Jacob and this camp ran toward esau and his people and terrified them and esau fell off the horse in alarm and all his men separated from him in that place for they were greatly afraid and the whole of the camp shouted after them when they fled from esau and all the warlike men answered saying surely we are the servants of jacob who is the servant of god and who then can stand against us and esau said unto them o oh, then my lord and brother jacob is your lord who i have not seen for these twenty years and now that i have this day come to see him do you treat me in this manner and the angels answered him saying as the lord liveth were not jacob of whom thou spokest thy brother we had not left one remaining from thee and thy people but only on account of jacob we will do nothing to them and this camp passed from esau and his men and it went away and esau and his men had gone from them about a league when the second camp came toward him with all sorts of weapons and they also did unto esau and his men as the first camp had done to them and when they had left it to go on behold the third camp came toward him and they were all terrified and esau fell off the horse and the whole camp cried out and said surely we are the servants of jacob who is the servant of god and who can stand against us and esau again answered them saying o oh, then jacob my lord and your lord is my brother and for twenty years i have not seen his countenance and hearing this day that he was coming i went this day to meet him and do you treat me in this manner and they answered him and said unto him 
as the Lord liveth, were not Jacob thy brother, as thou didst say, we had not left a remnant from thee and thy men, but on account of Jacob, of whom thou spokest, being thy brother, we will not meddle with thee or thy men. And the third camp also passed from them, and he still continued his road with his men toward Jacob. When the fourth camp came toward him, and they also did unto him and his men as the others had done. And when Esau beheld the evil which the four angels had done to him and to his men, he became greatly afraid of his brother Jacob, and he went to meet him in peace. And Esau concealed his hatred against Jacob, because he was afraid of his life on account of his brother Jacob, and because he imagined that the four camps that he had lighted upon were Jacob's servants. And Jacob tarried that night with his servants in their camps, and he resolved with his servants to give unto Esau a present from all that he had with him, and from all his property. And Jacob rose up in the morning, he and his men, and they chose from amongst the cattle a present for Esau. And this is the amount of the present which Jacob chose from his flock to give unto his brother Esau. And he selected two hundred and forty head from the flocks. And he selected from the camels and asses thirty each, and of the herds he chose fifty kine. And he put them all in ten droves, and he placed each sort by itself, and he delivered them into the hands of ten of his servants, each drove by itself. And he commanded them and said unto them, Keep yourselves at a distance from each other, and put a space between the droves. And when Esau and those who are with him shall meet you and ask you, saying, whose are you and whither do you go and to whom belongeth all this before you you shall say unto them we are the servants of jacob and we have come to meet esau in peace and behold jacob cometh behind us and that which is before us is a present sent from jacob to his brother esau and if they shall say unto you why doth he delay behind you from coming to meet his brother and to see his face then you shall say unto them surely he cometh joyfully behind us to meet his brother for he said i will appease him with the present that goeth to him and after this i will see his face peradventure he will accept of me so the whole present passed on in the hands of his servants and went before him on that day and he lodged that night with his camps by the border of the brook of jabbok and he rose up in the midst of the night and he took his wives and his maid servants and all belonging to him and he that night passed them over the ford Jabbok. And when he had passed all belonging to him over the brook, Jacob was left by himself, and a man met him, and he wrestled with him that night until the breaking of the day, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint through wrestling with him. And at the break of day the man left Jacob there, and he blessed him and went away. And Jacob passed the brook at the break of day, and he halted upon his thigh and the sun rose upon him when he had passed the brook, and he came to the place of his cattle and children. And they went on until midday, and whilst they were going, the present was passing on before them. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was at a distance, coming along with many men, about four hundred, and Jacob was greatly afraid of his brother. And Jacob hastened and divided his children unto his wives and his handmaids, and his daughter Dinah he put in a chest and delivered her into the hands of his servants. And he passed before his children and wives to meet his brother, and he bowed down to the ground, yea, he bowed down seven times until he approached his brother, and God caused Jacob to find grace and favor in the sight of Esau and his men, for God had heard the prayer of Jacob. And the fear of Jacob and his terror fell upon his brother Esau, for Esau was greatly afraid of Jacob for what the angels of God had done to Esau, and Esau's anger against Jacob was turned into kindness. And when Esau saw Jacob running toward him, he also ran toward him, and he embraced him, and he fell upon his neck, and they kissed, and they wept. And God put fear and kindness toward Jacob in the hearts of the men that came with Esau, and they also kissed Jacob and embraced him. And also Eliphaz, the son of Esau, with his four brothers, sons of Esau, wept with Jacob, and they kissed him and embraced him, for the fear of Jacob had fallen upon them all. And Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women with their offspring, the children of Jacob, walking behind Jacob and bowing along the road to Esau. And Esau said unto Jacob, Who are these with thee, my brother? Are they thy children or thy servants? 
37. And Jacob answered Esau and said, they are my children which God hath graciously given to thy servant. 38. And whilst Jacob was speaking to Esau and his men, Esau beheld the whole camp and he said unto Jacob, whence didst thou get the whole of the camp that I met yesternight? And Jacob said, to find favor in the sight of my Lord, it is that which God graciously gave to thy servant. And the present came before Esau and Jacob pressed Esau, saying, take, I pray thee, the present that I have brought to my Lord. And Esau said, wherefore is this my purpose? Keep that which thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, it is incumbent upon me to give all this, since I have seen thy face, that thou still livest in peace. And Esau refused to take the present. And Jacob said unto him, I beseech thee, my lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For I have therefore seen thy face as though I had seen a godlike face, because thou wast pleased with me. And Esau took the present, and Jacob also gave unto Esau silver and gold and bdellum, for he pressed him so much that he took them. And Esau divided the cattle that was in the camp, and he gave the half to the men who had come with him, for they had come on hire, and the other half he delivered unto the hands of his children. And the silver and gold and bdellum he gave in the hands of Eliphaz his eldest son. And Esau said unto Jacob, Let us remain with thee and we will go slowly along with thee until thou comest to my place with me, that we may dwell there together. And Jacob answered his brother and said, I would do as my Lord speaketh unto me, but my Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and that the flocks and herds with their young who are with me go but slowly. For if they went swiftly, they would all die, for thou knowest their burdens and their fatigue. Therefore let my Lord pass on before his servant, and I will go on slowly for the sake of the children in the flock, until I come to my Lord's place to Seir. And Esau said unto Jacob, I will place with thee some of the people that are with me to take care of thee in the road, and to bear thy fatigue and burden. And he said, What needeth it, my Lord, if I may find grace in thy sight? Behold, I will come unto thee to Seir, to dwell there together as thou hast spoken. Go thou then with thy people, for I will follow thee. And Jacob said this to Esau in order to remove Esau and his men from him, so that Jacob might afterward go to his father's house to the land of Canaan. And Esau hearkened to the voice of Jacob, and Esau returned with the four hundred men that were with him on their road to Seir. And Jacob and all belonging to him went that day as far as the extremity of the land of Canaan in its borders, and he remained there some time. End of chapter 32 Read by C.J. Plogue Chapter 33 of the Book of Jasher This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 33 And in some time after Jacob went away from the borders of the land, and he came to the land of Shalem, that is the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, and he rested in front of the city. And he bought a parcel of the field which was there from the children of Hamor, the people of the land, for five shekels. And Jacob there built himself a house, and he pitched his tent there, and he made booths for his cattle, and therefore he called the name of the place Sukkoth. And Jacob remained in Sukkoth a year and six months. At that time some of the women of the inhabitants of the land went to the city of Shechem to dance and rejoice with the daughters of the people of the city. And when they went forth, then Rachel and Leah, the wives of Jacob with their families, also went to behold the rejoicing of the daughters of the city. And Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, also went along with them and saw the daughters of the city. And they remained there before these daughters, whilst all the people of the city were standing by them to behold their rejoicings and all the great people of the city were there. And Shechem, the son of Hamor, the prince of the land, was also standing there to see them. And Shechem beheld Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, sitting with her mother before the daughters of the city, and the damsel pleased him greatly. And he there asked his friends and his people, saying, Whose daughter is that sitting amongst the women, whom I do not know in this city? And they said unto him, Surely this is the daughter of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the Hebrew, who has dwelt in this city for some time, 
and when it was reported that the daughters of the land were going forth to rejoice she went with her mother and maid-servants to sit amongst them as thou seest and shechem beheld dinah the daughter of jacob and when he looked at her his soul became fixed upon dinah and he sent and had her taken by force and dinah came to the house of shechem and he seized her forcibly and lay with her and humbled her and he loved her exceedingly and placed her in his house and they came and told the thing unto jacob and when jacob heard that shechem had defiled his daughter dinah jacob sent twelve of his servants to fetch dinah from the house of shechem and they went and came to the house of shechem to take away dinah from there and when they came shechem went out to them with his men and drove them from his house and he would not suffer them to come before dinah but shechem was sitting with dinah kissing and embracing her before their eyes and the servants of jacob came back and told him saying when we came he and his men drove us away and thus did shechem do unto dinah before our eyes and jacob knew moreover that shechem had defiled his daughter but he said nothing and his sons were feeding his cattle in the field and jacob remained silent till their return and before his sons came home jacob sent two maidens from his servants daughters to take care of dinah in the house of shechem to remain with her and shechem sent three of his friends to his father hamor the son of chidekem the son of perid saying get me this damsel for a wife and hamor the son of chidekem the hivite came to the house of shechem his son and he sat before him and hamor said unto his son shechem is there then no woman amongst the daughters of thy people that thou wilt take an hebrew woman who is not of thy people and shechem said to him her only must thou get for me for she is delightful in my sight and hamor did according to the word of his son for he was greatly beloved by him and hamor went forth to jacob to commune with him concerning this matter and when he had gone from the house of his son shechem before he came to jacob to speak unto him behold the sons of jacob had come from the field as soon as they heard the thing that shechem the son of hamor had done and the men were very much grieved concerning their sister and they all came home fired with anger before the time of gathering in their cattle and they came and sat before their father and they spoke unto him kindled with wrath saying surely death is due to this man and to his household because the lord god of the whole earth commanded noah and his children that man shall never rob nor commit adultery now behold shechem has both ravaged and committed fornication with our sister and not one of all the people of the city spoke a word to him surely thou knowest and understandest that the judgment of death is due to shechem and to his father and to the whole city on account of the thing which he has done and whilst they were speaking before their father in this matter behold hamor the father of shechem came to speak to jacob the words of his son concerning dinah and he sat before jacob and before his sons and hamor spoke unto him saying the soul of my son shechem longeth for your daughter i pray you give her unto him for a wife and intermarry with us give us your daughters and we will give you our daughters and you shall dwell with us in our land and we will be as one people in the land for the land is very extensive so dwell ye and trade therein and get possessions in it and do therein as you desire and no one shall prevent you by saying a word to you and hamor ceased speaking unto jacob and his sons and behold shechem his son had come after him and he sat before them and shechem spoke before jacob and his sons saying may i find favor in your sight that you will give me your daughter and whatever you say unto me that will i do for her ask me for abundance of dowry and gift and i will give it and whatever you shall say unto me that will i do and whoever he be that will rebel against your orders he shall die only give me the damsel for a wife and simeon and levi answered hamor and shechem his son deceitfully saying all you have spoken unto us we will do for you and behold our sister is in your house but keep away from her until we send to our father isaac concerning this matter for we can do nothing without his consent for he knoweth the ways of our father abraham and whatever he saith unto us we will tell you we will conceal nothing from you and simeon and levi spoke this unto shechem and his father in order to find a pretext and to seek counsel what has to be done to shechem and to his city in this matter and when shechem and his father heard the words of simeon and levi it seemed good in their sight and shechem and his father came forth to go home
31. And when they had gone, the sons of Jacob said unto their father, saying, behold we know that death is due to these wicked ones and to their city, because they transgressed that which God had commanded unto Noah and his children and his seed after them. And also because Shechem did this thing to our sister Dinah in defiling her, for such vileness shall never be done amongst us. Now therefore know and see what you will do, and seek counsel and pretext what is to be done to them in order to kill all the inhabitants of this city. And Simeon said to them, Here is a proper advice for you. Tell them to circumcise every male amongst them as we are circumcised, and if they do not wish to do this, we shall take our daughter from them and go away. And if they consent to do this, and will do it, then when they are sunk down with pain, we will attack them with our swords, as upon one who is quiet and peaceable, and we will slay every male person amongst them. And Simeon's advice pleased them, and Simeon and Levi resolved to do unto them as it was proposed. And on the next morning Shechem and Hamar his father came again unto Jacob and his sons to speak concerning Dinah, and to hear what answer the sons of Jacob would give to their words. And the sons of Jacob spoke deceitfully to them, saying, We told our father Isaac all your words, and your words pleased him. But he spoke unto us, saying, Thus did Abraham his father command him from God the Lord of the whole earth, that any man who is not of his descendants that should wish to take one of his daughters shall cause every male belonging to him to be circumcised as we are circumcised, and then we may give him our daughter for a wife. Now we have made known to you all our ways that our father spoke unto us, for we cannot do this of which you spoke unto us to give our daughter to an uncircumcised man, for it is a disgrace to us. But herein we will consent to you to give you our daughter, and we will also take unto ourselves your daughters, and will dwell amongst you and be one people as you have spoken, if you will hearken to us and consent to be like us, to circumcise every male belonging to you as we are circumcised. And if you will not hearken unto us to have every male circumcised as we are circumcised, as we have commanded, then we will come to you and take our daughter from you and go away. And Shechem and his father Hamor heard the words of the sons of Jacob, and the thing pleased them exceedingly. And Shechem and his father Hamor hastened to do the wishes of the sons of Jacob, for Shechem was very fond of Dinah, and his soul was riveted to her. And Shechem and his father Hamor hastened to the gate of the city, and they assembled all the men of their city, and spoke unto them the words of the sons of Jacob, saying, we came to these men, the sons of Jacob, and we spoke unto them concerning their daughter. And these men will consent to do according to our wishes, and behold, our land is of a great extent for them, and they will dwell in it and trade in it, and we shall be one people. We will take their daughters, and our daughters we will give unto them for wives. But only on this condition will these men consent to do this thing, that every male amongst us be circumcised as they are circumcised, as their God commanded them. And when we shall have done according to their instructions to be circumcised, then will they dwell amongst us, together with their cattle and possessions, and we shall be as one people with them. And when all the men of the city heard the words of Shechem and his father Hamor, then all the men of their city were agreeable to this proposal, and they obeyed to be circumcised. For Shechem and his father Hamor were greatly esteemed by them, being the princes of the land. And on the next day Shechem and Hamor's father rose up early in the morning, and they assembled all the men of their city into the middle of the city, and they called for the sons of Jacob, who circumcised every male belonging to them on that day and the next. And they circumcised Shechem and Hamor's father, and the five brothers of Shechem, and then every one rose up and went home, for this thing was from the Lord against the city of Shechem, and from the Lord was Simeon's counsel in this matter in order that the Lord might deliver the city of Shechem into the hands of Jacob's two sons. End of chapter 33 Read by C.J. Plogue Chapter 34 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. And the number of all the males that were circumcised were six hundred and forty-five men, and two hundred and forty-six children. But Chittakim, son of Perid, the father of Hamor, and his six brothers, would not listen unto Shechem and his father Hamor, 
and they would not be circumcised, for the proposal of the sons of Jacob was loathsome in their sight, and their anger was greatly roused at this, that the people of the city had not hearkened to them. And in the evening of the second day they found eight small children who had not been circumcised, for their mothers had concealed them from Shechem and his father Hamor, and from the men of the city. And Shechem and his father Hamor sent to have them brought before them to be circumcised, when Chidcom and his six brothers sprang at them with their swords and sought to slay them. And they sought to slay also Shechem and his father Hamor, and they sought to slay Dinah with them on account of this matter. And they said unto them, What is this thing that you have done? Are there no women amongst the daughters of your brethren the Canaanites, that you wish to take unto yourselves the daughter of the Hebrews, whom you knew not before, and will do this act which our fathers never commanded you? Do you imagine that you will succeed through this act which you have done? And what will you answer in this affair to your brethren the Canaanites, who will come to-morrow and ask you concerning this thing? And if your act shall not appear just and good in their sight, what will you do for your lives, and we for our lives, in your not having hearkened to our voices? And if the inhabitants of the land, and all your brethren, the children of Ham, shall hear of your act, saying, On account of a Hebrew woman, did Shechem and Hamor his father, and all the inhabitants of their city, do that which they had been unacquainted, and which their ancestors never commanded them? Where then will you fly, and where conceal your shame? all your days before your brethren the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. Now therefore we cannot bear up against this thing which you have done, neither can we be burthened with this yoke upon us which our ancestors did not command us. Behold, tomorrow we will go and assemble all our brethren, the Canaanitish brethren who dwell in the land, and we will all come and smite you and all those who trust in you, that there shall not be a remnant left from you or them. And when Hamor and his son Shechem and all the people of the city heard the words of Chittakim and his brothers, they were terribly afraid of their lives at their words, and they repented of what they had done. And Shechem and his father Hamor answered their father Chittakim and his brethren, and they said unto them, All the words which you spoke unto us are true. Now do not say, nor imagine in your hearts, that on account of the love of the Hebrews we did this thing, that our ancestors did not command us. But because we saw that it was not their intention and desire to accede to our wishes concerning their daughter as to our taking her, except on this condition, so we hearkened to their voices and did this act which you saw, in order to obtain our desire from them. And when we shall have obtained our request from them, we will then return to them and do unto them that which you say unto us. We beseech you then to wait and tarry until our flesh shall be healed, and we again become strong, and we will then go together against them, and do unto them that which is in your hearts and in ours. And Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, heard all these words which Chittakim and his brothers had spoken, and what Hamor and his son Shechem and the people of their city had answered them. And she hastened and sent one of her maidens that her father had sent to take care of her in the house of Shechem, to Jacob her father and to her brethren, saying, Thus did Chittakim and his brothers advise concerning you, and thus did Hamor and Shechem and the people of the city answer them. And when Jacob heard these words, he was filled with wrath, and he was indignant at them, and his anger was kindled against them. And Simeon and Levi swore and said, As the Lord liveth, the God of the whole earth, by this time to-morrow there shall not be a remnant left in the whole city. And twenty young men had concealed themselves who were not circumcised. And these young men fought against Simeon and Levi, and Simeon and Levi killed eighteen of them, and two fled from them and escaped to some lime pits that were in the city. And Simeon and Levi sought for them but could not find them. And Simeon and Levi continued to go about in the city, and they killed all the people of the city at the edge of the sword, and they left none remaining. And there was a great consternation in the midst of the city, and the cry of the people of the city ascended to heaven, and all the women and children cried aloud. And Simeon and Levi slew all the city. They left not a male remaining in the whole city. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son at the edge of the sword, 
and they brought away Dinah from the house of Shechem, and they went from there. And the sons of Jacob went and returned and came upon the slain, and spoiled all their property which was in the city and the field. And whilst they were taking the spoil, three hundred men stood up and threw dust at them and struck them with stones. When Simeon turned to them, and he slew them all with the edge of the sword, and Simeon turned before Levi and came into the city. And they took away their sheep and their oxen and their cattle, and also the remainder of the women and little ones, and they led all these away. And they opened a gate and went out and came unto their father Jacob with vigor. And when Jacob saw all that they had done to the city and saw the spoil that they took from them, Jacob was very angry at them. And Jacob said unto them, What is this that you have done to me? Behold, I obtained rest amongst the Canaanitish inhabitants of the land and none of them meddled with me. And now you have done to make me obnoxious to the inhabitants of the land, amongst the Canaanites and the Perizzites? And I am but of a small number, and they will all assemble against me, and slay me when they hear of your work with their brethren, and I and my household will be destroyed. And Simeon and Levi and all their brothers with them answered their father Jacob, and said unto him, Behold, we live in the land and shall shechem do this to our sister why art thou silent at all that shechem has done and shall he deal with our sister as with a harlot in the streets and the number of women whom simeon and levi took captives from the city of shechem whom they did not slay was eighty-five who had not known man and amongst them was a young damsel of beautiful appearance and well favoured whose name was buna and simeon took her for a wife and the number of the males which they took captives and did not slay was forty-seven men and the rest they slew and all the young men and women that simeon and levi had taken captives from the city of shechem were servants to the sons of jacob and to their children after them until the day of the sons of jacob going forth from the land of egypt and when simeon and levi had gone forth from the city the two young men that were left who had concealed themselves in the city and did not die amongst the people of the city rose up and these young men went into the city and walked about in it and found the city desolate without a man and only women weeping and these young men cried out and said behold this is the evil which the sons of jacob the hebrew did to this city in their having this day destroyed one of the canaanitish cities and were not afraid of their lives of all the land of canaan and these men left the city and went to the city of Tapnach, and they came there and told the inhabitants of Tapnach all that had befallen them, and all that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem. And the information reached Jashub, king of Tapnach, and he sent men to the city of Shechem to see those young men, for the king did not believe them in this account, saying, How could two men lay waste such a large town as Shechem? And the messengers of Jashub came back and told him, saying, We came into the city, and it is destroyed. There is not a man there, only weeping women. Neither is any flock or cattle there, for all that was in the city the sons of Jacob took away. And Jashub wondered at this, saying, How could two men do this thing to destroy so large a city, and not one man able to stand against them? For the like has not been from the days of Nimrod and not even from the remotest time has the like taken place. And Jashub, king of Tapnach, said to his people, Be courageous, and we will go and fight against these Hebrews, and do unto them as they did unto the city, and we will avenge the cause of the people of the city. And Jashub, king of Tapnach, consulted with his counsellors about this matter, and his advisers said unto him, Alone thou wilt not prevail over the Hebrews, for they must be powerful to do this work to the whole city. If two of them laid waste the whole city, and no one stood against them, surely if thou wilt go against them, they will all rise against us and destroy us likewise. But if thou wilt send to all the kings that surround us, and let them come together, then we will go with them and fight against the sons of Jacob, then wilt thou prevail against them. And Jashub heard the words of his counsellors, and their words pleased him and his people, and he did so. And Yashub king of Tapnach sent to all the kings of the Amorites that surrounded Shechem and Tapnach, saying, Go up with me, and assist me, 
and we will smite Jacob the Hebrew and all his sons, and destroy them from the earth, for thus did he do to the city of Shechem, and do you not know of it? And all the kings of the Amorites heard the evil that the sons of Jacob had done to the city of Shechem, and they were greatly astonished at them. And the seven kings of the Amorites assembled with all their armies, about ten thousand men with drawn swords, and they came to fight against the sons of Jacob. And Jacob heard that the kings of the Amorites had assembled to fight against his sons, and Jacob was greatly afraid, and it distressed him. And Jacob exclaimed against Simeon and Levi, saying, What is this act that you did? Why have you injured me to bring against me all the children of Canaan to destroy me and my household? For I was at rest, even I and my household, and you have done this thing to me, and provoked the inhabitants of the land against me by your proceedings. And Judah answered his father, saying, Was it for not my brothers Simeon and Levi killed all the inhabitants of Shechem? Surely it was because Shechem had humbled our sister, and transgressed the command of our God to Noah and his children. For Shechem took our sister away by force and committed adultery with her. And Shechem did all this evil, and not one of the inhabitants of his city interfered with him, to say, Why wilt thou do this? Surely for this my brothers went and smote the city, and the Lord delivered it into their hands, because its inhabitants had transgressed the commands of our God. Is it then for naught that they have done all this? And now why art thou afraid or distressed, and why art thou displeased at my brothers, and why is thine anger kindled against them? Surely our God, who delivered into their hand the city of Shechem and its people, he will also deliver into our hands all the Canaanitish kings who are coming against us. And we will do unto them as my brothers did unto Shechem. Now be tranquil about them, and cast away thy fears. But trust in the Lord our God, and pray unto him to assist us, and deliver us, and deliver our enemies into our hands. And Judah called to one of his father's servants, Go now and see where those kings who are coming against us are situated with their armies. And the servant went and looked afar off, and went up opposite Mount Sihon, and saw all the camps of the kings standing in the fields. And he returned to Judah and said, Behold, the kings are situated in the field with all their camps, a people exceedingly numerous, like unto sand upon the seashore. And Judah said unto Simeon and Levi, and unto all his brothers, Strengthen yourselves, and be sons of valor, for the Lord our God is with us, do not fear them. Stand forth each man girt with his weapons of war, his bow and his sword, and we will go and fight against these uncircumcised men. The Lord is our God, he will save us. And they rose up, and each girt on his weapon of war, great and small, eleven sons of Jacob, and all the servants of Jacob with them. And all the servants of Isaac, who were with Isaac in Hebron, all came to them equipped in all sorts of war instruments, and the sons of Jacob and their servants, being one hundred and twelve men, went toward these kings, and Jacob also went with them. And the sons of Jacob sent unto their father Isaac, the son of Abraham, to Hebron, the same is Kibriath Arba, saying, Pray we beseech thee for us unto the Lord our God, to protect us from the hands of the Canaanites who are coming against us, and to deliver them into our hands. And Isaac the son of Abraham prayed unto the Lord for his sons, and he said, O Lord God, thou didst promise my father, saying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and thou didst also promise me. And establish thou thy word now that the kings of Canaan are coming together to make war with my children, because they committed no violence. Now therefore, O Lord God, God of the whole earth, pervert, I pray thee, the counsel of these kings, that they may not fight against my sons, and impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons, and bring down their pride, and that they may turn away from my sons. And with thy strong hand and outstretched arm deliver my sons and their servants from them, for power and might are in thy hands to do all this. And the sons of Jacob and their servants went towards these kings, and they trusted in the Lord their God. And whilst they were going, Jacob their father also prayed unto the Lord, and said, O Lord God, powerful and exalted God, who hast reigned from days of old, from thence till now and forever. 
thou art he who stirreth up wars and causeth them to cease in thy hand are power and might to exalt and to bring down o oh, may my prayer be acceptable before thee that thou mayest turn to me with thy mercies to impress the hearts of these kings and their people with the terror of my sons and terrify them and their camps and with thy great kindness deliver all those that trust in thee for it is thou who canst bring people under us and reduce nations under our power End of chapter thirty four read by c j plogue chapter thirty five of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org chapter thirty five and all the kings of the amorites came and took their stand in the field to consult with their counsellors what was to be done with the sons of jacob for they were still afraid of them saying behold two of them slew the whole city of shechem and the lord heard the prayers of isaac and jacob and he filled the hearts of all these kings advisers with great fear and terror that they unanimously exclaimed are you silly this day or is there no understanding in you that you will fight with the hebrews and why will you take a delight in your own destruction this day behold two of them came to the city of shechem without fear or terror and they killed all the inhabitants of the city that no man stood up against them and how will you be able to fight with them all surely you know that their god is exceedingly fond of them and has done mighty things for them such as have not been done from the days of old and amongst all the gods of nations there is none can do like unto his mighty deeds surely he delivered their father abraham the hebrew from the hand of nimrod and from the hand of all his people who had many times sought to slay him he delivered him also from the fire in which king nimrod had cast him and his god delivered him from it and who else can do the like surely it was abraham who slew the five kings of elam when they had touched his brother's son who in those days dwelt in sodom and took his servant that was faithful in his house and a few of his men and they pursued the kings of elam in one night and killed them and restored to his brother's son all his property which they had taken from him and surely you know the god of these hebrews is much delighted with them and they are also delighted with him for they know that he delivered them from all their enemies and behold through his love toward god abraham took his only and precious son and intended to bring him up as a burnt offering to his god and had it not been for god who prevented him from doing this he would then have done it through his love to his god and god saw all his works and swore unto him and promised him that he would deliver his sons and all his seed from every trouble that would befall them because he had done this thing and through his love to his god stifled his compassion for his child and have you not heard what their god did to pharaoh king of egypt and to abimelech king of gerar through taking abraham's wife who said of her she is my sister lest they might slay him on account of her and think of taking her for a wife and god did unto them and their people all that you heard of and behold we ourselves saw with our eyes that esau the brother of jacob came to him with four hundred men with the intention of slaying him for he called to mind that he had taken away from him his father's blessing and he went to meet him when he came from syria to smite the mother with the children and who delivered him from his hands but his god in whom he trusted he delivered him from the hand of his brother and also from the hands of his enemies and surely he again will protect them who does not know that it was their god who inspired them with strength to do to the town of shechem the evil which you heard of could it then be with their own strength that two men could destroy such a large city as shechem had it not been for their god in whom they trusted he said and did unto them all this to slay the inhabitants of the city in their city and can you then prevail over them who have come forth together from your city to fight with the whole of them even if a thousand times as many more should come to your assistance surely you know and understand that you do not come to fight with them but you come to war with their god who made choice of them and you have therefore all come this day to be destroyed now therefore 
refrain from this evil which you are endeavouring to bring upon yourselves and it will be better for you not to go to battle with them although they are but few in numbers because their god is with them and when the kings of the amorites heard all the words of their advisers their hearts were filled with terror and they were afraid of the sons of jacob and would not fight against them and they inclined their ears to the words of their advisers and they listened to all their words and the words of the counsellors greatly pleased the kings and they did so and the kings turned and refrained from the sons of jacob for they durst not approach them to make war with them for they were greatly afraid of them and their hearts melted within them from fear of them for this proceeded from the lord to them for he heard the prayers of his servants isaac and jacob for they trusted in him and all these kings returned with their camps on that day each to his own city and they did not at that time fight with the sons of jacob and the sons of jacob kept their station that day till evening opposite mount sihon and seeing that these kings did not come to fight against them the sons of jacob returned home End of chapter thirty five read by c j plogue chapter thirty six of the book of jasher this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter thirty six at that time the lord appeared unto jacob saying arise go to bethel and remain there and make there an altar to the lord who appeareth unto thee who delivered thee and all thy sons from affliction and jacob rose up with his sons and all belonging to him and they went and came to bethel according to the word of the lord and jacob was ninety-nine years old when he went up to bethel and jacob and his sons and all the people that were with him remained in bethel in luz and he there built an altar to the lord who appeared unto him and jacob and his sons remained in bethel six months at that time died deborah the daughter of uz the nurse of rebekah who had been with jacob and jacob buried her beneath bethel under an oak that was there and rebekah the daughter of bethuel the mother of jacob also died at that time in hebron the same is kiriath arba and she was buried in the cave of machpelah which abraham had bought from the children of heth and the life of rebekah was one hundred and thirty-three years and she died and when jacob heard that his mother rebekah was dead he wept bitterly for his mother and made a great mourning for her and for deborah her nurse beneath the oak and he called the name of that place alam bakuth and laban the syrian died in those days for god smote him because he transgressed the covenant that existed between him and jacob and jacob was a hundred years old when the lord appeared unto him and blessed him and called his name israel and rachel the wife of jacob conceived in those days and at that time jacob and all belonging to him journeyed from bethel to go to his father's house to hebron and whilst they were going on the road and there was yet but a little way to come to ephrath rachel bare a son and she had hard labor and she died and jacob buried her in the way to ephrath which is bethlehem and he set a pillar upon her grave which is there unto this day and the days of rachel were forty-five years and she died and jacob called the name of his son that was born to him which rachel bare unto him benjamin for he was born to him in the land on the right hand and it was after the death of rachel that jacob pitched his tent in the tent of her handmaid bilhah and reuben was jealous for his mother leah on account of this and he was filled with anger and he rose up in his anger and went and entered the tent of bilhah and thence removed his father's bed at that time the portion of the birthright together with the kingly and priestly offices was removed from the sons of reuben for he had profaned his father's bed and the birthright was given unto joseph the kingly office to judah and the priesthood unto levi because reuben had defiled his father's bed and these are the generations of jacob who were born to him in paddan aram and the sons of jacob were twelve the sons of leah were reuben the firstborn and simeon levi judah issachar zebulun and their sister dinah and the sons of rachel were joseph and benjamin the sons of zilpah leah's handmaid were gad and asher and the sons of bilhah rachel's handmaid were dan and naphtali these are the sons of jacob which were born to him in paddan aram and jacob and his sons and all belonging to him journeyed and came to mamre which is kiriath arba 
that is in hebron where abraham and isaac sojourned and jacob with his sons and all belonging to him dwelled with his father in hebron and his brother esau and his sons and all belonging to him went to the land of seir and dwelt there and had possessions in the land of seir and the children of esau were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly in the land of seir and these are the generations of esau that were born to him in the land of canaan and the sons of esau were five and adah bare to esau his firstborn eliphaz and she also bare to him ruel and Aribama bare to him jewish yalam and korah these are the children of esau who were born to him in the land of canaan and the sons of eliphaz the sons of esau were timon omar zepho gatam kenaz and amalex and the sons of ruel were nakath zirach shama and miza and the sons of jeosh were timna alva jetheth and the sons of yalam were ala phinor and kenaz and the sons of korah were timon mibzar magdal and iram these are the families of the sons of esau according to their dukedoms in the land of seir and these are the names of the sons of seir the horite inhabitants of the land of seir lotan shobal zibian anna dishan ezer and dishan being seven sons and the children of lotan were hori heman and their sister timna that is timna who came to jacob and his sons and they would not give ear to her and she went and became a concubine to eliphaz the son of esau and she bore to him amalek and the sons of shobal were alvin manahath ebal shepho and onam and the sons of zibian were aja and anna this was that anna who found the yemen in the wilderness when he fed the asses of zibian his father and whilst he was feeding his father's asses he led them to the wilderness at different times to feed them and there was a day that he brought them to one of the deserts on the seashore opposite the wilderness of the people and whilst he was feeding them behold a very heavy storm came from the other side of the sea and rested upon the asses that were feeding there and they all stood still and afterward about one hundred and twenty great and terrible animals came out from the wilderness at the other side of the sea and they all came to the place where the asses were and they placed themselves there and those animals from their middle downward were in the shape of the children of men and from their middle upward some had the likeness of bears and some the likeness of kephas with tails behind them from between their shoulders reaching down to the earth like the tails of the duchipath and these animals came and mounted and rode upon these asses and led them away and they went away unto this day and one of these animals approached anna and smote him with his tail and then fled from that place and when he saw this work he was exceedingly afraid of his life and he fled and escaped to the city and he related to his sons and brothers all that had happened to him and many men went to seek the asses but could not find them and anna and his brothers went no more to that place from that day following for they were greatly afraid of their lives and the children of anna the son of seir were dishan and his sister alibama and the children of dishan were hamdan ishban ethran and shiran and the children of ezer were bilhan zavan and akan and the children of dishan were uz and aran these are the families of the children of seir the horite according to their dukedoms in the land of seir and esau and his children dwelt in the land of seir the horite the inhabitant of the land and they had possessions in it and were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly and jacob and his children and all belonging to them dwelt with their father isaac in the land of canaan as the lord had commanded abraham their father end of chapter thirty six read by c j plogue chapter thirty seven of the book of jasher this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 37 And in the one hundred and fifth year of the life of Jacob, that is the ninth year of Jacob's dwelling with his children in the land of Canaan, he came from Paddan Aram. And in those days Jacob journeyed with his children from Hebron, and they went and returned to the city of Shechem, they and all belonging to them, and they dwelt there. 
for the children of jacob obtained good and fat pasture land for their cattle in the city of shechem the city of shechem having then been rebuilt and there were in it about three hundred men and women and jacob and his children and all belonging to him dwelt in the part of the field which jacob had bought from hamor the father of shechem when he came from paddan aram before simeon and levi had smitten the city and all those kings of the canaanites and amorites that surrounded the city of shechem heard that the sons of jacob had again come to shechem and dwelt there and they said shall the sons of jacob the hebrew again come to the city and dwell therein after that they have smitten its inhabitants and driven them out shall they now return and also drive out those who are dwelling in the city or slay them and all the kings of canaan again assembled and they came together to make war with jacob and his sons and jashub king of tapnach sent also to all his neighboring kings to elan king of gush and to ihure king of shiloh and to parathon king of shazar and to susi king of sartan and to laban king of bethoran and to shabar king of othnema saying come up to me and assist me and let us smite jacob the hebrew and his sons and all belonging to him for they are again come to shechem to possess it and to slay its inhabitants as before and all these kings assembled together and came with all their camps a people exceedingly plentiful like the sand upon the seashore and they were all opposite to tapnak and jashub king of tapnak went forth to them with all his army and he encamped with them opposite to tapnak without the city and all these kings they divided into seven divisions being seven camps against the sons of jacob and they sent a declaration to jacob and his son saying come you all forth to us that we may have an interview together in the plain and revenge the cause of the men of shechem whom you slew in their city and you will now again return to the city of shechem and dwell therein and slay its inhabitants as before and the sons of jacob heard this and their anger was kindled exceedingly at the words of the kings of canaan and ten of the sons of jacob hastened and rose up and each of them girt on his weapons of war and there were one hundred and two of their servants with them equipped in battle array and all these men the sons of jacob with their servants went toward these kings and jacob their father was with them and they all stood upon the heap of shechem and jacob prayed to the lord for his sons and he spread forth his hands to the lord and he said o god thou art an almighty god thou art our father thou didst form us and we are the works of thine hands i pray thee deliver my sons through thy mercy from the hand of their enemies who are this day coming to fight with them and save them from their hand for in thy hand is power and might to save the few from the many and give unto my sons thy servants strength of heart and might to fight with their enemies to subdue them and make their enemies fall before them and let not my sons and their servants die through the hands of the children of canaan but if it seemeth good in thine eyes to take away the lives of my sons and their servants take them in thy great mercy through the hand of thy ministers that they may not perish this day by the hands of the kings of the amorites and when jacob ceased praying to the lord the earth shook from its place and the sun darkened and all these kings were terrified and a great consternation seized them and the lord hearkened to the prayer of jacob and the lord impressed the hearts of all the kings and their hosts with the terror and awe of the sons of jacob for the lord caused them to hear the voice of chariots and the voice of mighty horses from the sons of jacob and the voice of a great army accompanying them and these kings were seized with great terror at the sons of jacob and whilst they were standing in their quarters behold the sons of jacob advanced upon them with one hundred and twelve men with a great and tremendous shouting and when the kings saw the sons of jacob advancing toward them they were still more panic-struck and they were inclined to retreat from before the sons of jacob as at first and not to fight with them but they did not retreat saying it would be a disgrace to us thus twice to retreat from before the hebrews and the sons of jacob came near and advanced against all these kings and their armies and they saw and behold it was a very mighty people numerous as the sand of the sea and the sons of jacob called unto the lord and said help us o lord help us and answer us for we trust in thee and let us not die by the hands of these uncircumcised men who this day have come against us 
and the sons of jacob girt on their weapons of war and they took in their hands each man his shield and his javelin and they approached to battle and judah the son of jacob ran first before his brethren and ten of his servants with him and he went toward these kings and jashub king of tapnach also came forth first with his army before judah and judah saw jashub and his army coming toward him and judah's wrath was kindled and his anger burned within him and he approached to battle in which judah ventured his life and jashub and all his army were advancing toward judah and he was riding upon a very strong and powerful horse and jashub was a very valiant man and covered with iron and brass from head to foot and whilst he was upon the horse he shot arrows with both hands from before and behind as was his manner in all battles and he never missed the place to which he aimed his arrows and when jashub came to fight with judah and was darting many arrows against judah the lord bound the hands of jashub and all the arrows that he shot rebounded upon his own men and notwithstanding this jashub kept advancing toward judah to challenge him with the arrows but the distance between them was about thirty cubits and when judah saw jashub darting forth his arrows against him he ran to him with his wrath excited might and judah took up a large stone from the ground and its weight was sixty shekels and judah ran toward jashub and with the stone struck him on his shield that jashub was stunned with the blow and fell off from his horse to the ground and the shield burst asunder out of the hand of jashub and through the force of the blow sprang to the distance of about fifteen cubits and the shield fell before the second camp and the kings that came with jashub saw at a distance the strength of judah the sons of jacob and what he had done to jashub and they were terribly afraid of judah and they assembled near jashub's camp seeing his confusion and judah drew his sword and smote forty-two men of the camp of jashub and the whole of jashub's camp fled before judah and no man stood against him and they left jashub and fled from him and jashub was still prostrate upon the ground and jashub seeing that all the men of his camp had fled from him hastened and rose up with terror against judah and stood upon his legs opposite judah and jashub had a single combat with judah placing shield toward shield and jashub's men all fled for they were greatly afraid of judah and jashub took his spear in his hand to strike judah upon his head but judah had quickly placed his shield to his head against jashub's spear so that the shield of judah received the blow from jashub's spear and the shield was split in two and when judah saw that his shield was split he hastily drew his sword and smote jashub at his ankles and cut off his feet that jashub fell upon the ground and the spear fell from his hand and judah hastily picked up jashub's spear with which he severed his head and cast it next to his feet and when the sons of jacob saw what judah had done to jashub they all ran into the ranks of the other kings and the sons of jacob fought with the army of jashub and the armies of all the kings that were there and the sons of jacob caused fifteen thousand of their men to fall and they smote at them as if smiting with the gourds and the rest fled for their lives and judah was still standing by the body of jashub and stripped jashub of his coat of mail and judah also took off the iron and brass that was about jashub and behold nine men of the captains of jashub came alone to fight against judah and judah hastened and took up a stone from the ground and with it smote one of them upon the head and his skull was fractured and the body also fell from the horse to the ground and the eight captains that remained seeing the strength of judah were greatly afraid and they fled and judah with his ten men pursued them and they overtook them and slew them and the sons of jacob were still smiting the armies of the kings and they slew many of them but those kings daringly kept their stand with their captains and did not retreat from their places and they exclaimed against those of their armies that fled from before the sons of jacob but none would listen to them for they were afraid of their lives lest they should die and all the sons of jacob after having smitten the armies of the kings returned and came before judah and judah was still slaying the eight captains of jashub and stripping off their garments and levi saw elon king of gash advancing toward him with his fourteen captains to smite him but levi did not know it for certain and elon with his captains approached nearer and levi looked back and saw that battle was given him in the rear 
31. And Levi ran with twelve of his servants, and they went and slew Elon and his captains with the edge of the sword. End of chapter 37「Chapter thirty eight of the Book of Jasher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter thirty eight. And Ihuri, king of Shiloh, came up to assist Elon, and he approached Jacob. When Jacob drew his bow that was in his hand, and with an arrow struck Ihuri, which caused his death. And when Ihuri, king of Shiloh, was dead, the four remaining kings fled from their station with the rest of the captains, and they endeavored to retreat saying we have no more strength with the hebrews after their having killed the three kings and their captains who were more powerful than we are and when the sons of jacob saw that the remaining kings had removed from their station they pursued them and jacob also came from the heap of shechem from the place where he was standing and they went after the kings and they approached them with their servants and the kings and the captains with the rest of their armies seeing that the sons of jacob approached them were afraid of their lives and fled till they reached the city of Shazar. And the sons of Jacob pursued them to the gate of the city of Shazar, and they smote a great smiting amongst the kings and their armies, about four thousand men, and whilst they were smiting the army of the kings, Jacob was occupied with his bow, confining himself to smiting the kings, and he slew them all. And he slew Parathon, king of Shazar, at the gate of the city of Shazar, and he afterwards smote Susi, king of Sartan, and Laban, king of beth Corin, and Shabar, king of Machnema, and he slew them all with arrows, an arrow to each of them, and they died. And the sons of Jacob, seeing that all the kings were dead, and that they were broken up and retreating, continued to carry on the battle with the armies of the kings opposite the gate of Shazar, and they still smote about four hundred of their men. And three men of the servants of Jacob fell in that battle, and when Judah saw that three of his servants had died, it grieved him greatly, and his anger burned within him against the Amorites. And all the men that remained of the armies of the kings were greatly afraid of their lives, and they ran and broke the gate of the walls of the city of Shazar, and they all entered the city for safety. And they concealed themselves in the midst of the city of Shazar, for the city of Shazar was very large and extensive, and when all these armies had entered the city, the sons of Jacob ran after them to the city. And four mighty men, experienced in battle, went forth from the city and stood against the entrance of the city with drawn swords and spears in their hands, and they placed themselves opposite the sons of Jacob and would not suffer them to enter the city. And Naphtali ran and came between them and with his sword smote two of them, and cut off their heads at one stroke. And he turned to the other two, and beheld they had fled, and he pursued them and overtook them, smote them, and slew them. And the sons of Jacob came to the city, and saw, and behold, there was another wall to the city, and they sought for the gate of the wall, and could not find it. And Judah sprang upon the top of the wall, and Simeon and Levi followed him, and they all three descended from the wall into the city. And Simeon and Levi slew all the men who ran for safety into the city, and also the inhabitants of the city with their wives and little ones. They slew with the edge of the sword, and the cries of the city ascended up to heaven. And Dan and Naphtali sprang upon the wall to see what caused the noise of lamentations, for the sons of Jacob felt anxious about their brothers, and they heard the inhabitants of the city speaking with weeping and supplications, saying, Take all that we possess in the city and go away, only do not put us to death. And when Judah, Simeon, and Levi had ceased smiting the inhabitants of the city, they ascended the wall and called to Dan and Naphtali, who were upon the wall, and to the rest of their brothers, and Simeon and Levi informed them of the entrance into the city, and all the sons of Jacob came to fetch the spoil. And the sons of Jacob took the spoil of the city of Shazar, the flocks and herds, and the property, and they took all that could be captured and went away that day from the city. And on the next day the sons of Jacob went to Sartan, for they heard that the men of Sartan who had remained in the city were assembling to fight with them for having slain their king, and Sartan was a very high and fortified city, and it had a deep rampart surrounding the city. And the pillar of the rampart was about fifty cubits, and its breadth forty cubits, 
and there was no place for a man to enter the city on account of the rampart. And the sons of Jacob saw the rampart of the city, and they sought an entrance in it, but could not find it. For the entrance to the city was at the rear, and every man that wished to come into the city came by that road and went round the whole city, and he afterward entered the city. And the sons of Jacob, seeing they could not find the way into the city, their anger was kindled greatly, and the inhabitants of the city, seeing that the sons of Jacob were coming to them, were greatly afraid of them, for they had heard of their strength and what they had done in Shazar. And the inhabitants of the city of Sartan could not go out toward the sons of Jacob after having assembled in the city to fight against them, lest they might thereby get into the city. But when they saw that they were coming toward them, they were greatly afraid of them, for they had heard of their strength and what they had done to Shazar. So the inhabitants of Sartan speedily took away the bridge of the road of the city from its place before the sons of Jacob came, and they brought it into the city. And the sons of Jacob came and sought the way into the city and could not find it, and the inhabitants of the city went up to the top of the wall and saw, and behold, the sons of Jacob were seeking an entrance into the city. And the inhabitants of the city reproached the sons of Jacob from the top of the wall, and they cursed them, and the sons of Jacob heard the reproaches, and they were greatly incensed, and their anger burned within them. And the sons of Jacob were provoked at them, and they all rose and sprang over the rampart with the force of their strength, and through their might passed the forty cubits' breadth of the rampart. And when they had passed the rampart, they stood under the wall of the city, and they found all the gates of the city enclosed with iron doors. And the sons of Jacob came near to break open the doors of the gates of the city, and the inhabitants did not let them, for from the top of the wall they were casting stones and arrows upon them. And the number of the people that were upon the wall was about four hundred men, and when the sons of Jacob saw that the men of the city would not let them open the gates of the city, they sprang and ascended to the top of the wall, and Judah went up first to the east part of the city, and Gad and Asher went up after him to the west corner of the city, and Simeon and Levi to the north, and Dan and Reuben to the south. And the men who were on the top of the wall, the inhabitants of the city, seeing that the sons of Jacob were coming up to them, they all fled from the wall, descended into the city, and concealed themselves in the midst of the city. And Issachar and Naphtali, that remained under the wall, approached and broke the gates of the city, and kindled a fire at the gates of the city, that the iron melted, and all the sons of Jacob came into the city, they and all their men, and they fought with the inhabitants of the city of Sartan, and smote them with the edge of the sword, and no man stood up before them. And about two hundred men fled from the city, and they all went and hid themselves in a certain tower in the city, and Judah pursued them to the tower, and he broke down the tower which fell upon the men, and they all died. And the sons of Jacob went up the road of the roof of that tower, and they saw, and behold, there was another strong and high tower at a distance in the city, and the top of it reached to heaven. And the sons of Jacob hastened and descended, and went with all their men to that tower, and found it filled with about three hundred men, women, and little ones. And the sons of Jacob smote a great smiting amongst those men in the tower, and they ran away and fled from them. And Simeon and Levi pursued them, when twelve mighty and valiant men came out to them from the place where they had concealed themselves. And those twelve men maintained a strong battle against Simeon and Levi. And Simeon and Levi could not prevail over them. And those valiant men broke the shields of Simeon and Levi, and one of them struck at Levi's head with his sword. When Levi hastily placed his hand to his head, for he was afraid of the sword, and the sword struck Levi's hand, and it wanted but little to the hand of Levi being cut off. And Levi seized the sword of the valiant man in his hand, and took it forcibly from the man, and with it he struck at the head of the powerful man, and he severed his head. And eleven men approached to fight with Levi, for they saw that one of them was killed, and the sons of Jacob fought, but the sons of Jacob could not prevail over them, for those men were very powerful. And the sons of Jacob, seeing that they could not prevail over them, Simeon gave a loud and tremendous shriek, and the eleven powerful men were stunned at the voice of Simeon's shrieking. And Judah at a distance knew the voice of Simeon's shouting, and Naphtali and Judah ran with their shields to Simeon and Levi, 
and found them fighting with those powerful men unable to prevail over them as their shields were broken and naphtali saw that the shields of simeon and levi were broken and he took two shields from his servants and brought them to simeon and levi and simeon levi and judah on that day fought all three against the eleven mighty men until the time of sunset but they could not prevail over them and this was told unto jacob and he was sorely grieved and he prayed unto the lord and he and naphtali his son went against these mighty men and jacob approached and drew his bow and came nigh unto the mighty men and slew three of their men with the bow and the remaining eight turned back behold the war waged against them in the front and rear and they were greatly afraid of their lives and could not stand before the sons of jacob and they fled from before them and in their flight they met dan and asher coming toward them and they suddenly fell upon them and fought with them and slew two of them and judah and his brothers pursued them and smote the remainder of them and slew them and all the sons of jacob returned and walked about the city searching if they could find any men and they found about twenty young men in a cave in the city and gad and asher smote them all and dan and naphtali lighted upon the rest of the men who had fled and escaped from the second tower and they smote them all and the sons of jacob smote all the inhabitants of the city of sartan but the women and little ones they left in the city and did not slay them and all the inhabitants of the city of sartan were powerful men one of them would pursue a thousand and two of them would not flee from ten thousand of the rest of men and the sons of jacob slew all the inhabitants of the city of sartan with the edge of the sword that no man stood up against them and they left the women in the city and the sons of jacob took all the spoil of the city and captured what they desired and they took flocks and herds and property from the city and the sons of jacob did unto sartan and its inhabitants as they had done to shazar and its inhabitants and they turned and went away End of chapter 38 Read by C.J. Plog Chapter 39 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 39 And when the sons of Jacob went from the city of Sartan, they had gone about two hundred cubits when they met the inhabitants of Tapnach coming toward them for they went out to fight with them because they had smitten the king of tapnach and all his men so all that remained in the city of tapnach came out to fight with the sons of jacob and they thought to retake from them the booty and the spoil which they had captured from shazar and sartan and the rest of the men of tapnach fought with the sons of jacob in that place and the sons of jacob smote them and they fled before them and they pursued them to the city of arbalan and they all fell before the sons of jacob and the sons of jacob returned and came to tapnach to take away the spoil of tapnach and when they came to tapnach they heard that the people of arbalan had gone out to meet them to save the spoil of their brethren and the sons of jacob left ten of their men in tapnach to plunder the city and they went out toward the people of arbalan and the men of arbalan went out with their wives to fight with the sons of jacob for their wives were experienced in battle and they went out about four hundred men and women and all the sons of jacob shouted with a loud voice and they all ran toward the inhabitants of arbalan and with a great and tremendous voice and the inhabitants of arbalan heard the noise of the shouting of the sons of jacob and their roaring like the noise of lions and like the roaring of the sea and its waves and the fear and terror possessed their hearts on account of the sons of jacob and they were terribly afraid of them and they retreated and fled before them into the city and the sons of jacob pursued them to the gate of the city and they came upon them in the city and the sons of jacob fought with them in the city and all their women were engaged in slinging against the sons of jacob and the combat was very severe amongst them the whole of that day till evening and the sons of jacob could not prevail over them and the sons of jacob had almost perished in that battle and the sons of jacob cried unto the lord and greatly gained strength toward evening and the sons of jacob smote all the inhabitants of arbalan by the edge of the sword men women and little ones and also the remainder of people who fled from sartan the sons of jacob smote them in arbalan 
and the sons of Jacob did unto Arbalan and Tabnach as they had done to Shazar and Sartan. And when the women saw that all their men were dead, they went upon the roofs of the city and smote the sons of Jacob by showering down stones like rain. And the sons of Jacob hastened and came into the city and seized all the women and smote them with the edge of the sword, and the sons of Jacob captured all the spoil and booty, flocks and herds and cattle. And the sons of Jacob did unto Machnema, as they had done to Topnach, to Shazar, and to Shiloh, and they turned from there and went away. And on the fifth day the sons of Jacob heard that the people of Gash had gathered against them to battle, because that they had slain their king and their captains, for there had been fourteen captains in the city of Gash, and the sons of Jacob had slain them all in the first battle. And the sons of Jacob that day gird on their weapons of war, and they marched to battle against the inhabitants of Gash, and in Gash there was a strong and mighty people of the people of the Amorites, and Gash was the strongest and best fortified city of all the cities of the Amorites, and it had three walls. And the sons of Jacob came to Gash, and they found the gates of the city locked, and about five hundred men standing at the top of the outermost wall, and a people numerous as the sand upon the seashore were in ambush for the sons of Jacob from without the city at the rear thereof. And the sons of Jacob approached to open the gates of the city, and whilst they were drawing nigh, behold, those who were in ambush at the rear of the city came forth from their places, and surrounded the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob were enclosed between the people of Gash, and the battle was both to their front and rear, and all the men that were upon the wall were casting from the wall upon them arrows and stones. And Judah, seeing that the men of Gosh were getting too heavy for them, gave a most piercing and tremendous shriek, and all the men of Gash were terrified at the voice of Judah's cry. And men fell from the wall at his powerful shriek. And all those that were from without and within the city were greatly afraid of their lives. And the sons of Jacob still came nigh to break the doors of the city, when the men of Gash threw stones and arrows upon them from the top of the wall and made them flee from the gate. And the sons of Jacob returned against the men of Gash who were with them from without the city, and they smote them terribly as striking against gourds, and they could not stand against the sons of Jacob for fright and terror had seized them at the shriek of judah and the sons of jacob slew all those men who were from without the city and the sons of jacob still drew nigh to effect an entrance into the city and to fight under the city walls but they could not for all the inhabitants of gash who remained in the city had surrounded the walls of gash in every direction so that the sons of jacob were unable to approach the city to fight with them and as the sons of Jacob came nigh to one corner to fight under the wall, the inhabitants of Gash threw arrows and stones upon them like showers of rain, and they fled from under the wall. And the people of Gash who were upon the wall, seeing that the sons of Jacob could not prevail over them from under the wall, reproached the sons of Jacob in these words, saying, What is the matter with you in the battle that you cannot prevail? Can you then do unto the mighty city of Gash and its inhabitants as you did to the cities of the Amorites that were not so powerful? Surely to those weak ones amongst us you did those things, and slew them in the entrance of the city, for they had no strength when they were terrified at the sound of your shouting. And will you now then be able to fight in this place? Surely here you will all die, and we will avenge the cause of those cities that you have laid waste. And the inhabitants of Gash greatly reproached the sons of Jacob and reviled them with their gods, and continued to cast arrows and stones upon them from the wall. And Judah and his brothers heard the words of the inhabitants of Gash, and their anger was greatly roused. And Judah was jealous of his god in this matter, and he called out and said, O Lord, help, send help to help us and our brothers. And he ran at a distance with all his might, with his drawn sword in his hand, and he sprang from the earth, and by dint of his strength mounted the wall, and his sword fell from his hand. And Judah shouted upon the wall, and all the men that were upon the wall were terrified, and some of them fell from the wall into the city and died. And those who were yet upon the wall, when they saw Judah's strength, they were greatly afraid and fled for their lives into the city for safety. And some were emboldened to fight with Judah upon the wall, and they came nigh to slay him, when they saw there was no sword in Judah's hand. 
31. And they thought of cast ing him from the wall to his brothers, and twenty men of the city came up to assist them, and they surrounded Judah, and they all shouted over him, and approached him with drawn swords, and they terrified Judah, and Judah cried out to his brothers from the wall. And Jacob and his sons drew the bow from under the wall and smote three of them that were on top of the wall. And Judah continued to cry and he exclaimed, O Lord, help us, O Lord, deliver us. And he cried out with a loud voice upon the wall and the cry was heard at a great distance. And after this cry, he again repeated to shout and all the men who surrounded Judah on the top of the wall were terrified and they each threw his sword from his hand at the sound of judah's shouting and his tremor and fled and judah took the swords which had fallen from their hands and judah fought with them and slew twenty of their men upon the wall and about eighty men and women still ascended the wall from the city and they all surrounded judah and the lord impressed the fear of judah in their hearts that they were unable to approach him and Jacob and all who were with him drew the bow from under the wall and they slew ten men upon the wall and they fell below the wall before Jacob and his sons. And the people upon the wall, seeing that twenty of their men had fallen, they still ran toward Judah with drawn swords, but they could not approach him for they were greatly terrified at Judah's strength. And one of their mighty men, whose name was Arud, approached to strike Judah upon the head with his sword when Judah hastily put his shield to his head and the sword hit the shield and it was split in two. And this mighty man, after he had struck Judah, ran for his life at the fear of Judah and his feet slipped upon the wall and he fell amongst the sons of Jacob who were below the wall and the sons of Jacob smote him and slew him. And Judah's head pained him from the blow of the powerful man and Judah had nearly died from it. And Judah cried out upon the wall owing to the pain produced by the blow when Dan heard him and his anger burned within him and he also rose up and went at a distance and ran and sprang from the earth and mounted the wall with his wrath excited strength. And when Dan came upon the wall near unto Judah all the men upon the wall fled who had stood against Judah and they went up to the second wall and they threw arrows and stones upon Dan and Judah from the second wall and endeavored to drive them from the wall. And the arrows and stones struck Dan and Judah, and they had nearly been killed upon the wall, and wherever Dan and Judah fled upon the wall, they were attacked with arrows and stones from the second wall. And Jacob and his sons were still at the entrance of the city below the first wall, and they were not able to draw their bow against the inhabitants of the city, as they could not be seen by them being upon the second wall. And Dan and Judah, when they could no longer bear the stones and arrows that fell upon them from the second wall, they both sprang upon the second wall near the people of the city. And when the people of the city who were upon the second wall saw that Dan and Judah had come to them upon the second wall, they all cried out and descended below between the walls. And Jacob and his sons heard the noise of the shouting from the people of the city, and they were still at the entrance of the city and they were anxious about Dan and Judah, who were not seen by them, they being upon the second wall. And Naphtali went up with his wrath-excited might, and sprang upon the first wall to see what caused the noise of shouting which they had heard in the city. And Issachar and Zebulun drew nigh to break the doors of the city, and they opened the gates of the city and came into the city. And Naphtali leaped from the first wall to the second and came to assist his brothers and the inhabitants of Gash who were upon the wall, seeing that Naphtali was the third who had come up to assist his brothers, they all fled and descended into the city. And Jacob and his sons and all their young men came into the city to them. And Judah and Dan and Naphtali descended from the wall into the city and pursued the inhabitants of the city. And Simeon and Levi were from without the city and knew not that the gate was opened and they went up from there to the wall and came down to their brothers into the city. And the inhabitants of the city had all descended into the city, and the sons of Jacob came to them in different directions, and the battle waged against them from the front and the rear, and the sons of Jacob smote them terribly and slew about twenty thousand of them, men and women, not one of them could stand up against the sons of Jacob. And the blood flowed plentifully in the city, and it was like a brook of water, and the blood flowed like a brook to the outer part of the city, and reached the desert of Bethshorin. 
and the people of Beth Chorin saw at a distance the blood flowing from the city of Gash, and about seventy men from amongst them ran to see the blood, and they came to the place where the blood was. And they followed the track of the blood, and came to the wall of the city of Gash, and they saw the blood issue from the city, and they heard the voice of crying from the inhabitants of Gash, for it ascended unto heaven, and the blood was continuing to flow abundantly like a brook of water. And all the sons of Jacob were still smiting the inhabitants of Gash, and were engaged in slaying them till evening, about twenty thousand men and women. And the people of Churin said, Surely this is the work of the Hebrews, for they are still carrying on war in all the cities of the Amorites. And those people hastened, and ran to Beth Chorin, and each took his weapons of war, and they cried out to all the inhabitants of Beth Chorin, who also girt on their weapons of war to go and fight with the sons of Jacob. And when the sons of Jacob had done smiting the inhabitants of Gash, they walked about the city to strip all the slain, and coming in the innermost part of the city, and farther on they met three very powerful men, and there was no sword in their hand. And the sons of Jacob came up to the place where they were, and the powerful men ran away, and one of them had taken Zebulon who he saw was a young lad and of short stature and with his might dashed him to the ground and jacob ran to him with his sword and jacob smote him below his loins with the sword and cut him in two and the body fell upon zebulun and the second one approached and seized jacob to fell him to the ground and jacob turned to him and shouted to him whilst simeon and levi ran and smote him on the hips with the sword and felled him to the ground and the powerful men rose up from the ground with wrath-excited might, and Judah came to him before he had gained his footing, and struck him upon the head with the sword, and his head was split, and he died. And the third powerful man, seeing that his companions were killed, ran from before the sons of Jacob, and the sons of Jacob pursued him in the city, and whilst the powerful man was fleeing, he found one of the swords of the inhabitants of the city, and he picked it up and turned to the sons of Jacob and fought them with that sword. And the powerful man ran to Judah to strike him upon the head with the sword, and there was no shield in the hand of Judah. And whilst he was aiming to strike him, Naphtali hastily took his shield and put it to Judah's head, and the sword of the powerful man hit the shield of Naphtali, and Judah escaped the sword. And Simeon and Levi ran upon the powerful man with their swords, and struck at him forcibly with their swords, and the two swords entered the body of the powerful man and divided it in two lengthwise. And the sons of Jacob smote the three mighty men at that time, together with all the inhabitants of Gash, and the day was about to decline. And the sons of Jacob walked about Gash and took all the spoil of the city, even the little ones and women they did not suffer to live. And the sons of Jacob did unto Gash as they had done to Sartan and Shiloh. End of chapter 39. Read by C.J. Plogue.